Good morning. Okay, he's still uh, he's still muted. Well, when he's gonna get in, he's gonna get in. Uh, we do have uh, five teams that will be playing against each other, and I was thinking if uh, we're actually gonna get uh, all of them in. Let me see, two, four, six. Hey, it's Buddy's Potato McQuig here. How's it going, guys? <clears throat> this isn't the screen I want. But, uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm live in five. I'm live right now. In fact, I am ready. I'm I'm full of beans, baby. No weird intro. Your mom's a weird intro. Oh, got him, baby. Okay. We're ready to cast some Civ today, okay? Don't you try to give me L's in chat. I'll just throw them right back at you. Uh, Putin taught... Yeah, okay. <laughs> I saw your meme before. <clears throat> you guys can hear me go... Am I... Good intro, okay? Uh, we're going to go ahead and join our fellow caster, Michael here. Hello. Hi. Um, on mute in one minute. Uh, waiting for the Blob series update. Well, you shall be getting the episode next tonight. I wasn't able to do it yesterday because I forgot to do it the day before. And then I was casting for 12 hours. And so the, the Blob series, it got, put a bit on the, it got put on the back burner. Okay. Look, sometimes you get put on the back burner. That's life, baby. That's life. Uh, <clears throat> this man has had his coffee. Dude, I didn't have coffee. You know what I need before a live stream to have this kind of energy? And I'm not talking about alone time with your mom. I'm talking about some food. You got to get some of the food into you. You get a nice bit of food. You have a nice glass of water. You go for a nice walk over to the shop to buy some groceries. And then you feel great. You feel great. It's a lovely sunny day. It's incredible here in Ireland. Usually Ireland is an absolutely miserable 
horrible, grim, dreary, drizzly, awful place. And today the sun is out. It, the sun was out so much that when I walked home, I was sweaty. Okay. And it was a good sweat. Not like the, oh, I've just carried a box up 10 flights of stairs. Like the kind of like, you know what? It's a warm day and I kind of wish I was drinking beer in the park with my friends kind of day. That's the kind of sweaty I was. And it was a beautiful, beautiful day. <clears throat> Uh, how did you select players of tournament? This wasn't my tournament. I'm just an ape who showed up and, and shouts over the games that are happening. And Eve's behaving today, I'm guessing. She heard me say her name and now she's like staring at me while she poops. Uh, so, you know, rabbits are a weird creature. Um, but let's go ahead and say hi to our friend Michael so we can go ahead and get into the game here and discuss some of the picks because the teams are being set. The players here, Mal Mamaletto. You may remember from yesterday, he was uh, very vocal occasionally. And let's talk about that with our friend Michael. Hello, Michael. Praise the fish indeed. Good afternoon to you, good sir. A pleasure to see you again. I <laughs> I went to sleep but I was so full of energy I basically like forced myself to sleep and I woke up at 7 a.m. and all I could think about was casting more save today that's why I woke up so early man it, it was quite a marathon yesterday and it continues today no. Oh man, a marathon doesn't even begin, and I'm amazed that our friend Mamaletto here is again to play another game. But what were you going to say? <laughs> I was. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, uh, what did you, what did you think about the uh, games yesterday? Like overall, you know, like after you got a night good night's sleep. And uh, second of all, uh, I wanted to um, uh, say that uh, today it looks like we're going to have uh, eight players, two v two v two v two, not uh, uh, ten players. I I don't know what what. Ooh. Know, four, eight, eight, ten. No, never mind. They're ten. They're ten. It, somebody <laughs> bamboozled and uh, you got bamboozled. Got bamboozled. <laughs> yes, I'm oh wait! Finally, Moisos uh, sent, uh, sent me a message. Give me a second here, so I can uh, see the message. Uh, 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 he's awake. He's awake. Uh, Amazing. Come. He is finally awake should, to see the should, day. We uh, should invite him, right? Well, no, see. we should go without him. Screw Moisos. Let's go alone. Quick, before he gets here, start the game. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's 15 minutes late, man. <laughs> 15 minutes? Yeah, That's moy sauce on. for you. Never on yeah. time. Moy sauce? More like never on time sauce. <laughs> Not on time sauce, yeah. <laughs> Let me give him the channel here. But, uh, but while you're doing that, I will give you my uh, my impression of the games yesterday. The games yesterday really showed an extremely high caliber level of play in Civilization VI. The players seemed... The meta seemed quite rigid. However, even inside a rigid meta, there was a lot of room for maneuvering about how you go about your early game. I noticed that there was about three main builds that people were going for. But then we got saw that 2v, 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 2v game, which we're going to see another one right now. Um, and that one was had like a completely different meta. So the really amazing thing that I took away from yesterday was that the meta for Civ is entirely dependent on the type of game that you're playing. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's it's going to depend on your resources, your land, your uh, sieves, your uh, available uh, allies, and so on and so forth. It's it, it is it, this is one of the beautiful things of civilizations when uh, you are forced to adapt uh, to the game instead of just you know playing out your own uh, strategy over and over again. Absolutely, like even the difference between a free for all game and a two v two game, because like yeah, the two v two game basically what you do is you wait until a couple of people make themselves irrelevant and then you eat them up, you gobble them up <laughs> and then you kill the people who are left alone and then it'll come down to usually like a 1v1 with another guy and he's the kingmaker and whoever the kingmaker decides to attack, they lose. So that was the position of the Khmer yesterday. I don't know if you remember that guy but he was yeah, sitting there yeah. in third place and everyone wanted to kill him because that meant they secured first but whoever he fought would lose the game. So it was a really interesting dynamic that they were forced into. And nobody wanted to touch him. He was like, no, no. Everybody was, okay, CC, but, uh, you know, maybe we, we, you go to war with him. Maybe you take him, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. Please, please do, please do. 
Absolutely. Everyone had a little bit of terror for that Khmer player. And you know what? Papa Chillin, he deserved that. Or, well, no, sorry, Papa Chillin was Byzantium. Who was on the... I don't remember who it was. Whoever it was that was on Khmer yesterday, they deserved that respect because they played a pretty damn good game. On, uh, wait, on who? Sorry. Uh, was it Khmer the, or somebody else? The Khmer player was was really was in a really interesting position. Yesterday. Oh, I don't remember his name. I know I know what you're saying, but uh, he was definitely uh, one of the the good ones there. I don't remember his name, so I can find out. I can find out. Looking at the reports, I can find out. I yeah. think Moise was just joined us in the in the channel, and uh, he had a few issues with uh, being suppressed and so on. But he should huh? be fine now. Moise, are you here? Yeah. Moise, more like late nerd sauce. How's it going, buddy? Oh God! Oh God! No! Please leave me alone. Listen, man. What happened, man? What happened? My, so, I don't want to say any excuses, but <laughs> Here's my an alarm excuse. didn't go off. My alarm didn't go off. So, <laughs> the fact that I only woke up 10 minutes late is actually kind of impressive, but I do apologize for that. I respect. No, look, I, very, listen, man. Sometimes the alarm doesn't go off. Listen, I have trouble waking up. I, I, I totally forgive you. Now, whether or not the community will forgive you, that's a different thing, but I forgive you. Okay, considering that ten, a, a gamer is 10 minutes late, that's not that bad, you know? I, I feel like I sh there's there's room for forgiveness. I think 10 minutes, 10 minutes early, 10 minutes late, you know? I feel like it's not too bad. I, I, you know what? I think I'm willing to give you that. 10 minutes late, you know, it's okay. Yeah. And to be fair, I think you gave us a message that you were going to be late too. I no, I did not because I was no, definitely dude. asleep. So he oh, right. totally ignored us. I was an hour earlier. I was like, "Hello, Moi, Moi." Yeah, he Moy? messaged me an hour <laughs> early, and I was I was completely not there. Okay, All right, Moi Sauce. Uh, How much uh, multiplayer have you casted? Actually, Moi Sauce, I meant to ask you. Absolutely zero. The only right. multiplayer I casted was Civ Give with you guys. So. This will be interesting. So I'm the new beat here. So I'm, I'm going to be asking all the questions. Oh my God, Michael, we have a new kid in our posse. We can bully him. We can haze him. We can force him to answer <laughs> difficult questions. It's going to be a great stream. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. I, I do have to mention that uh, I um, found out who that player was. And he is in the game, by the way. It's Alcotolic. Alcotolic. Yeah, Alcotolic. That's right. I was. What, I recognize his name now. Al Alcatolic, he was the kingmaker yesterday. And I wonder if he'll find himself being the kingmaker again. I think his teammate was Mamaletto yesterday. And actually it was because Mamaletto was on Greece. Yeah, and he is today also. Uh, that's um, yeah, team four right now. So we got team one with uh, Jiraki and uh, Curtis Love. That's Suomi. We got uh, team two Happy Dragon with uh, the Bishop. I don't know exactly who they are, uh, as in what the team name is. I think it's CAW, but don't quote me on that. Uh, then we got gold, uh, Golden RPG with uh, Chuck. Um, they are coming up from Zone of Control. Uh, Alcotolic with Mamaletto for uh, Civ Germany. Kank is with uh, MCS Kag. Again, not sure exactly. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to find out who the clan is. Uh, HOK. They are coming from HOK. And the first clan was... C Ws. Okay, so I did the uh, I did say it out loud there. It's fine. It's fine. I did it. Uh, C A W actually uh, looking at the spreadsheet over here, and I should actually um, give it to Moiso so he can actually see what's uh, what's going on with uh, with the games. Um, is uh, one of those uh, new clans that I was uh, talking with you about. Um, they just showed up one day and they they started uh, doing very well in our qualifiers in our tournaments, and we were like. Where were you all this time? <laughs> you know, like what happened? And uh, it looks like they keep on going. They keep on making surprises here. Uh, right now, they managed to get uh, in the middle of the pack over here, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the games have not been uh, reported. Okay, let me see the voting stage we need to see the voting stage uh moi do you have access to all of the channels in uh, cpl uh i think i do you're registered yeah i'm registered as a noob i've been registered for a long time i just never uh never, never played games played. Or... wow yeah. okay any hey. players in chat <laughs> no i meant game players wait i would like to take back that statement <laughs> <laughs> But I'm playing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so right, what do you need me to look? 
uh, the voting channel. Give me a second. I'm uh, inviting you. Muy sus. There we go. And potato. Both of you. Uh, there they so what happens now they're doing a vote in with our uh, bots and uh, they're figuring out what map they want to play on they're figuring out on what time on it's probably going to be competitive um what kind of um, settings the um, map will have like disaster intensity or ridges definition uh, resources uh, strategics and so on and uh, what kind of bands do they want to have in the game uh, if they want to ban any kind of uh, civilization that uh, from what I can see over here it looks like Maori will probably gonna get banned um, basil it's one one time one vote off of being banned and uh, Mongolia over there is the same with six bands we just need to uh, wait for the bot to catch up uh, they're also gonna be doing um, another one of those uh, uh, how do you call it monkey drafts the blind drafts by the way that's right. So the, the, the blind draft basically means that everyone picks blind. You don't get to see what other people can pick from, so you can't counterpick your opponent. Yes. Like uh, League of Legends, right? Same idea? Basically. Uh, oh, well. Well, no, because um, I think League of Legends has open picking and banning. They have blind draft too i thought or at least when i play oh that, yeah one of the game modes the you're right one of the game modes is blind draft where you pick your your hero without seeing the other team that's right yeah it's basically exactly like that and the interesting thing about blind draft is like if you go for like a religious heavy domination sieve someone else might pick a sieve that can snipe the religion you want whereas here you're kind of going into the game rolling a dice a little bit Speaking of religion, is is Russia not as good in BBG? If I recall correctly, Russia have been nerfed in the Better Balance game mod. I don't remember what the nerfs are, but I know that they have been brought a little bit more in line because I think Russia was one of those saves that was like super dominant and basically an auto ban in a lot of scenarios. Oh, it got nerfed to the ground almost. Okay. So it's, it's I'm not familiar bad. with BBG, so I'm going to be asking a lot of questions about that. Good, good. Um, so... Dance of the Aurora doesn't give uh, adjacency from all adjacent to Tundra tiles. It only gives from flat tiles now. Uh, you don't get the faith on uh, the Tundra anymore. You only get it in your capital. <laughs> like it's, uh, it is quite uh, different uh, to play with Russia in this uh, in BBG. Um, Joke has joined the chat, by the way. I have to mention this potato. And he's saying we flamed him yesterday a lot in the games. He was playing Kree in the first FFA. And I remember we were talking about him and we were surprised about his uh, his game there. But he did quite well. I, I don't know why. Do you feel like we flamed him yesterday? I Listen, dude, I was flaming the hell out of him. Dude, I was, I was, oh. or I was lighting their empire on fire. <clears throat> um, I, oh, no. But I, I think sometimes it's difficult sometimes when you're in a casting position because I'm not trying to flame the player. I'm really, I'm trying to ask like, is this person making a mistake or am I just missing the bigger picture? And sometimes I misalign how I say that. And so it kind of sounds like I'm flaming the player, um, which, you know, and also there's a little bit of a hindsighting going on because like they might find themselves in a rough position. And then I'm like, oh, wow, did they forget to expand 40 turns ago? It's like really easy to be hindsighty when you're in a casting position. So it is something you do have to be a little bit careful about. Yeah, I, I do remember we did point out at the end that he did uh, quite well over there. But if if he would have been uh, next to uh, an opponent, it might have been like, uh, you know, Aztec or something else. It might have been a different uh, game. Uh, the only thing that we were surprised was about his um, um, at some point he stopped expanding. I, I, that's what I remember about the game yesterday. If I if we did get a little bit overboard, I do have to say I'm sorry. It wasn't... Uh, uh, it wasn't something that we really, really meant to do. It was something that we just uh, saw happen and we uh, got surprised by it. Yeah, because sometimes when you're in a game, you can't see into the player's head. And so you kind of have to wonder like, oh, is he making a mistake? Because like, we know you're not a bad player, but like, are you just, have you just gone with a strategy that's not working this game is more the question I'm trying to ask. Oh, wait, look, he's uh, giving us some more information here. He's saying that he had zero amenities when his uh, every city was over 10 pop, so he couldn't expand anymore because of that. He would have gone uh, down under. That was the reason. That was the reason. That's rough. That's rough. I, I guess it is quite hard when you're in a free-for-all game and you can't rely on an ally to maybe get you a couple of those extra amenities. 
Yeah, that is uh, indeed quite rough. Still waiting for the players to finish both over here. It looks like uh, we got a few of them. Okay, well, I, okay, there are four votes at once. That's why the bot is uh, still trying to catch up. Um, unfortunately, there are some limits uh, with um, um, the API, you know, the, the link between the bot and the Discord. And uh, he can do only X amount of... Um, queries per minute so yeah we're gonna need to wait a little bit <laughs> i am fully yeah. aware of limitations of apis is, i work with those <laughs> every day once he said that i was like oh dude i completely understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is what can i say nothing is more dangerous than an unlimited api okay <laughs> dude that's how ddos happens man that's, you can get completely taken down absolutely um but we, we should see the results of this. So what are you, is there a sieve here, Michael or, or Moy, that you're expecting to see? Is there, you know, are we expecting to see maybe like, because if Byzantium pops up, are we expecting a Byzantium? Like, what are you expecting the players, yeah. players to pick? <clears throat> I was thinking about maybe we're going to see Byzantium, but yesterday, did you actually see Byzantium like fully shine? They they managed to kill a player, which I, I give him that, but they couldn't quite get up from the fourth place there. They... They're seeming sure it was all based around that uh, one timing with um, the Tagmas. After that, he just didn't have the economy, didn't have the cities, didn't have uh, uh, what, uh, how to get back up in the in the game. It it feels like Byzantium, unless you play it in a certain way, it doesn't give you that um, uh, flexibility throughout the game. No, I would definitely agree. Moi, uh, is there a sieve you predict or a sieve you'd like to see? I mean, okay, so I, I've i been told that France is a very good military. I don't see France being banned as, as well. I don't know if BBG has changed anything, but I, I would like to see France in here. Uh, I see that Gaul hasn't been uh, banned either. And I think in a 2v2v2, you kind of have to worry about not only like one opponent, you have to worry about multiple opponents. So if you have a good defense system, I feel like Gaul would be a good pick to just kind of protect from all sort of borders. So I feel like they should be in there too. Uh, lastly, as a little bit of a troll, I would always love to see an Eleanor, so, you know. <laughs> you would be glad to know that Eleanor got changed in BBG, and now... No, you... no, no, it's a it's a buff, actually. You do get uh, plus two uh, resources, of the, or I should say stats, of the... Um, uh, districts that you have on so basically two for science two for um, culture if you have a theater square or a camp and so on uh, if you have a book inside of your uh, amphitheater so more books okay. more stats. interesting okay, maybe, so uh, but it, no no more loyalty flips is what you're saying it is it is with loyalty flips as well it's very extremely what? rare so yes it is extremely rare that you're going to see that happen. Oh, uh, what kind of map are we on? I'm sorry. I, I didn't really get a chance to look. Uh, uh -huh. That's what I was uh, trying to figure out as well. It looks like Pangea has six votes and the uh, Seven Seas has four votes. So I'm thinking Pangea again. Yeah. I'm trying to find was... the vote. I was going to say, oh, I wouldn't it's... mind seeing Norway, right. but on a Pangea, I've seen some people play it. I've seen a lot of people play it, but I just know, I think it's not really as heavily favored, right? People don't really on it that much yeah I, I think in a Pangea map in a non like full teamer game you can't really commit to the coast like you want to because uh, I feel yeah, like you've, you've seen Portugal yesterday <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my no. goodness <laughs> it was oh Portugal was rough man I, but here's the thing I, I think like the Portugal game could have worked if they hadn't spawned next to Japan that was the problem. Two naval saves beside each other. It's just going to turn into galley spam and they instantly get irrelevant. Yeah, uh, I, I still believe Japan could have definitely played that uh, differently. I'm, I'm like thinking back on that. It's no, no, I can't, I can't. My mind is just not wrapping around the, the possibility of Japan dying to uh, Portugal there. I, I, I think I somewhat agree with you. I would have liked to have seen at least an attempt at a samurai push. Although I do I do want to make sure that like we you know the players are really good at the game, so I, there was probably a reason they didn't go for it. 
Yeah, it, it might have been resources, gold, or uh, they had other priorities, but or uh, it might have been also the tagmas. Like they knew the tagmas will be there, so <laughs> if they just focus on that, we had other expectations and they had other plans. For sure, for sure, definitely. Um, the the tag man, I'm I'm actually kind of a little bit surprised that the tagmas actually worked against Portugal as well, because those tagmas they. He had nows and walls. He could have just popped those into his city and, and been extremely difficult to take. But we saw his cities falling quickly um, to those Tagmas. I, I guess they do full damage to walls. So it's kind of hard to hold. Converted. Yeah. Those scouts. <laughs> those scouts. Oh, that's he right. He killed the scouts and converted the cities. That was, I think that was the biggest mistake over there. Because you're right, if he had uh, nows inside of the city with the walls, I think those cities would have been safe for the longest time. Yeah, and actually, what since... Are... Go ahead. No, I'm changing the topic. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Uh, what are the rules on, like, diplomacy? Like, I know normally I think you guys only allow two friendships or alliances. What's in this particular game? Is there any changes in rules? So this is a 2v2v2v2 and it's all war. They can they can only do blanket peace. They cannot make alliances other than their own teammate. Okay. So, and probably all of them will go for a military alliance for that extra plus five. Do, uh, now, I wonder if there's a situation in which you probably you wouldn't go for the military alliance. Like maybe if you spawn right next to your ally, you do like an early... Uh, a science alliance to get ahead t t scientifically. I feel like there's there's room there to maneuver in the early game at least until everything breaks out in war. That could be interesting to see actually if uh, uh, any of them would think that uh, oh we still have like 20 turns 30 turns before we're gonna go to war maybe it's safe now to go for uh, uh, research alliance or a culture alliance or something to get some more bonuses. Yeah, I think the big yeah. thing for me there would be is if I saw two of my neighbors fighting, and this is actually something else that um, Synth told me, in these big 2v2v games, um, it's usually considered like good etiquette to let, like if two players are duking it out and you're a third player on a different team, you let them like finish up their war before you intervene. Um, is, oh, is... There's, there's good etiquette? Okay. Yeah, now, now this is a tournament, so people that. might not people might not abide by that but there is sort of like some expectations that players have <clears throat> it should be like an unwritten um, rule that if you're that third person in then everyone should gang up on that third person right like leave those two alone well it's, it's more like you give them a chance to at least like win the war like if they're at war for 30 turns and nothing's happening you can just roll in with your tanks and take them over i think <clears throat> I, I do remember yesterday we were talking about uh, the players being uh, split up over there. Uh, it was, uh, I remember you saying the piranhas are in the water, they smelled blood. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and that's the danger. To, if you pull off a war that doesn't quite go well for you, those piranhas are going to come sniffing around for you again. <laughs> yeah. You show weakness. Oh my God, that's, that's not going to go well. It was insane. Like the second that China started crumpling, everyone declared war on China and wanted a peace. Yeah. Although, amazingly, that China player, <laughs> somehow, I think they came, like, fifth or sixth just by, like, getting a cockroach city off <laughs> in a random place on the map. <laughs> on an island somewhere, yeah. I uh, do notice uh, they actually started up a new vote here uh, really quickly. Maybe they uh, got, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a problem with uh, the previous one not uh, going through. Uh, I, th I think too many votes thing. were going on at the same time and the API just yeah. kind of crapped out. So it looks like, yeah, there will be a new vote. Uh, I do have to say that uh, we did have uh, quite a, um, a bit of an improvement over here in the, in the bots for some time. But still, the API is the one that is uh, giving us some problems. Um, there are so many options that the players want to manipulate every time and if we take away those options a few months later they're like hey like why don't we have a vote for this i mean 99 percent of the time it was going that way well yeah but at one percent <laughs> you know we want to <laughs> we want to have that uh, freedom to choose differently okay 
okay. yeah that's for sure for, for some reason people value highly value the the ability to choose even if they never exercise that choice it's like a weird human thing it's like you need to give me the option back even even if i never pick it agency everybody wants agency agency yes i also want to say that uh, we got a few bands here Maori is going to get banned. Looks like Basil this time is going to get banned. Uh, it doesn't look like Babylon is going to go through, nor will uh, Genghis Khan. So we're, uh, we're waiting just for one single player over here, Khaki7, to finish up the vote. Uh, map which will be Pangea. Uh, they are going for a limited time, uh, competitive timer. Uh, wait, do they? Oh, they banned Military Alliance, by the way. Ooh, military alliance not allowed and strategic right. trading. So basically, yeah, definitely. Basically, all um, diplomacy is banned except for for blanket peace here. <clears throat> well, I think you got your wish, Potato. Now we're gonna see them try to adapt to the game without a military alliance, without that extra plus five. And uh, I think this is actually a great example of how limiting people's agency, taking away their ability to do a military alliance, actually opens up more interesting decisions. Yeah, 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 for sure. I've always been a fan of taking away the obvious option to allow, like, the non-obvious options to come out. So, like, everyone's going to take the military alliance. You get your plus five combat. Like, why wouldn't you take that? So now... Now you're going to see a bunch of different strategies. You're going to see economic alliances for those who want to fund the military. They're going to see science alliances for those who want to get ahead in their military. You're going to see cultural alliances for those who want to rush cores. It just allows for more interesting strategies. So I'm a big fan of banning this military alliance. Oh, Babylon did go through, by the way. There was one more vote there. Okay, Ooh. so it's, we got three civs banned. Maori, Byzantium, and Babylon. That's it. Would All you like the to... other civs are going to be in. Would you like to talk about uh, those banned saves? So why do people ban Mary? Uh, way too adaptable most of the time. And I think uh, play, um, it, it is one of the civilizations that is extremely annoying. Not really extremely powerful, but extremely annoying. It can uh, destroy another player's game just by showing up next to his captain and, you know, settling a city there. I, I think we got our own version of that during the Civ game. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't want to say it, but I mean... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it that has a bad that one. Uh, Byzantium, How about Byzantium? Uh, those tag, that tagma timing is extremely hard to um, handle. And uh, I still think players don't want to be forced to pick um, you know, the Crusade ability to take it away from Byzantium. So they just want to take all, away... Uh, the civilization instead of uh, handling the repercussions. Um, Babylon, it got nerfed. Still, the players uh, like it. It, it. Now it doesn't receive like the full ninety percent or whatever it is for um, um, uh, getting a boost. It only receives like sixty-five percent, but it has other bonuses. It's it's not that strong anymore. But still, the players don't want to handle it. Yeah, for sure. I, I would say Babylon in the hands of a good player, even nerfed heavily, can still do a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I am extremely surprised the other civilizations didn't get banned. For example, Genghis Khan not getting banned, Kublai Khan not getting banned, like uh, Moises over there said, Catherine de Medici uh, allowed to be in, uh, Persia, uh, and there are so many, I can't even name all of them. Sumeria, for example, like, where, oh my God, <laughs> there are so many Never. possibilities. Yeah, all I hear from people who play with BBG is how France is amazing, the best military civ in the game, and it's like they had to convince me because I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't sure, but then they convinced me of the whole spy thing and the uh, diplomacy visibility. They give you the extra military uh, combat strength. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. And like, yeah, so highly praised. Like, people telling me auto ban every game, but then it gets through twice here. So I thought that was really interesting. That um, is interesting. Actually actually yes catherine de medici the black queen is a very good civilization uh, but uh, the thing with it its weakness is most of the players are um, accustomed to 
playing in Catherine de Medici style, as in trying to get that extra diplomatic visibility over your opponent, and you end up with only a plus three, uh, except a few turns before because you get like uh, the advantage with the castles, you get the free spy, and um, you get to maybe attack somebody with corsairs at that timing otherwise it's not gonna be an amazing intelligence um the same can be said about mongolia you also have that problem i think um the 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 big advantage because i was talking to synth a little bit here is, is players like to have between like around about 15 combat strength advantage so catherine just gets three off the bat and her guard imperial gets plus five on their home continent so if you could do like a guard imperial push which is kind of weak because it's an infantry unit um but it can yeah. still maybe pull off a really strong timing push with those units <clears throat> oh for sure if you do manage to get you said the big if over there if somebody is on your continent that's the thing those kind of continent bonuses they're very high roll uh, now i would i would guess in most games the guard imperial is just a really strong blocker unit which i think is what the infantry is mostly used for yeah and the same um i i could say about uh the old teddy um rough rider when uh, he got that bonus on his uh, continent everybody was like no ban teddy ban teddy but it was only a plus five on his continent you know and there was a chance that you would nobody would spawn on the continent absolutely yeah that's the thing um it made teddy really hard to deal with if he was on your border because he could just grind you down super early with a combat strength of bonus. It was basically like going up against a DD AI that had a human brain. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I don't even want to imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a fun idea that I'd wanted to do is, is try to get a bunch of people in a game where I'm the D I have like the DD AI bonuses and they're all trying to kill me. I you remember mean, uh... that. Dude, oh my god. <laughs> you, I tested that with you and you beat me in like 20 turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to try that again someday. <clears throat> uh, I think the teams got picked. We got Russia, we got Egypt, we got Spain, Netherlands, actually a big surprise over here. Uh, Hungary, Norway, Eleanor, uh, England, Cree, Pericles and Persia. That is a really solid lineup. These are all civs that we've seen before. For example, Spain, uh, Cree, a perennial favorite, as is Pericles and Persia. But there's a couple of new faces here in um, the Netherlands and Hungary. Tell me about those guys. Uh, usually, Netherlands is uh, actually one of the underdogs, least picked civilizations when you're talking about teamers, uh, 4v4s and so on, because it... it it is so reliant on those rivers. I still personally believe it has uh, the best frigate in the game. So if they do manage to get some attacks, but again, it's co you know, it's Pangea. It might not go for a coastal war. It, it kind of feels like it's uh, kind of a weird pick. Um, it can have very good production with its industrial zones. And I think most of the time it has good stats. The problem is he doesn't have any war bonuses. So he's going to need to make that up with uh, his own generals, with um, other, like his uh, spies and so on, which is going to be very tough to handle against, especially like somebody like uh, uh, Persia or uh, Spain next to him and so on. That's true. Wilhelmina feels very much so like a hard sim save that you want somewhere safe on the map where no one can attack her. Um, what about Hungary? Hungary? Uh I like to call him the chaos maker because you never know when he's going to levy a city state next to you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> that is so nasty to deal with. It's, overall, it's a good civilization. It can have a good simming. It can have... Um, I think they want you to ready up, Michael, by the way. <clears throat> oh, really? Okay, okay. Sorry. I was uh, alt tabbed. But yeah, Hungary, because it seems like, you know, they pop out those really, really powerful uh, uh, city-state levied units and they get a combat strength and then they get a unique unit that scales off of city-states. I think Chaos Maker is probably the right way to uh, to put it. At Moisos, which Civ are you excited to see in this game? Which one has oh, caught your eye? <clears throat> oh, Eleanor's in this game. How could how could I not be excited for this English Eleanor? It's like, this is my dreams. All my dreams are coming true right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> can't contain myself also uh, i'm a big fan of spain especially after the chain i don't know what bbg does with spain but after like the the, la the april patch the last april patch that civ put out uh, I've, I've been a huge fan of spain with their whole uh, missions on other continents and them getting a free builder uh 
is there a, do they still keep that with uh bbg no they, they, they got rid of it oh that's sad. yeah they got rid of it it's uh he, even his extra production it's coming at early empire not uh, from the beginning so all of the early tempo is uh, taken away except the plus two science plus two culture that you're generating there's still a still, strong st sieve st still yeah you, you still get you still get uh fleets um early i believe is that what i'm oh, reading wait. Yeah, yeah, mercenaries. Yeah, you still get fleets early, and like you can dominate the waters really early with Spain. So they're a lot of fun there. Wait, I, I thought you were talking about uh, Maori for a second there, because you mentioned builder. Um, so Spain does get the, the trade routes, the plus three gold, plus two uh, food, plus one production, I believe, uh, trade routes, and uh, you get double the amounts on oh plus two faith and plus one production. You get double the amount so when you're sending it um, to another continent. And then you still get the Conquistador, which is an amazing unit. Oh, 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 wait, wait. I got to stop this right here. Potato. Remember yesterday I said Spain is amazing when it gets a continent split? Oh, my goodness. Spain yeah, is Oh, and Petiti's right there, too? Are you kidding me? Can you imagine the missions on Paititi? <laughs> oh, man. Well, they might have to fight the Cree for it because the Cree is only just to their east across that mountain range, although they might use this mountain range as a natural border. I, I love this start for Spain. Yeah, this is this is good. Some extra food from the banana. We do have uh, uh, turtles. Very nice. Very nice. When he, is he going to find out about Paititi? That's the biggest question. Because, you know, some, sometimes the players just don't uh, scout in one direction. That's right. This is why I think it's it's so important to go double scout and then scout in like a circle around your base. Because how frustrating is it to learn that there was a hidden natural wonder in your fog of war, like two tiles away? Uh, there's some uh, discussion on my uh, stream between uh, Eleanor England and Eleanor France, which is the strongest. No. Oh. Potato rip. Ah, <sighs> great. My display drive. I don't know what what's happening there. Hold on. Yep. I, I noticed that when my game is in full screen, dedicated full screen. I don't know if yours is. It, it crashes more. I'm in. I'm in windowed. I think I just have yeah. too much stuff open, maybe, because I'm on three screens and I got a game running, and you know. <clears throat> Fair. I'll load back in. I'll be only a minute. I do have to do that. Is not one of those um, uh, a lot of time response for uh, Russia uh, still can work though uh, he has the two three deer he has um, <clears throat> honey in the capital so definitely can go well, Temple of Artemis here well when you, when you don't have Dance of the Aurora anymore is Tundra something that Russia still thrives in uh, yes, he can still thrive in. Dance of the Aurora is um, still getting some bonuses most of the time you're going to have a lot of flat Tundra. Uh, for example, look at towards Vilnius after the mountains. You have a lot of flat Tundra, so you can still have like plus three Navras, plus fours, uh, sometimes plus sixes. It's just you're not gonna have them right off the bat without no effort. That's the that was the thing over there because Russia was not only getting half cost holy sites, he was getting plus six all of the time, <laughs> you know, uh, consistently. Um, in this scenario, though, this is this is gonna look like a cage fight. Honestly, we got Cree to the southwest on the same river. We do have Hungary to the southeast again, very close. Like they're gonna settle one city and that's it. They're gonna start fighting each other. And looking at their um, options here, Golden is uh, gonna be allied with chuck chuck is very far away from him He's yeah like i was gonna say where family. are like teammates are there any close teams that are spawned next to each other uh that's a good question let me see curtis and uh I, I guess norway. norway yeah that's like the closest yeah. you got huh that's not bad they can norway. both go on persia as well because persia is pretty close to norway and there's also some two there's two city states south of persia that are that's the closest city states that they have so hungary can take over those and levy those and then norway can come from the east and you're basically getting a full surround on Persia. Oh, no, they're going for the remap? Okay, I don't know why. I, uh, yeah. I... <clears throat> okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to... Uh... Small map, 10 players? Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, weird. I, uh, 
Uh, that's why it was looking such a how do you call it such a cage fight i was looking at russia over there and i was like whoa <laughs> yeah russia got that's... basically no tundra yeah and so close to his opponents second i want to go get breakfast so i'll be back i'm going to try and change my ui scaling We'll load the game back up here in a moment. Okay. Uh, looks like we might uh, have another host here. Okay. waiting for the lobby link let me see is this the is this it is this it This image, <laughs> Monk has uh, God, I hate that intro. <clears throat> Sorry, I muted it. It's this. All right, great. Thank you for the lobby link. I'll join it now in a second. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate you, Michael. Hugs, hugs. Hugs, hugs. Zog, I'm zog. Let me see. There was somebody that was asking me about the uh, BBG changes. I know there was a file somewhere, but I need to find it. Uh, there was a link with all of the changes that got made by uh, the modders. Need a, need a minute here. Uh, dead log. Yeah. Have you moved further away from your microphone, Michael? Me? Uh, I think I was talking in another direction. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It it just sounded like you were slowly and surely just getting farther and farther away. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you know, my my uh, how to say um, yeah, enthusiasm talking was uh, uh, being overridden by my um, thought process of uh, finding out where the BBG stats are. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're okay. You're totally forgiven. <clears throat> Let me see. I need to switch slots here. Bro, where is this? Okay. Uh, so. Um. Yeah, I, I assume we're going to see the same same settings. Basically, it's a, it's just a quick re lobby to get the game going. Yes. I hope so. Okay, I found it. Finally, I found it. Okay, it's on the cpl.gg website, but I had to go through a, a few links. Uh, let me actually share it with you. Maybe some people want it also. Yeah, I posted it in my chat there for people if they want to see the change logs to the BBG mod. Okay. I wonder if I can pin that message, actually. Oh, there are so many little things that Twitch chat can actually give us uh, some uh, some more options on. I do love that they introduced the animated uh, things, though. I love those animated icons. It's so cool. Yes, they are amazing. I actually I have um I have an app open that lets me have both your chat and my chat open because I can type to you. None of oh, your chatters nice. can get past me. <laughs> good good uh, i do have to mention that i would love some more uh animated icons i don't know why they only let us like six or something like that come on give us more give us more yeah hell yeah i the animated icons are great okay so players are joining back they are uh, getting their uh, sifts going slots and they want to make up uh, okay they want to check the 
the settings right now. Everybody's uh, waiting for the settings. I need to be careful to ready up this time. I'm. Just... Wow. Yeah, <laughs> you got a little bit. You got a little bit caught up in your alt tab and having a nice chat about the game. Yeah. I'm back. How was the cat? Cat's good. Uh, yeah, I'm the one that feeds him in the morning. So if I don't feel like I woke up and I came right to my computer, so I didn't have a chance to feed the cat. So I went down, I fed the cat, I made myself some coffee, I got a Cliff Bar. You know, I'm not, I'm settled in. I'm settled in for the long haul here. I, you know, I would just like to criticize you. You should be ashamed of yourself as a cat dad not feeding your your your. your... I went to go feed my cat. What do you mean I'm ashamed? I you I, went I, to the I, computer you... first, dude. The cat needs to eat. The cat, listen. The cat can wait. He's a he's a he's a big boy as it is. Okay, so like him teaching him how to wait for food is probably a good thing. Oh my God. Yeah, probably you should make him do a few laps around the house before you feed him if he's a chonky boy. That I can't do. I can make him chase a laser, but he only chases it for like two minutes and then he's like he's done. He, you can hear him like like <laughs> 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 like like a mid forty smoker trying to yeah. trying to get back into running. <laughs> it's funny. Oh my goodness, I love cats. They're my favorite animal. Yeah, if the whole cat versus dog debate. It's not even close. It's cats all the way. Listen, dude. I'm, dude. I reject your 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 uh, your dichotomy of dog and cat, and I embrace the rabbit meta. Okay, rabbit and small okay. furry creatures like hamsters. Those are my my bag. I heard that mm. rabbits are actually very hard or very high maintenance. Is that true? Yeah, they are quite high in maintenance. Now they're pretty chill, they, but they do need a lot of exercise. Like they like to run around the room. Like you know how cats in the middle of the night they'll get zoomies. Yeah. Yeah, rabbits are kind of exactly like rabbits are really just vegan cats. Like that's the best way to think about them. Like they eat vegetables, but they have all the same attitude that cats have. They they're like cuddly and everything. Oh yeah, they'll come over and if you like I sometimes I'll lie on the ground and my cat or my rabbit will come over and she'll like lick my forehead and she's like, "Okay, I did you your turn." And then I have to pet her. Ew. <laughs> Is a rabbit's tongue as rough as a cat's tongue? I wouldn't let my cat lick my forehead. No, because they don't have like the little serrated barbs, so they're t it's actually like being licked by a tiny dog. So it's like the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's like the, it's the best part. Although, oh, if you do annoy her, she will bite dude. you. <laughs> like that's the thing. That's like cats too. Yeah, no, I understand. It's like you have to just know the signs, right? Yeah, although I, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes I like to just piss her off. Like, I'll just, like, poke her with my hand, and she'll, like, turn around and bite me. And I'm like, ah, and I'll scream. And then she'll be like, yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> you, if you don't annoy your pet a little bit, I don't think you're really a pet owner. I, I oh. based and true. Absolutely. And here's the thing. The animals kind of know you're messing with them, because they'll, like, pretend bite you. You know that thing, the play bite that dogs do, where they kind of go, ah, but they don't actually bite you? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. They know so you're playing. Your, your, uh, your rabbit does oh, that? Yeah. Your rabbit, like, fake bites too? Uh, kind of. She'll, she'll like, basically, like, open mouth bite me, you know, with the mouth open type thing. But she won't actually, like, close her teeth. You should post more your cat, or cat, your rabbit on, on Twitter. <laughs> it's a vegan you post cat. sometimes. Yeah, you're a vegan cat. I feel like they get it gets good traction, and like if you're if you're Team Rabbit, you got to showcase that you're Team Rabbit all over social media, you know. Um, am I in the wrong lobby? Uh, yes. Looks like everybody wants to host now, and uh, we're getting like different uh, links. Uh, some were saying uh, I host, some already put up the host from their game. It's like a mess. I relayed the new link there. I deleted the old one and uh, put a new one. All right. I was the, like the information that's flowing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I was uh, listening to you guys and I was thinking like, when is Team Raccoon starting? You know, we gotta oh get my, some raccoon. The trash bro. pandas. Yes. Bro. <laughs> I, I don't know if like in Europe, but at least in Canada, like, like trash pandas are a common household pest in a way. Not like super common, but like I guess in the suburbs. And they are adorably cute. It's insane how adorably cute they are. They have those little hands. They got like thumbs and everything. They're incredibly smart. Absolutely. They know how to pick up objects. They can throw objects. They're like little humans or like little monkeys, but like furry and so soft. They look so soft. And then they hiss at you and you're like, oh my God, please leave me alone. But they're so cute. If I can have a raccoon as a, as a pet, I 1000% would. I would also have a fox. 
Ooh, yeah, they would be really cool pets. I think any animal that has like little hands, I think that makes it like, you know, <laughs> infinitely more cuter than anything. Like even rats, they got those like little hands that they hold food I with. I know. Oh my God. I love rats too. Don't you have a rat? Uh, no, I, I don't have rats. <clears throat> How come you always have pictures of rats? Uh, my, my girlfriend had rats. Ah. Uh... So and I would, uh, you I would share those the rat. I, I yeah, kind of. You adopted them, okay, got it. But I, I love little rat guys. I, I've, I, I'm fully on hashtag Team Small Furry Animal. Like hamsters, rats, rabbits. Oh, everyone disconnected when I joined the game. What's happening? You disconnected. Not everyone. Just you. Okay, what is happening? The typical the gamer blaming everybody else. It's never my never fault, fault. Okay. I'm entitled to be correct. Uh, I'm back in, I hope. Yep. You need to vacate first two spots. Yeah, got I think you need to uh, swap with uh, Curtis. I'm trying to swap with him. Okay. I I do there remember watching some videos with um, foxes, and uh, I got so so um, caught up with their laughing. I don't know if you saw those videos when they get they get excited, they laugh. Like they have like a giggle. Oh so yeah, where they do like the he 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 type thing they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're great. <laughs> so funny. I, hey Michael, when you get a chance, can you uh, stream to Discord? Thanks. Yes. Yes, sir. No, you're you're going. You, this is <laughs> your first game. You have to cast it blind. There's, <laughs> there's not. There's nothing happening at the moment. They're just picking up the. I know. That's why I wanted to ask ring. now before yeah, anything's yeah. gonna happen. Uh, how, someone has a really good question here. How does the 2v2v2v2 matchmaking work for, for CCC? I think it's... um, the, Basically, teams are just like randomly assigned so that every team plays in a bunch of 2v2s. But... Yes, basically. Yeah, we do have uh, 19 teams and they just uh, split them up into uh, different uh, games. And uh, again, whoever shows up uh, also gets to play because uh, there are some players or some teams that don't have enough players to um, uh, allow them to play in all of the games. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, when you're running a tournament this big where there's a new game being played every hour or two and each game needs like anywhere between two and like 10 players, it's hard to make sure that everyone can be around because there is games running literally 24-7 this weekend. Yeah, and you can't really know for sure if uh, you're going to finish in four hours or five hours. Uh, you have The clan needs to adapt even if you don't uh, get the slot. It's uh, That's why it's so... Um, challenging for for each of the clans and at the same time it's so hard it's it's good it's good i um from the beginning i love this uh, tournament setup it's the first time that i see this kind of a tournament for a game most of the tournaments you know like oh we're gonna play only swiss or oh we're gonna do um like a group stage and so on and then double brackets and blah 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 but none of the tournaments did go um <laughs> this hardcore when it came to uh, all of the game modes everything everything for sure for sure and there's so many different formats in this tournament like there's it's kind of wild just how many different ways there are to play um to play the game <laughs> well it's all about civ it's all about civ it's the game allows us to do that you can't have that in another game by the way newsflash zone of control just got First place again with 1,325 points. Cars dropping to second, 1,260. Awesome. Well done to the zone of control. I, I do have to ask you, Michael, speaking of like the game formats, what's your favorite yes. game format for Civ? Like 4v4, 2v2, 2v2? From the first stirrings I would have to say I like the 4v4 most of all, uh, but I do like the um, uh, VFFAs at the same time. It's... Um, 
the FFAs don't get that much uh, attention because they don't uh, get streamed that much, but they're awesome as a game style. Uh, the the fact that you actually get to, to do some diplomacy uh, with um, with your neighbors, um, learn about players, also um, talk, share ideas uh, in the game uh, makes it a much more interesting game type for me. Interesting. In in the 4v4s, you're only going to talk with your team. You're only going to be you're always at war with your opponent. There's not much diplomacy happening there. Uh, we have a very... <laughs> what is this map shape? What is going on? <laughs> it looks like a sugar glider floating through the air. <laughs> it's a little tail. This is, oh, my this God. Is a squirrel. This is a flying squirrel. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a flying That's squirrel. <laughs> um... So, we've got some new. We've got a new map, which means new starting locations for all the saves. And Russia, especially over here in the top left, this looks like a much better location for them. This game. Indeed, they will actually get to benefit a little bit from that uh, tundra, and they still have a temple of Artem. Oh, a strong temple! Oh my God, what is this temple of Artemis? One, two, three, four, five, Ooh. six, seven temple of Artemis. <laughs> six, oh wait, eight temple of Artemis. Like really. Ooh. If that, I was Russia is, this game, I'd be going like one city Temple of Artemis. I would be rushing that so hard. You you have to. Like this is you have to. A hundred percent you have to. I think actually I missed a few of them. It might be a ten. Because there are like some truffles to the east, some uh, uh, another where you put it, right? South. Yeah, depends on where you put. I think to the north on that flat tile would be the best location. Good luck, I would say to the east. Because you're getting more camps and pastures down there as well, right? Uh, I mean, sure. Because you, you, you have the truffles. Northeast? Oh, I guess the truffles hits the the north one as well. Hmm. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Knowing knowing me and you, I'm probably wrong. I think that's a good rule of thumb is to accept that I'm also wrong all the time. <laughs> I, I think there's also the right th of the time either. I think we have a lot of really interesting things to talk about here. Not only do we need to talk about like starting locations for these sieves, I think we need to talk about the starting natural wonders and stuff like that. So, would you guys like to do a run through of those things? Yeah, let's uh, go. I see Fountain of Youth to the southwest, uh, of the, south of Fez, actually. Um, I guess it's no not one's even close to that view. though. Yeah, it's not going to get used by anybody. And that gives you healing whenever you just, you know, put a unit in it. Um, or walk a unit through it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it well, gives your unit a permanent healing bonus if it walks through that wonder, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Mount Everest to the northeast of uh, Mikisivuachi, Cree's uh, capital. And again, we got a good Cree capital. One, two, three, four, five, six uh, possible uh, points of... of oh. Oh, yeah, uh, six possible points of food and uh, gold. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Uh, I think we should have like four. Of... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Torres. Torres Ooh, del Pain. Oh, the two fives. Let's go. Yes. Two fives, four twos everywhere. This is going to be amazing. This is one of the best Torreses I have ever seen in the game. All I was going to say, around. this is the best one I've ever seen. This is crazy. Sorry, where is... To oh, there it is. That... Oh, man. Who spawned near that? Oh. Nobody. That's the thing. <laughs> well, England is just to the southwest. Oh, okay. England and it's Hungary England. kind of okay. can compete. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for England. They sent their settler to the west and not to the north east. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, Surely they're going to send a scout the opposite direction, right? Surely. Yeah. I, you know, definitely. You, you've got to be looking for those natural wonders because getting a good natural wonder can completely define your early game. Uh, I think there's one more natural wonder up to the north over by Mogadishu, which is the uh, Lysia Fjord or whatever it's called. Yeah, Lysia Fjord. Lysia Fjord. <clears throat> this one's unlikely to have an impact on a Pangea map because all it does is give you a naval promotion, right? I was about to say, yeah. what does it do? I don't think I've ever seen that. That new? It gives you a promotion on uh, each of the ships, but it's kind of quote unquote broken and banned in the 4v4s actually, you know, because uh, um, uh, not only it gives you a promotion, but whenever the boats change a state, 
for, for example, you get a promotion for a galley and then you upgrade the galley in the caravel, you can move the caravel next to Lysim Fjord and get another promotion. Uh, oh. So basically, man, by the time you... Somebody messed up their coding. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that is the correct coding. That's the best way for it to work. <laughs> basically, by the time you end up with, um, like, fighting with the destroyers, you're going to have everywhere level 4 destroyers on your units. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, actually, uh, another interesting coastal wonder here in between Egypt and Russia is my fav one of my favorite wonders here. It's the Pio Pio Tahi. Oh, yes, that is a good one. And I'm another thing, I'm extra gold. <clears throat> another thing worth mentioning is that Russia and um, Cleopatra, I think, are on the same team. So they have at least one angle where they can support each other and they don't have to worry about other players. Who got the relic? The bishop, Netherlands. Amsterdam. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So he's going to have a 2 2 base. No fresh water, though. He moved off it. And it does look like. Actually, I do like his uh, his rivers over here. And they will get amazing adjacency to his uh, districts. And he's so protected. Like, he just needs to close that choke towards uh, Athens, get a city there as soon as possible, and put some units in. And that's it. He's just going to be free seeming over here behind the mountains. Yeah, I would exactly. go as far as to say this is like this is a dream Netherlands spawn if he can get his border secure. Yeah, this is exactly what you're saying, Potato. This is ideal position for Dutch. Why would you move off Freshwater on your first city? I think he's basing uh, on the palace that gives uh, an extra housing and he wanted the extra production from the 2 2 base. He also so has, has like, a better harbor. housing default. Uh, yes. Yep, and, I, and my guess would be uh, uh, Netherlands is going to rush sailing and get extra housing from those fish resources yeah. okay. and then use the faith from the pearls to get the God of the Sea Pantheon to make up for that production. Yeah, and then get the 2-2 two -two start instead. Okay, all right. He already got it. I mean, he was thinking like that before he got a relic. Now he actually has a relic. Like, this is even better. He's going to have uh, uh, God of the Sea Pantheon immediately. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to feel amazing to pick up that early relic and get a guaranteed first Pantheon pick. Yeah, whatever you want, you can choose. You can pick. Oh, another relic. Chuck this time. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Oh, Chuck, Chuck must Chuck feel so Egypt. good right now. Probably thinking, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm going to get anything I want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would expect I... Chuck to go for the Lady of Reeds and Marshes with all those floodplains in his capital. I was thinking the same. Is he actually going to do it, though? That, that's the question. He does have a strong Temenangi over here in the capital. He does have uh, multiple other uh, cities with the uh, floodplains. Well, actually, well, I say multiple, but it's actually just one to the southeast where his scout is, and that's it. Yeah, I definitely feel like Adam and Anki here for Egypt, which gives you science and production on marsh and floodplain tiles, would be, uh, would be a great opener for them. For sure. I... I think also if you couple that with the Sphinx, that is going to be so great. Oh, that's crazy amounts of yields. <clears throat> Let me see. So you get plus two faith, plus one culture, and plus two appeal on the on the Sphinx. And you also get an extra faith point and an extra culture point if next to a wonder. So basically you just put down a Temenanki and place all of these around it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think Egypt is... is really happy with their starting location here and i just hiccuped i apologize <laughs> <laughs> no problem uh, let's see spain though does he have a continent split no not even close doesn't. oh, oh my, my goodness God. it's so far away that's devastating to go from having an amazing continent split to having no continent split you know feel what bad? though if he goes all the way through the water there's no one on that other side of the continent that is true I think you, I think you kind of want that Spain continent split early though, right? Yeah, Cuz it gives you I know. so I'm just many saying, advantages. It's a possibility that you could go all the way over there. And then he gets Fountain of Youth. He's got so many mountains as well for protection. So like that that's open land for Spain. All that can be settled by Spain and should be. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it's a little harder to pull that off on online speed, but I think it might be possible. I think he can uh, puddle jump his way with the city states. Maybe take out uh, Valletta, get another city in between, and uh, then go there. There's actually you don't even need the cartography. There's uh, like a one tile uh, choke that you can go through. Uh, oh, you're Beautiful. right, actually. Oh yeah. 
he could settle this suspiciously sleeped peninsula. <coughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is the antenna. <laughs> the map's antenna. Antenna. <laughs> Although the map, the map looks a little bit like a manta ray with that kind of tail. Um, we haven't talked about yeah. Persia's start location. How is Persia looking here with their start location? He's getting bullied by barbs here from what I can see. He's not taking care of his barbs. And now he's paying the price. Uh, two, two base, a lot of two twos around it. Does have access to iron, does have access to horses. Looks like he's also going to have good mountains. Um, but I think he's actually going to be... Uh, Spain's in trouble, focusing. actually. Yeah, Spain's he's gonna be teammate is Spain. all the way on the other side of the map as well with Netherlands. Um, so Spain has no help against Persia. And uh, that's going to be bad news bears. Yeah, it looks like they uh, haven't found each other yet, but Persia is on the verge of discovering Spain. In fact, they just found Spain. Yeah, they, he didn't meet them. He, he's standing one tile away, so he's not going to meet him yet. But he's he's there. He he sees what's happening here. Actually, let's take a look at the. Mm -hmm, mm, what is it? There we go. Yeah, there we go. Just outside the range of uh, meeting. Uh, I do want to see Norway, because Norway is another powerful civilization on the coast here, and he is to the north over there. Oh, look at those trees. We do have him with a uh, reef fish. Looks like he's getting a builder out. I do see him going for animal husbandry over here instead of uh, going for his uh, monumentality. Um, Norway did get a facelift in a BBG and it's mostly towards... Um, uh, well, it's one of the hybrid civilizations as I like to call them uh, because you can get a face and uh, go for the gold on the coast at the same time. It's a bit... Uh, Oh, Slow okay, yeah, the so beginning. the stave church doesn't get from woods anymore, okay. Yeah. I, I, ha I have it pulled up, so I can I can look whenever you reference something. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, actually, I, I do think it got changed in a good way, um, because you do get the, you still get the um, extra naval uh, production, you still, you, you do get the 50% production towards holy sites, and the holy sites do get adjacency from the water tiles around it um but going like investing into holy sites early into your faith generation does slow down your uh, science acquirement and everything else i'm just looking at all these like hill trees and just like wow he's got so many chops right so he this guy's yeah. got a really good early yeah he's going to be able to chop out some really important early game infrastructure or even just chop out a whole bunch of settlers if that's the route he decides yeah just even if he wants to he can easily get to Lahore for example that whole island will be his on the east side Let's just get yeah, again, the, the one boat. tile choke of shallow water right there oh yeah uh, well, one thing I would like to about this though yeah go 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 sorry I, I would like to quickly point out that Norway actually spawned on a three continent split nearly if you take a look at that continent map he's going to have access to more luxuries than he maybe otherwise would have Ooh. That is nice. That is indeed nice. You're talking about the red continent and then the white continent? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, he's, he's a couple of jumps away, like a couple of settles, and he might have access to, you know, there's rice over there. Uh, there's, um, although I guess that's kind of close to Egypt, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. He, at least he has two continents, which will help him out in terms of luxuries. Somebody build a wonder? <clears throat> uh, maybe somebody. You just cooked off a wonder, wonder. yeah. yeah. Uh, Jirachi uh, just started a holy site as well. Oh, maybe that's what I see. Uh, Manchester got immediately placed uh, inland with religious settlements. So on yes! Yeah. He, he noticed it. He, he scout went there and figured out where it is. I see Hungary did actually wait a little bit for his second settler. I don't know why he's so late on the second settler. I guess he wanted a few more scouts than normal. Who, who was late on scouts? Sorry. Um, uh, Hungary on settlers. He's uh, barely now moving a settler to the west side when he should have already settled. Yeah, I think I think it's maybe his positioning. Um, he doesn't. I think maybe he decided that he spawned in the middle of the map and so he needed a little bit more scouting. I think he might be right there. Although he only has two scouts. I, what was he doing? Did he build a monument? I, I don't know. That's that's a very good question. He did not build a monument. Honestly, I don't know. 
It's, maybe he worked some bananas instead of working the two tools. It slowed down That's everything. That's what I'm thinking like too. Yeah. One, two mm, that makes sense. But, yeah. Uh, I did notice we do have uh, pantheons already picked up. Uh, Egypt is going to go Lady of the Reeds and Marshes, of course. I mean, we were thinking this. And he already has a city next to Pio Pio Tahi. He's going to settle that ne probably next turn. Um, That's a great Russia early settle. Oh my god, look at Russia. Oh my god. We got God of Open Sky here. Already three of those uh, ship tiles improved. He has another builder going to improve some other stuff. And looking at his uh, tech side here, he's going archery in three turns. So he's going to open up that possibility to um, get Temple of Artemis here. But he put that Lavra exactly on the place where he could have put Temple of Artemis, like the best one. So, well, we'll see. Yeah, I think sometimes you want to make a compromise and just place a good holy site and sacrifice the best Temple of Artemis that you can. Yeah. He's not going to get a lot of uh, faith generation, though. Uh, well, what did he take? Not as a pin? Did he take River Goddess? No, he took uh, Open Sky, you said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Open Sky, yeah. He's going to get... Um, I, I guess he's going to play. try to play around that faith uh, generation here. At least he's going to get the relic from uh, Cleopatra. That's a, a bit more faith. Oh, that's true. Players can trade those relics between each other. Is that something players do all yeah. the time? Uh, yes, but we had to implement a rule. Uh, you can only trade it after turn 20 uh, because otherwise uh, the team that managed to get one relic, it will just take all of the good pantheons away from everybody else. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Because, yeah, totally. That seems like a totally reasonable rule. Uh, God of the Sea here for uh, Dutch, for Netherlands. We got Pearls, we got Fish already improved. Very nice, yeah, indeed. He also settled on uh, Truffle Tile to the northeast, so he's getting two amenities immediately. Very nice. Plus three happiness level in his uh, capital. Hates fresh water, though, I notice. Just absolutely hates it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's going to get uh, harbors, lighthouses. Yeah, I know, house. I know, I know. My personal guess as well is maybe they're fishing for a really good industrial zone with a double aqueduct play later so they can get that extra housing if they need it. Um, that would be my oh, guess. Oh, oh. I, I, I'm, I just got Pepegat, by the way. My, my chat is uh, putting me back in my place. He cannot place a Temple of Artemis there. Uh, I totally forgot to watch the camps, and he's right. He probably can put it on the iron or next to the deer to the south or to the east. So I'm I'm Pepega this time. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're it, okay. It, it I forgive you for being Pepega. My mom. <laughs> Kek W. Michael is Pepega. It, it happens, man. It happens. I, I, probably I need another coffee or something for my brain to start functioning properly. Uh, I would like to point out here there might be a little bit of settlement aggression here between Greece and the Netherlands. Uh, Greece seems to be sending a settler towards that choke point with the volcano. Yeah, and it looks like uh, he wants to be the one that's going to keep that uh, way open towards the uh, Netherlands here. I do like how that volcano exploded and started um, improving the tiles around it into extra um, points of science. Some extra points of uh, production also. Yeah, oh, there's nothing more work. satisfying than seeing an incredible volcano Ooh, tile. There's a war? War already? <clears throat> yeah, Russia declared war on... on Wait a second. Girakis on Norway. Why? Okay, let's, let's see what's going on here. Uh, did Cleo or Hungary declare war on each other instead? Because they're the closest ones together. I guess so. I guess Cleo and uh, Norway, but uh, I mean, oh. you stay close, but they're not close. They're like two screens away. They're the ones that make sense. I mean, I don't know why else you'd do it. Yeah, Vengeance. I don't know. Uh, maybe there's some scout battles going on here. Maybe they were zona controlling for a tribal village. I can't see a reason that they would do that. What is? What are the other ones? Curtis and who is sure. it? Chuck, a uh, golden, no, Chuck, golden. Maybe they. Oh, golden have, uh... did finish TOA. Maybe it was a hey, you finished my wonder. Like f you, I'm gonna declare war on you now. 
Or he started uh, building he, he it. Just, I'm sorry, he started yeah, building. Ended building it. Yeah. Uh, actually, there are some uh, notifications, uh, new notifications in BSM. Uh, now you get uh, notifications when you build, when somebody starts building stuff, um, and when he finishes, and uh, you get uh, stuff for like first, first uh, pop ten city, first uh, city somewhere else, uh, found a wonder, settled on the wonder, stuff like that. I think I've just spotted it. Cleopatra has a warrior inside Hungary City, by the way. I think that was it. And also, Cleopatra just dropped down the Edema Nanki. Uh huh. But wait. Yeah, I'm not sure what that warrior was trying to achieve by punching that city. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Well, this is this is actually a weird uh, placement for Edema Nanki. Is he not gonna try to use uh, his Sphinx around the Wonder? I guess not. Oh, I think I know what happened. I think I know why the war was declared. I think Cleopatra had a warrior next to Hungary settler, declared war to take it, but Hungary managed to settle the city before he could attack. Ah, I think that's what's happened there. Call. Okay. That's why the warrior is uh, a bit uh, low in HP there. Yeah, yeah the city was damaged. I think it was an emergency click settled here going on. <laughs> I, interesting. We're on turn 21 and we've already almost seen a settler get snatched. It's exciting in the early game. It's, uh, I did see he was naked, but I'm like, this surely he'll be fine. These are these are really good players. They are these the the, the caliber of play that you're going to see today uh, is going to be incredible. Oh, Grace Fikra is also telling us in um, in chat that uh, exact thing, that exact story that we were telling us in uh, Hungary. So we got a Brilliant. confirmation over here. Okay, so uh, Spain, by the way, I'd like to point out, has is just about to finish their f third and fourth galley, and I think Valletta might be in their sights. The I thing with so. those cities, though, is there's so much surrounding water on those cities that you are such a target, because you can if you can get you you get surrounded by four boats. What the heck are you gonna do? I don't think he knows about the north. I don't think he knows about Norway. I would have imagined he would want to stay away from those uh, longships. Maybe he's just taking a risk right now to settle there. Let me see. Yeah, he doesn't know about Norway oh, at all. Oh, wow. So when wow. he's going to figure out that not only he's going to have to fight immortals, which he's getting for a settle right now by Persia, but he's also going to need to fight longships on the water, it's not going to be a good day for Happy Dragon. Sad Dragon. Yeah, yeah. Sad sad I, I guess his, his his best hope is maybe he can grab Valletta, he can grab Zanzibar and try to outscale his opponents and, and defend as best as he can. Yeah, you, you can only keep one city state, though. You have to raise all of the others. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I do notice he went for God of Craftsman, your favorite pantheon, by the way. And it uh, looks like he's starting improving quite a few tiles here. Yeah, God of Craftsman is a fantastic pantheon. It gives you plus one production and plus one faith on those red strategic resources, and it's easily one of my favorite pantheons. Usually, I take it if I don't have good op options. Yeah, that's my that's my go to. I'm like third, fourth to pick a pantheon. It's like it's always available. So I'm like, yeah, man, like extra production on these tiles, you're guaranteed to get them. So like, easy choice. And... That's a good Spain settle. I like that Spain settle. I like it too, but it's probably going to be a Norwegian settles at some point. <laughs> that's true, but he, but he completely cuts off that side, right? Like that's why I liked it. It's like, okay, this is this all of this is his land now. All this tail is his. Man. I mean, for how long? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Man. Those Norwegian longships. Uh, the, the thing with the um, Norway uh, spawn over here, he yes, he stayed on two cities. Now he's gonna get another setter, but he managed to get um, Earth Goddess, so he's getting some extra faith from those charming and breathtaking tiles. Has very good adjacency holy sites. Plus four, another plus four here. Uh, he's getting his shrines up, and his religion is gonna give him feed the world and pilgrimage, an extra two faith for each uh, city, and uh, food and the housing for each uh, shrine and temple. That will allow him to pump out longships. Like he he can focus on just you know buying the settlers and buying the builders with faith and pump out longships uh, for another ten turns after this. So we know Spain doesn't know about Norway, but does Norway know about Spain? 
He does, right? We, 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 we said that early? No, no he doesn't. No. Oh he my doesn't. god. Nobody knows about... They don't know about the South. It's just a matter of time. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see that, you know, immediately after he's going to see a Spain scout to the South of him, he's going to put in production a longship. Definitely. That's what I would expect him to do. He's playing like... A, it, it, once a water sieve spots another water sieve, that's like, boom, okay, I'm going to spam my unique unit and you're going to die. That's That's what I yeah. think his strategy is going to be. Yeah, and, and remember, long ships can go into uh, deep water much earlier. <laughs> oh <laughs> God, that's just right. Go around <laughs> if he wants to. Yeah, he's going to use Valletta as a highway <laughs> just to get around the Spain <laughs> cities. You've got to feel bad for 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 Spain right here. It feels like every time you have a cool uh, coastal sim city sieve, there's an aggressive city a uh, coastal sieve right nearby. Yeah, there's somebody having a better sim than you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, for sure. That's quite uh, distressing over here. Uh, I did notice Temple of Artemis got finished in uh, St. Petersburg. And we do have uh, plus three happiness level in the capital yet. He didn't improve all of his tiles though. And another word, MCS Crag on the bishop. The MCS Crag, that is Persia. Okay, so that's, that's going to be Spain. Okay, that's... MCS That's gonna be so rough, man. Yeah, it looks yeah. like he's trying to pick up that trader in Spain cities, but Spain has a warrior guarding it. And another war. What is this? What is happening? The same team declaring war on another team. Alcoholic this time. That's uh, Cree. England and Mamaleto. England with Mamaleto and the Cree with uh, Alcotol. Hey! Oh no. Oh, we got it. Oh, wow. Oh. He was so close. With the shift enter. So close. Yeah. He yoinked that. <clears throat> well, this is going to be awkward. Valletta died. Okay. okay. Let's uh, see England, by the way. What what did England get? I, I was just about to say, England has gone for zero infrastructure and they're going for mass settlers. And this is a strategy I don't think I've seen people do in this tournament yet. Um, and they're killing Anton uh, Nariva with boats? Yes. He's going for oh, wow. mass cities here. I, I do want to remind you, yesterday in the FFA, remember Aztec. Remember the Aztec. Was, yeah, remember Aztec. He was just pumping out settlers, no care for any kind of districts, just, you know, getting them out there, getting them planted all over his uh, land. When everybody was on six cities, he was ten cities. Yeah. <laughs> he just turned into the blob. And, and you know, taking a look at England City here. I, I can't say that I disagree with his strategy. He's got nobody nearby that can threaten him except for Hungary. And he's getting a free city-state with two galleys. I think this is the strategy he should go for. He should go for mass cities here. He's perfectly nestled in the corner of the map. Unlike Hungary here, who has to worry about enemies on all around him. Yeah, both of his uh, choke points are closed off for the water. So he's not going to be worried about Spain, Norway, anything. Um, the only thing that I'm, uh, I do want to point out, it, it just popped into my head here. There's hunger in the game. Everybody will kill their city states next to them. That's like, true, you, actually, because Hungary is the chaos maker. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to leave any kind of option for Hungary to just, you know, uh, deal some damage on your cities. So you, you want to take that away from him. Uh, also, another point that I forgot to make at the beginning, by the way, uh, um, my viewers are, um, um, are saying thank you, Potato, for making such great tutorials. And they learned a lot from you. Hey, thank you guys so much. I'm glad to make tutorials. I'm, I'm just happy to teach people how to play and enjoy a game that I love so much. Getting hey? everybody better. One step at a time, one video at a time. Hey, that's my hope is, is if I can make people better at the game and, and also I think more importantly, if I can if I can make people have more fun playing the game, uh, that's a mission accomplished. Uh, Russia has started building the Great Bath, which is another fun early game wonder based around oh flood planes. Oh my goodness. Now, I thought with Egypt going for Edom and Nike, I thought they might try to make a Great Bath play themselves. Yeah, I think uh, that... It, um... Etemenanki, though. But yeah, you're right. I, I, I don't know. I'm a bit... Um, um, 
I was thinking about the Temenanki. It would have been placed in such a way that he could use his Sphinx to put it all around him, uh, to, all around the Temenanki for that extra culture you get. Because he's probably going to use the Sphinx anyway, and you might as well just optimize it. You can't put them next to each other, so you have to be careful how you place them. Um, he would have had a maximum of four in this scenario, for example. Of yeah. three, actually. I, one question, actually. I, here, here's a more of a, a fun question for the both of you. Looking at the map, if you had to take over, if you had to sub in for somebody, who would you jump into the game and play as? Who would you pick right now to be to be in the shoes of? England, thousand percent. They look they're looking really good right now. How about you, Michael? Cree. You like the Cree positioning? Tell me about really? the Cree. Why why do you like the Cree positioning? Is it because of their strong it's... capital? He's far away from people that he gets to sim, and he has enough land to the south that he can expand into, and his whole north is full of mountains. Nobody, like, he's, he's, nobody will even think of coming close to Cree until the late game. So, I think I like your assessment of the Cree. Um, and don't forget, they also have a really strong capital with those nice pastures giving their trade routes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not, not to mention that um, England. I like England also, but this is uh, Eleanor England, so it's it's gonna be a bit um, slower to get all of those bonuses uh, working for it. Uh, and at the same time, I think he's gonna be at war with um, MC, uh, not MCS crack. Who is it? Uh, Hungary, Hungary, Curtis Love, for uh, for the longest time in the game. We're going to see how uh, they. You're that's missing hungry, hungry, hungry hippos because. Uh, <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> uh, yeah, hungry, Michael, hungry. I I think there's three turns left on the ancient era. Would you like to talk about era score? Let's see. Uh, we got uh, Greece 1919. We got um, Persia 2319. It looks like Egypt got it 2619. Uh, Golden RPG with uh, 3119. Eleanor 3119. Crete 4019. Oh, Happy Dragon is 16 out of 19, and it does look like he's trying to get a horse in four turns. Uh, did manage to take care of that um, scout, by the way. His trader is still up and running. Um, and looking at his uh, options here, oof, that might be a bit rough for him to get his um, Golden Age. Um, we got the Bishop, 17 out of 19. Same problem. Doesn't have... Uh, oh, he gets a Harbor. Never mind. He's going to get a Splendid Harbor. That's going to be four points. Easy peasy. Uh, Curtis Love, 20 out of 19. And Jiraki is going to make it with 25 out of 19. Just Spain is the one that's struggling right now. Yeah, just Spain. And Spain is going to be on five cities. Did he sacrifice his uh, Golden Age for five cities here? I actually don't think he's sacrificed at all because if you take a look at Seville, there is a builder on a forested hill and I think he's getting ready to chop out that horseman. Ah, good eyes. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. That's going to be only one or two points. That's probably the first horse of the game, right? So maybe two points. Mm, it could be. It, it's going to be very, very close. That's what he needs. Actually, that's what he needs. 17 out of 19. Let's see. If it is Let's the first here. horse, I think it... Uh, it does secure him. Well, he might want to finish a tech first. Yeah, he's about to finish masonry, which might give him more uh, uh, production from the chop. So he might chop it next turn when there's one turn to go on the era. That would be what I would do in this situation. Uh, now, how important is it to hit these golden ages, Michael? Um, it's extremely important. I cannot stress this enough. We've seen yesterday how bad it was for China to miss it by one point. I cannot even imagine what would happen oh. with Spain losing it this time. Uh, at least he didn't invest so much into his holy sites and everything. You see China already had the districts uh, locked in. And this is, a, I guess, a bit different, but still losing a pen brush and voice would mean he's going to be behind so much from uh, compared to Persia. He did chop his uh, tree where Horseman comes out next turn, so it looks like everyone is going to be getting a Golden Age this time. Yeah, and he did get another point from somewhere, so it's fine, it's fine. It's all good. Maybe he, he met another six city. cities. Holy smokes. And they're still producing settlers, if, I, if, uh, if I'm correct as well. Yeah, another two of them coming out. How could you not want to be England right now? I, the, the thing about England right now is, if somebody noticed that they were building so many settlers, 
and had and had started cranking out military england is in trouble because if you get even one tech advantage here england might struggle to keep up but I, this fair. greed is looking like it's going unpunished yeah <clears throat> well, they, they have a Kree right next to their them. teammates right next to them too right so they have protection from the Kree. Uh, it's like if Hungary, who really is the only one that's going to threaten them right now, is the one that's going to go towards England, they have the Credo as well to, to attack Hungary back. Because Persia's going to Spain, right? And that's Hungary and Persia are the only threats to England right now. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Hungary, <laughs> we're, we're talking about who we would like to be in the shoes of, talking about someone who I don't want to be in the shoes of, Hungary here, surrounded by two <laughs> potentially very powerful enemies and with no allies to back him up. And not that many powerful cities to go for. I see he's uh, struggling to get more cities out. He's stopped to build a plus uh, three campus uh, next to Debrecen. Uh, and he got his uh, Gavan Plaza in Buda a bit early, I would say. And it does look like uh, right now he's uh, barely getting his uh, third, fourth and fifth uh, settler out. It's going to take so long until he gets on the same level as uh, England. If Penbrush and Voice will activate here on England next turn, we're going to have so much culture potential for him in the next um, era uh, he's gonna put down districts from F each of these cities uh, probably harbors we're gonna see um, campuses we're gonna see a lot of science a lot of culture gold it, it's like everything it looks like it's aligning in the stars for england yeah I much more aggressive play i would say from mama leto yesterday we've seen him on pericles and he's settled down a lot tried to get the culture tried to get some bonuses from his land but now he's expanding everywhere totally different yeah it's really fun to see players play different styles day to day because like you were saying yesterday i think he sat on five cities as pericles for a good long time and now he's not happy with five cities i would i would be surprised if we saw him on less than 10 to 12 cities this game yeah exactly uh, also, he gets to keep on settling the coast to the west side. He's going to get next to Cree. They get to trade with each other if they want. Actually, I would really suggest Cree get a city on the coast to the south. Can you imagine coastal trade routes to a city over there? Oh, Ooh. my God. Even if he puts it in the tundra, it doesn't matter. Just get a city there, you know? Just get one. I have to agree. Those coastal trade routes can be <laughs> game-changing. So if he just threw a city down there, they would be absolutely raking in the gold. Man, I remember yesterday Portugal got like four or five turns of trade routes towards his uh, opponent next to him on the water. He he just jumped a hundred gold per turn <laughs> for those few turns. <laughs> yeah, that was incredible to watch. And then it was kind of funny too because the second we noticed, Japan noticed and instantly declared war to cancel those trade routes. <laughs> well, there, there was a trade route going through his units. <laughs> that's, that's how I noticed it as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god he basically funded his opponent there yeah so norway three cities now he's getting his harbors a bit surprising that he's getting harbors so early but sure he's gonna get a lot of gold uh, that's another thing that's happening with norway he's getting extra adjacency to his harbors from his holy sites so these harbors are gonna be plus six Oh, I really, man, I need to play Norway in the better balance game mode. I love playing coastal uh, faith style um, yeah, and getting extra something. adjacency on those holy sites. That sounds like a lot of fun to play with. And oh, uh, here come the long that. ships. Okay, oh. here we go. Oh, long ships. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but say, I'm like, wow, Norway's only on three cities. They might be uh, struggling for it a little bit, but they still don't know where Spain is, though. So what are they building these for? They don't even know where the, the city states are. Like, is it just I, for Aerosphere at this point? Aerosphere yeah, and exploration, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just jumped into the next era. He he knew he has enough um, era score and he didn't want to go overboard. So now he's getting his uh, Viking longships out, uh, trying to scout. When he's going to find out that galley, you're, you're going to see him build a lot more. Yeah, uh, can't wait for that. It looks like nearly everyone has gone for pen, brush, and voice here. Uh, which is uh, giving you plus two culture and plus one gold for every specialty district you have, with the exception of Norway and Russia, who both went for really early faith economies. And I think they're planning on faith purchasing a bunch of settlers while they build infrastructure. <clears throat> I agree. That makes sense. Uh, not, a lot of, not a lot of faith banked up on uh, Harald, though. But and he's got two like... holy sites right now, so I feel like yeah. they can very easily change. 
Yeah, I'm a bit worried about Peter's um, faith accumulation, but he still is on 35, so I guess it's it's good. Now we do have audience chamber coming up from him, uh, from Golden. Looks like he's now repairing, upgrading those um, pastures and uh, camps. He, there was a blizzard that just went through, mm -hmm. and I think actually two blizzards that went through. I see quite a bit of these tiles uh, got um, extra food, extra production on them. It's good. Oracle coming up in Novgorod. Are we actually going to see him uh, trying to go for some culture shenanigans here? It might be with Oracle in, in Novgorod. He's, He's gone very heavy on, on wonders. Yeah, early on. Did he get Grey Path? He did. He did get Grey Path to the south. Okay. Uh, he's not expanding though. He's staying on these uh, three series. It's gonna take a while until he's gonna make enough of faith to get his uh, next. Well, he he bought his builders, I think, with his faith, and so I think he's waiting for that audience chamber to finish. Then he's gonna have faith by his settlers. Then he's gonna start to settle. That's my yeah. that's my guess. Just just one uh, information there. Uh, in BBG in monumentality, you don't get the uh, thirty percent off. You only get like ten percent off. So. Settlers get expensive really fast in faith. You, you Which do is need why he audience. invested in the builders early on, right? Uh, yeah, at some point. I, I was thinking maybe uh, he wanted to go tall at the beginning, and then I think he's going to put into production settlers rather than buy them with faith. I'm, uh, that's why I'm curious what he's going to do here. Why not both? Production ants and faith buy them. That, that would be ideal. I agree. <laughs> that would be ideal. I think you're okay, both wrong. I think he's going to build settlers and then instantaneously delete them. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Must have got a thousand dollar donation then. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Move them toward their uh, opponents, let them see them, and then delete them in their face. <laughs> <laughs> That's pure evil. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Norway and Spain find each other. Okay. Uh, okay. What does this feel like if you're Spain? You find Norway and he's so close. How do you feel? Man, oh. you find Persia on your land next door to you. You're like, oh man, this is a terrible game. Then you go north and you find Norway on your waters. Excuse me? You feel like absolute who right now is Spain? <laughs> Yeah, oh, no. I, I don't envy Spain's position, especially since the Persians you just mentioned got their very first immortal and enough archers here to pressure. And I mean seriously pressure Spain. Oh, yeah, man. Wow. I think the only stopper right now is uh, Iron for uh, Cyrus. That's it. He has in camo training projects coming up in two turns. He has the units. It's just not enough Iron to upgrade more immortals or hard build them. Are you allowed to strategic trade between teammates? Uh, I think it was disallowed, if I'm correct. Yeah, I, I, I think all strategic trading was banned. Basically, okay. you're you're not even really allowed to interact with your ally except with trade routes, I think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, getting an alliance, but not a military one. You can get an alliance. What do you do with Spain right now? Do you build walls? Like, is walls going to really help you in this case with all these archers? Swordsman. Swordman. Okay. Yeah, and you need pray, fat units to block. And pray you're going to get too many times. That's the, that's the only strategy. And uh, Immortals eat these archers alive. It's, Im archers are the weakest unit that you can actually uh, defend yourself against Immortals. They do shut them from afar. Yep, it's it's terrifying. If you click on an immortal and then hover over an archer, you can see it, it is just actually a two shot. And the worst part about the immortals being ranged units is they get melee unit promotions. So they hit like a melee unit, but at range. Yeah, They're just a really defensible uh, ranged unit is usually how I view them. Very hard to yeah. kill. I do have to say to mention that um, it's a bit different 
the result is a bit different of the fight because you, you see over there you get two attack points on the immortal it, uh, attack numbers it's 43 with the sword and 25 below with the ranged attack with the target oh you're right i see that oh i think so i made a mistake no no problem oh, but it's 25 okay. plus the oligarchy plus the uh, three attacking so it, it's actually one uh, 25 plus 7 uh, 32 and you do get uh, afterwards uh, more bonuses you can get uh, for example um, a general bonus another five that he's gonna get so basically it is gonna be a 40 attack uh, ranged yeah i mean if you ask me what's the most broken unit you can make for the classical era i would say it's an archer that that, that get melee get that get melee unit promotions <laughs> yeah just get the first promotion it's fine what can go wrong and an extra plus seven you know like <laughs> what can go wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay now we got more viking longships looks like uh jiraki did not declare war yet on uh, spain this is surprising that he's uh he's not putting all of his uh, effort right now well this, it, uh, it looks like things. spain found him but he hasn't found spain well i mean you see a boat you can put that two enough. and two together right yeah <laughs> yeah but he might not know that spain is close enough for him to obliterate them because it has been That's 36 fair. turns that galley could have been exploring for a while yeah true and it's damaged at the same time so maybe he's thinking oh okay fought some barbs got over here Oh, oh, now we can see the Immortal with uh, 48 melee yeah, strength. Oh, no, Spain. Uh, and they're building harbors and holy sites. Oh, boy. This is not looking very good. Spain has to see this, though, right now. I, you know, he sees the archer that just stepped into his, his, his vision range. I don't know if it is, because there's a hill in right in front of him. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh, you might be right. You might be right. He, he That archer is on a hill, so it should be able to see it, but oh true 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 um the true true i i expect him to um <laughs> basically cancel everything that he's building and start building archers would you say that's right michael yes uh, i'm actually uh, extremely surprised about the archer spam of uh, mcs crack here i was expecting him to go more like uh, warriors but or maybe some if horses. you kill that one immortal all your cities are safe so, so if you see some priority targeting here, maybe Spain can survive. Uh, my uh, chat also pointed out something, and I was uh, taking a peek at that. Do you remember yesterday, Mamaleto was with uh, Pericles, and he had Torres, but a really bad Torres? I I don't remember that, actually. I didn't I didn't know he had Torres. Maybe I just forgot that part. It was so bad, that's why. <laughs> so bad um, <laughs> i forget about torres time, he has another torres this time it's very good torres so, and i was thinking like okay mama leto has like torres bias at this point i definitely feel like somewhere in the code at, at for axis hq they they coded in a line that says if name equals malmetto spawn torres <laughs> within 20 tiles of his capital because he has just hit it way too many times let me actually double check if it did it indeed had the Taurus yesterday. Um, um you saw his religion by the way? He's getting Stonehenge in Manchester? Yeah, I was just about to say that that Stonehenge is two turns from finishing, which will open up some religious plays here. What sort of religion do you go as uh, as England here? Either the extra amenities uh, for a district, Zen meditation, or uh, if you really want to get some faith generation going, you go for divine inspiration, the China one, you know, divine inspiration with sacred places. Ooh, yeah, that could be quite powerful. If you got out of wonder at every city, you'll make a ton of faith, a ton of every resource, really, because of that um, um, sacred places buff. Yeah. What Wait, religions have been taken so far? Uh, in terms of religion yesterday by the way and no he didn't get Torres. it was just amazing um uh, how, was, how do you call them uh yeah choral music's cooking. taken okay yeah, choral music has gone uh with lay ministry for russia so he's going for a very heavy culture faith game here with his religion um is this like a usual play for russia yes um, unfortunately yes it just means he's not going to get any gold. 
It's so he's going to be, just... yeah, that was always the biggest problem with Russia is they're always broke. Is his ally, yeah. Pericles, going to be, help, be helping him there or is Pericles also going to be broke? Uh, his think... ally is Cleopatra, which is yeah. next door. Oh, sorry, Cleopatra, I think... yes. I think yeah, that's I think... what he's going to base his uh, economy on. He's going to get a coastal <laughs> and they're going to trade coastally and he's going to get extra gold anyway from uh, Egypt trade routes, extra food, extra gold. So I think that's what's going to happen here. Uh, personally, this is something that uh, I've seen so many times with uh, Russia, uh, Russia, or I should say Russia being played by the, um, the majority. Uh, they do try to keep at that uh, zero, one, maybe minus one gold per turn instead of uh, trying to get an economy of their own oh, and get as much know. base generation, as much culture, as much uh, as many theater squares as possible. What was that the about the Netherlands? Netherlands? Ooh. Just took a city state on the tail of the map. Oh. And so now they are they are connected and they can trade. Spain. They can they can actually help their teammate right now, possibly. Yeah. It's going to take yeah. a while, but they can in theory. Well, I mean, well, it opens up safe not. trade routes. It opens up potentially a little bit of naval production. Because, I mean, even if the Netherlands sends a few galleys to block, that'll give you support bonuses. It'll buy you time. Like, this does open up a little bit of co cooperation, I think. Here we get walls now are starting to come up. All right, so Spain's starting to fight back. Get, get your walls up. That's all you can do right now. Yeah, man, oh, I just feel so bad for Spain because this is such difficult terrain to defend. And here comes the immortal. Oh, look at that damage. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. They Last turn. <laughs> This is one of the things you have to be careful when you're playing Civ is you get last moved, first moved, uh, you just yikes. lose a unit and it's oof. That's the part I don't like about multiplayer, but we all have to deal with it, I understand. Yeah, this is part of the game, you have to live with it. I do see more horses coming up from uh, Gordian Pasagade, Hamatana building up another immortal, so it, uh, it looks yeah. like he's gonna get enough military here to uh, overwhelm Spain defenses very soon. Even if he gets ancient walls, those archers will just drop it down slowly but surely. Mm, definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Yeah, per uh, Persia's looking uh, pretty strong right now. Egypt did manage to finish that at Temenanki in Rakedet. Still did not put down um, Sphinxes. I'm extremely surprised that we don't see a few Sphinxes here. Uh, it Maybe they're like leaving the taken. faith and culture to Russia. Uh, sure. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. I think they're just the trading partner now. So Russia's the win condition. Russia's on 56 culture right now. That's insane. So I think they're just like, okay, just trade with me. I get food as well for, for Egypt. So like this is a, it's an ideal trade partner. And well, I'll feed you gold if you need gold. Um, I, yeah, I think Egypt now is just, I, will, I, I am going to give you gold and you are the win condition. Egypt is on a 30 gold a turn, indeed. He's getting it. He's getting it. He's getting there. Uh, I do also want to point out Russia did make quite a few sacrifices to get to that uh, culture per turn. Uh, got Hanging Gardens, got Oracle in Novgorod, um, got quite a few of these uh, theater squares here. Uh, no economy, no science though. That is going to be... And he didn't get even Pingala. He's going Moksha with uh, Magnus and then Kazan with uh, oh. Liang. Okay, interesting. Yeah, maybe he, he scouted out the fact that he, nobody can really threaten him and he can do this extremely greedy, tall, cultural slash tourism build. Yeah. Oh, and look at Kankis go. Five cities, Pericles. We got him with um, good campuses. He's getting his Acropolises down from each of his cities. Did manage to get to poke that city in Ephesus. Look at that. He just blocked the bishop uh, from... Uh, defending properly his uh, land here and we do have uh, the bishop with uh... oh he just uh, lost his trade route by the way to russia wow Golden just pillaged it oh and... that's got to be a tilting that's... moment here i i I, yeah. I don't know about you guys but if i'm like early into a game and someone takes my trade route i really just want to start a new game <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I understand what if somebody snatches your settler? 
<laughs> Go up again. Yeah, the sailor snatching is so is tilting. Oh man, that's a table flipping moment. Absolutely. Is, I have to say it is unbelievable that after so many settler snatches, we still don't see all of the players escorting the settlers. I don't. I don't. I don't think I ever do. I'll be honest with you. I every single time I put out a naked settler. Why? Because I like to live my life on the edge. And <laughs> if you don't live life with the thrill, you're not living life. <laughs> Well, England did manage to get that religion. It's uh, going to be divine inspiration with uh, sacred places. And I do see him getting a few horses out. Uh, not a lot of them. And still did not improve a, a lot of his land. We do have a horse from Hungary coming against uh, Newcastle upon Tyne there. Uh, even though, honestly, I do think Hungary is kind of late to the party here. Uh, just looking at the city count, we do have two, four, six, eight cities on England, and then Hungary is on four with a possible five. That is a problem, a big problem. In the Hungary can't do anything though. Hungary is yeah surrounded by Cree as well. If they go to war with England, being like, yeah, I'm gonna take over England, then the Cree's gonna come in, and I don't even know if they know. That. I, I imagine they know. England and Korea are both on my borders. I can't do anything to either of them because I'm going to get murdered. Yeah, they're, they're basically bullying Hungary to stay as far north as possible right now. Positioning here. Uh, Mamaleto is on 76 production, by the way. He's the most productive oh, position baby. in the game. Uh, we do have him on 27 science with 45 culture. And again, he doesn't even have one single campus nothing that's just his penbrush and voice with the uh, pingala that's it also like persia though persia has good stats for being on four cities and has 74 production on four cities like that's insane so they're almost keeping up with england with half of the amount of cities that they have the only difference is the culture wait are you talking about hungary or somewhere persia, else? persia persia oh, persia sorry persia. did i say yeah, hungary persia. i meant persia Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Persia, uh, Persia's internal trade routes are amazing. That's why he's uh, so good right now in uh, production. That's right. Extra right magnets, that. extra, um, uh, extra gold, extra production, uh, extra food coming up from those traders. It's very good. Yeah, that's uh, right. But... Uh, one of Magnus's promotion in the mod has been changed to instead of giving plus two food, they give plus two food and plus two production. So they're really, really good internal traders, especially if the save has an internal trade route bonus. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, a, a cat is in the game, by the way. And I just noticed the immortal takes down the walls in like two shots two mini shots oh my goodness oh spain i'm so sorry we're just we're gonna salute you now but i think i think you're done i think you're out eventually you can put up a fight take as long as you can to try to make persia as irrelevant as possible but i think eventually you're you will go down spain oh uh, well you know players have been up against the wall like this before and managed to 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 claw back from the brink i think spain will definitely lose madrid and cordoba but they might be able to defend in valencia and seville at least somewhat i will kiss uh, his toes if he doesn't die out. maybe get right now a cockroach city out because i mean he poked in norway norway took down his galley now norway got a lot of viking longships he's taking down lahore look at look at how many Viking longships, Norway did manage to get one, two, three, yeah, four, wow. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in production. He's one turning these from his, his capital. Uh, no, yeah, from only two cities. Ooh, yes. You know, that's an interesting point here. Norway has so many galleys, and it might not be Spain he uses them on, or, or, or longships rather. This coastal empire that Persia is invading might end up being a bit of a poison chalice if Norway turns those longships upon Persia. Oh, yeah. Good, no, we'll go good, good call. Maybe, maybe we're gonna see them split Spain and then ha live happily ever after. Maybe we're gonna see them uh, fight for e every inch of these cities. It's, we're, we're, we're never gonna know until uh, MCS Crack makes a decision. the The thing is, Spain is in mortal danger at this point. Yes. It, it, it doesn't look like he's uh, really or keeping up with the uh, immortal the danger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a cat got stop. taken back. 
uh, Chad got taken back by Happy Dragon, so now those immortals cannot take the walls easy. <laughs> Mortal danger. Come on, there's no <laughs> way you didn't think of that. <laughs> Jeez. Um, oh, so a cad got taken back, which means these immortals do a little bit less damage. <laughs> I say a little bit; they do no damage to these walls. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we we we're, we're seeing a fighting a fighting chance from Spain. I'm I'm actually incredibly happy for that. And they got walls in the south city, but that's not going to get taken right away. Okay, we have a little a bit of a battle going on now. This is gonna this is turning out very interesting. That that's the thing about these extremely good players. They live on the edge. Like he just settled Barcelona and started building a monument. And he's on the brink of destruction. He knows the limits of his empire. He is going to allow Persia to try to take his civilization to the brink and try to play as greedily as possible in the defense. And we saw cities yesterday get to like 10 HP and then a critical unit was killed and walls were chopped out. And then that city became a fortress. It's crazy just how down to the wire these players can defend their cities. Yeah, I, I totally agree with, agree with that. I, I also want to point out putting that horse inside of the city instead of uh, uh, an archer mm -hmm. or something did also increase the city's strength uh, considerably. Oh. It's a 50 strength right now if you try to attack it with a immortal. So it allows it to take a lot more hits than normally. Another war. Man, everybody's fighting over here. Unbelievable. What's happening? Why did they declare war again? I don't know. I, I can't find I don't know. the reason. Yeah, uh, I can't it was find the reason. Egypt and Russia declared war on Cree and England. So I, I'll have a little bit of a scout around and see if I can see a reason for that. Maybe they're just declaring war. Oh, oh, I see well, a Cree scout next to Egypt. Well, there are no roads oh, though, oh. so I don't think I don't think that it was a trade route kill or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't see sphinxes coming out from uh, Swen. Yeah, one, Swen. one. Yeah, but not in the capital. Why? Why not in the capital? You know, the best place. I don't know. You need, really needs to get uh, them next to Etemenanki. Uh, also, trade routes going towards uh, Russia. Russia is getting more cities. He did put one on the coast. He's getting a harbor there. Uh, definitely, it's gonna be uh, very nice to have um, those trade routes with uh, his uh, buddy buddy with Egypt. Uh, I also noticed Kree did manage to get two for six cities and he's mm. uh, building some more, uh, getting his commercials out in the markets and putting down a few campuses. Uh, I do Kree, like... Kree play for the next era for Kree? Yeah. I, I do like how also Pericles did his sim up. He's on 34 science, 48 culture. Uh, he's... Uh, he stayed on six he's staying on six series right now but he can still go for some more he already got the ones that are the best placements at the moment so it looks like that he's gonna have to make some more preparations to get another two cities to the northeast and he's uh he's uh, he wants to sim up a little bit before that in terms of expansion phases michael yeah. You can see across this game, there is like an incredible diversity in how players are playing their expansion games. Like the Netherlands are staying on three cities. The the Pericles is on six. Russia is only now on four and slowly climbing up to seven. Why would a player choose to sim up and not keep expanding? I think it's two things. First of all, their own personal feeling about where they are in the game and uh, what their uh, skill is versus the other players and versus what they can think they can do with their um, civilization. And the second one is um, uh, they always compare themselves with the other players and they say, oh, I need to catch up. And that most of the time is actually um, uh, I would say um, a trap I would say because you end up instead of you in doing your own game and you applying your knowledge of uh, your civilization and uh, trying to adapt to the land properly you're always gonna try to 
catch up to somebody that has different land, has different bonuses, might shine right now, but he's not going to shine in 10 turns. There are so many things that could interact. So focusing on your own adaptability should be the priority. They're not always comparing with the other players. And we've seen that yesterday. Some players did choose to stay low in stats, but go a lot of cities, and then they just exploded. It was a moment in just a span of five turns, they tripled their uh, stats. Yeah, definitely. Uh, players are definitely able to uh, take a very, very small empire. And it's almost like one turn passes and it's like a light switch turned on. And then suddenly they've got a war machine. <clears throat> yeah. I, I do have to say, I'm, um, I really like how Happy Dragon put out his uh, defense here. And I have to say also, uh, we pointed this out yesterday about players sometimes having this... Um, um, Beha uh, not behavior, how to say, um, uh, tendency, I, I should say, of um, splitting their units instead of going for one single target, and that cost them the war. So, uh, at this point, because he split the units between Cordoba and Madrid, he couldn't get either Madrid or Cordoba. Well, Madrid's walls are about to crumble, so the, the attack is still pressing on, there's still reinforcements coming in, uh, Spain's got a lot of units, though. I'm really impressed with Spain's defense. I just don't know if Spain can kill these immortals, even with these horsemen. That is a good oh, question. Oh, we got swordsmen, though. Here we go. Okay. That oh. is a good question. Let's I don't see. think swordsmen can swim because there are six Viking <laughs> longships <laughs> battering down the gates of Valencia as well. Oh, my God. Dude, Spain, I'm so sorry, bro. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, is is this a case of uh, Norway being a piranha smelling blood in the water and wanting to get a bite of Spain? At least he did manage to survive another ten turns, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it, like you were saying earlier, Michael. I think it's time for a cockroach city. In fact, he could probably run a co cockroach city all the way over to his friend in the Netherlands, and both of them could live in the Valley of Peace here. <laughs> yeah. Um. In the great writer scene, it looks like uh, Russia did manage to get 11.5 great writer points at 10. We got Greece, Pericles on 8 great writer points at 10, England on 2.3, and that's about it because Egypt just probably put the card on a little bit. So, Russia 100% ahead of everybody else when it comes to great writer points at 10. I mean, not only are they ahead in great writer points per turn, but they're coming up on that 100 culture per turn mark, currently sitting on a healthy, juicy 94 culture per turn compared to their 14 science per turn. Yeah, they good production. Almost have monarchy food. too. That's crazy. That's the power of, of doing a, a sort of extremely focused build where you, you beeline just one of the two tech trees, the culture or the science tree. Uh, players tend to do the culture side of the tree, don't they, Michael? Yes. Uh, to get to those, um, it's all connected, right? You get to the better civics. With the better civics, you get better uh, uh, production capabilities um, that uh, allow you to um, defend or um, expand faster. Oh, and I do see uh, we got Happy Dragon over here managing to take back that uh, tile next to his uh, city of Madrid. Only two units can uh, smash it down with uh, melee strength. And I don't think uh, MCS Crack can afford to keep one of them. Let's see. Oh, 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 okay. There we go. Not in the city, but took down uh, one of the horses. Easy peasy. Uh, I like that play, though, because now Madrid can't really produce more units because it's got nowhere else to put it. It's Anytime it puts out a unit, it's just going to die immediately. Yeah, well, let's see. It also went down to uh, what to forty strength. The immortal though does take considerable damage if it attacks into the city center. We need to see how the happy dragon is gonna get out of this. It's ranged. What's range? Oh, you mean uh, they, yeah, they, they can keep on attacking range, sure. And the second they attack, they might be counter attacks though. So, I, oh, actually looking at how much damage he's doing. No, he's not. Wait. They got a military alliance? Didn't yeah. They... Wait. Oh. oh. Wait, what? I think we might have to... Uh -oh. I don't know what we do here. Um, I mean, the only thing we can do is talk to Menja. <laughs> Maybe the player forgot that the rule was in place? Uh, I mean, sure. Is, it, is, is this Spain's out? Is this Spain's way of getting out? 
Mill alliances I, I are allowed? Know. Um. Uh, that's not what the Discord said. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. If they voted for it, do they get it allowed or not? And I also need to double check the second vote because, you know, they did a second vote. That's true. They did do a second vote. I'm having a look here, see if I can find it. Oh, and actually... No, still not allowed. Five to seven. Yeah, I think they voted against it. Uh, this might have just been a mistake from these players. I don't know. It might be uh, tournament rules overrides the votes. So that's what I want to find out. I want to double check. Yeah, definitely. I think we should get a double check on the rules here. Cause... So even in the second vote, they did go for um, yeah. not allowing military alliance. That's what you said. Uh, Correct. I think I think okay. you should check that yourself so you can see with your own eyes because I'm not sure if I'm reading this correctly, but it does look like seven people voted for not allowed. Okay, so Menjack is saying that it should be on for the two v two v twos. So the vote. Okay, so so no rule has been broken here. All right, good that we got clarification on the tournament rules there. <clears throat> Well, okay, that actually is good and sad at the same time because we were looking forward to see how these players will adapt without the military alliance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of sad we to see that to it see, is okay, left. Let's see. Uh, at the same time, I do have to uh, point out, of course, we do have Burja um, uh, over here getting to that military alliance uh, much faster than uh, Spain could, which, of course, gives him that extra plus five. And with the extra plus five, it is going to be... Uh, much easier for him to go through the units of um, Spain. Absolutely. And I think that just reinforces what we were talking about earlier. Why players favor the culture tree so much? Because the culture tree contains so many combat bonuses that you can use at any point in the game. Okay, so I got I got confirmation indeed. The military alliance is always allowed. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Uh, Valencia, Norway. Look at that. Already, already... A city, uh, an extra city. Valletta's and next. On the hunt. Yeah, this is. Oh my and then God. once Valletta's down, they can go through the canal through Valletta, and they go attack the south cities. Oh no! Uh, I can already see those galleys from uh, Netherlands moving left, right, left, right. They're trying to defend those uh, trade routes. He cannot stop the trade routes from flowing towards uh, Madrid. You, there's no button that you can declare war on your on your uh, oppo uh, on your uh, ally there. Wait, what happened with that one? Madrid was captured, so the trade route was cancelled. So oh, at least one okay. of his trade routes was saved. Good eyes. Like your peepers, bud. I have great peepers. Now, like we were talking about, is this conquest of Spain a poison challenge chalice for, for Persia here? Is he going to find himself uh, uh, staring down the barrel of a musket full of longships? Uh, I think so. Uh, at least in the cities in the north. I don't think Norway wants to take uh, south of Seville. Even Seville, I wouldn't take Seville. So like Barcelona, sure. Valletta, sure. Maybe even take Zanzibar, uh, even though you can't because they're two cities. Uh, yeah. He can he can settle all of this coast anyway, and it's going to be good. He has two more good cities south of Stavanger, west of Valletta. Um, and then another coast on the peninsula east of Valencia. That That's, that's perfect. That's that's okay that's more than you need for uh for norway definitely um so in spain's position here is he thinking that he can hold this or is it time for cockroach like what's going on is he just caught between a rock and a hard place spain yeah spain like uh, what's his yeah. out here is he is he in cockroach mode or is he trying Only to defend cockroach. I think this is his only way out getting a cockroach city i'm actually surprised we don't see one um uh, built a long time ago maybe he still thinks he's going to survive with a few more cities and then he's going to do something about it but honestly being attacked from the north and the south by two nations on sea and on land that is like the worst thing that you can have um, just not enough science not enough production to defend on both yeah definitely. and you see you see norway is just getting so many of these boats out yeah, he's not taking any prisoners with this mass of Viking longships. Uh, the other thing to consider here is these longships can go over the ocean, so they could eventually be pointed at the Netherlands across the sea, if he does indeed know Absolutely. that they're out there. Yeah, that's another question that I guess we have to answer long term. What is Netherlands' answer going to be to this? Because at the moment, it looks like he's getting some science up. He's getting good campuses. He's getting some good culture. He got 
wonders. He got pyramids, he got a great lighthouse, so his boats are moving faster, but he doesn't have the cities. Like the, just sheer production numbers, he is on 43 production right now versus Norway, which is on 72. Mm, yeah, that's that's a tough fight. That's an uphill battle for for Netherlands. Yeah, and this is before Norway gets all of those cities that we were talking about. Like he's gonna get Valletta, Barcelona, maybe Zanzibar, and so on. It's it's a bit of a problem here. Look at Norway go getting his uh, settlers out of his cities. Seventy six uh, faith a turn twenty uh, twenty gold. He's this definitely is gonna in a... be dangerous. Well, you go ahead, Michael. I said, I said, uh, this is going to get dangerous. That, that's it. Uh, sorry, my final comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I, I just, I'm just trying to be careful so I don't talk over you. Uh, I, it's impolite yeah, yeah. to talk over people. Um, so we've put a lot of focus on the eastern side of this continent. Uh, w w should, we, should we take a look over back at like the Russian, Cree, Greek, and, and maybe the center of the continent again? Yeah. Because we, we do have a new era coming up. So it would be interesting to see, are people going to hit eras uh, or, or golden ages? What are going to be the consequences of that? Are people continuing to settle? Do we see people jostling for war? What's your take, Michael? <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, I see Russia is, is going culture victory. Getting, you know, yesterday when I, I, I was saying, you were asking me, okay, what are the signs, the early signs for a culture victory? Well, look at Apadana being built in St. Petersburg. We got Mahabodhi Temple. He's going to finish his religion. We got uh, a lot of culture generation from him. Oracle also got snatched up by him. 15 great writer points a turn is just on his way to getting, needing to get a few more cities and um, starting up those, um, how to say, yeah. At, to try to get more science so he gets to um, uh, broadcast centers. That's it. He's, he's on that path. Maybe even rock bands. He's close enough to his ally to play rock bands in, uh, in Egypt. That's um, interesting. I don't think I've ever seen rock bands be used on your own teammate before. Because I don't think I've ever seen someone make an attempt for a culture victory before in a, in a teamer. Yeah. I mean, in teamers, it's the only way because otherwise uh, you're... The rock bands are going to get stepped on, so they're going <laughs> to get uh, killed. I, I think I would start renaming all my rock bands to Don't Step On Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, something like that. Um, Greece is going to try to defend this. Uh, Pericles with 82 culture, he's uh, not that far away from uh, Golden. Mamaleto also is trying to defend this with uh, Eleanor. Both of them do have uh, strong uh, bonuses from their uh, theater squares. And I... I do have to mention, I really like Mamaleto's um, uh, start over here with 120. Oh, Athena's going to get built by uh, England instead. I'm sorry to interrupt. but oh, just... they're, Yeah, they're, uh, actually they're fighting over it. Oh. It's very close, very close. Is this a snatch? Is he trying to snatch this from Russia so they don't get it because he spots the culture victory? No, it's going to be Golden's. Golden has higher slot in the lobby. Then Mamaleto, so it's gonna go to a slot order. It's gonna be on Russia. That, that is, is gonna be, yeah, so sad for Mamaleto here. Maybe, oh man, and he was like a turn away from chopping that. Look, look at that builder position in Newcastle upon Tyne. Could have just chopped it. Oh, feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. I still think that it shouldn't be based on slot order. I think it should be. It should be like a race. Once like you two are you, like, it should be a game of chicken. Whoever stops building it first loses. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going endlessly until somebody stops building it. Like 20 turns later, I'm not going to stop. You got to stop. Yeah, I think that would be like, because now you got to like, you got to think, okay, do I fight for this wonder or what do I do? That's so funny. Hey, <laughs> Sim 7, for the next one, like maybe you can pitch it to <laughs> you, you gotta work on all of the details man you, you know you gotta paint everything you gotta get the mosaics going you, you gotta go outside and do the the proper ceilings and everything uh dude i'm telling you wonder chicken it's the new game coming to to, to schoolyards around town okay <clears throat> Uh, it looks like he switched all that production from the Apadana into a mausoleum which is a great mausoleum in the city of okay. london three uh coastal resources well, you know, yeah. that's a, you know, that's a decent mausoleum. Uh, 
I also see that uh, he's starting to spread his uh, religion. He did get a holy site in the city of Manchester and actually killed one of those amazing Torres stars to do it. But, oh well, I guess the sacrifices must be made here. Um, and started getting a bit of more of these uh, theater squares with the amphitheaters in them. Uh, England, he was on two great writer points of 10 a few turns ago. Now he's on 6.9. He's starting to recruit these great writers. And with those, he's also going to get those uh, nice and juicy stats I was uh, talking about earlier. Uh, uh, what are the what are the stats? Is that a bonus from Eleanor? She gets extra uh, resources, is it? He she gets um one one second, let me put it up on the screen. So great works receive additional yields depending on the district built in the city. So it's like two uh, uh, science for a campus, two culture for a theater square, two gold for a harbor, and so on and so forth. You basically get everything, including a neighborhood. You, you get plus two food if you have a neighborhood. Whoa, um, that's that seems like an incredibly powerful bonus. And does does that apply to all of her great works in a city? Oh, 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 Hungary, Hungary, oh. Kumasi, look at Kumasi. It's happening, boys. It's happening. Oh. Where are they going to go? Are they going to go to England? Are they going to go to Persia? He doesn't even need Persia. to upgrade these. I don't know. Is it Persia or is it yeah, like at least like Norway can come down with Berserkers on Persia. So I think Persia is a better target. And also Persia is busy with, like, in with uh, Spain, right? So if you come, yeah. if, you, if they both collapse on Persia right now, Persia has to make a decision to retreat and save their own land or keep pressing and say, screw my own land. Now I'm just going to take over Spain. I think oh, your analysis is spot a, on. This is going to be a man at arms push from uh, Hungary. Does anybody have enough envoys? I, do, I cannot answer that question. If they have enough envoys to just soothe back Kumasi. Yeah, I mean. Would they need a levy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I this is the thing about Hungary. They are the chaos spawn. Hungary will just turn a city state into a war and I I'm really excited to see which direction these units start moving in. This is the danger you have if you leave any city state alive in this game. This is the danger you're going to Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, Somebody did it. <laughs> Somebody did it. Who did it? Who was it? The bishop, Kurt, the bishop took it away. The okay. Netherlands, of all people? Netherlands. Oh, Why I Netherlands, think though? No way, man. That's Did... a mis I think that's a mistake. Oh, why, why would the Netherlands do that? Did they want the trade route think... bonus? Possibly I think they wanted the era score. Unknowingly. I think they wanted the era score. Did we they, just I... see an accidental Hungary block? <laughs> Oh man, if only he would have left this open, he would have actually helped out his buddy there. I think you're right. I think, I don't think Hungary can attack England. England is too big and too strong for Hungary right now. I think there is a window though, like uh, Moisos is saying for Persia to get obliterated here by a huge army. And it's so funny to me that, that the Netherlands has saved the very person killing his teammate. <laughs> yes, this is unbelievable. <laughs> he probably doesn't have vision over what's going on here, so he didn't know how many units Kumasi had. He didn't know that he probably uh, <laughs> levied those units and so on. But oh man, that was yeah, I, that I was think it was quite an innocent. An innocent oh, Kumasi's a good city state to be a Suze of. Oh, I'm not a Suze of Kumasi. Let me just put some points into here. Ha! Now you don't have the bonus. Ha ha ha. This is the uh, tremendous like like beauty of a game like Civ is that you can influence other people around the map without even really knowing it just by building wonders or influencing city states or even just getting great people. You can completely obliterate somebody's strategy. Yes, so all of that money got deleted. The money spent on Kumasi. Kumasi is a very rich city state right now. They don't even need to put the, the sacrifice on his units, you know, it was fine. Second of all, I do have to point out, I think Netherlands really wants his golden age. He's one point off, he's 48 out of 49. And maybe he just did it to piece a city state, so he gets those extra two points. I think you might be right. I think that's the that's the move that they were going for. Uh, and actually, speaking of the Netherlands, they're finally oh, expanding. Oh, no, wait, what? I see something extremely weird here in the Bishop's uh, series. Uh, in Rotterdam, he's putting down a commercial. He wants the points for it. That's a plus five commercial. But it's such a rare sight to see harbor and commercial in the same city. Because you don't get double trade routes, you only get one trade route. You get double free inquiry though? 
You do. You do. You think he's gonna go with three, three inquiry? I mean, could be. I guess he really wants uh, caravels, but he's not gonna have uh, gold for them. Mm. He's not gonna hit mercenaries if he goes uh, out of pen, brush, and voice. Yeah, and hard hard building caravels just doesn't really work. But he, he does look like he's going for caravels with the buttress technology. He's focusing on that top side of the tech yeah. tree where all the naval technologies are. I agree. It's weird. It's a weird play. Maybe he can make it work. I think he has to because he knows Norway is like on their, on their way. So how do you fight against Norway? Is like, oh, we just, I guess, get the boats that are better than the Viking longship with caravels and ironclads or whatever the new the i don't know how to pronounce the netherlands unique boat but it replaces the frigate right yeah just yeah, even provincian or whatever that's the one yeah i think they want to go there i also noticed uh, egypt did manage to get yerevan another positioning on uh, hungary he closed off this way of uh, the expansions for hungary and now he has safe settles towards uh, solicams towards uh, russia he basically is um, sedimenting that uh, border between them yeah i think i think I, I he he's already got settlers on the way over there so i think this is going to be a great location like a very very safe place to plant down cities and go full sim city while you um you close off options for hungry i think your analysis is spot on there michael <clears throat> thank you i'm actually really worried about hungary here he stayed on five cities He's getting some of these horsemen out. Yes, they could turn into what black armies, I believe they're called. Yeah, the, black the armies, and then the other horsemen. unit, the Huzyar. Uh, yeah, the Hussars, I guess. I don't know how. To, Huzyar. Yeah, Hussar. Yeah, Hussar. Um, There's a Z in there. You got to pronounce the Z. It's Huzyar. <laughs> Yeah, but hung, yeah. the way the hungry, I don't think you actually. It's not like an American Z. Like it's, I still think it's Hussar. Is it not? I don't know. I, I say it with the American Z, okay? <laughs> okay, Irishman. <laughs> um, oh, don't, let's not get into the aluminium, aluminium. <laughs> I, you know what? I'll, I'll go a step <laughs> longer. It's aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> the worst of both worlds. <laughs> so, who that is the biggest threat play. to Hungary here? I think it's Eleanor at this point. I, I looking at Kree's development, it doesn't look like Kree's interested in any kind of war. He's not putting down encampments. He's not getting his uh, units out. But Eleanor is starting to get a few units out. He's he discovered stirrups. He discovered um, uh, mercenaries. So he can hard build. Can, he can upgrade uh, all of his units if he wants to. At the moment, he's more focused on uh, upgrading his land with the feudalism cards and trying as much as possible to convert his cities to his uh, religion. Also, I'm pretty sure everybody is racing towards the Golden Age here. We do have um, Greece managing to get one, uh, Persia managing to get one. Chuck is seven points away. That is massive, by the way. Seven points away from a Golden Age. At least he's gonna get his. Uh, okay, now I see. He didn't get the Mariano chair attached, so that's four points from it, and he just needs three more. How many um, turns into the era? Sorry, one, one turn. Thing. Yeah, okay. One turn. So this is this is the last moment they can actually use. Uh, uh, Spain's uh, Spain in a dark age too. Uh, everything's just going wrong with Spain. I mean, okay, Chuck just got it. By the way, Chuck just got fifty-eight out of fifty-seven points. So nice, never... nice. You, you, you say everything's going wrong with Spain, but um, Madrid is red again. Uh, everything is not ideal for Spain. They're, they're, okay, things, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Things are going right given given the circumstances, but they lost Valencia. They lost Valletta. I don't think they're going to get those back. They're in a dark age. They're not in the ideal scenario they want to be in. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'm just, I'm just poking a little bit of fun at you. I um, know. They, they are doing a fantastic job defending here. Although I think the writing's on the wall. Unless the, unless the Netherlands can literally pull caravels out of a, out of a magic hat here. <clears throat> yeah, people are saying we need to pronounce Hussar without the Z. It's like yeah, a extra Z over there. You see, it it's like potatoes chat. I've just been told. It, it, that yeah. I don't care, and I'm gonna say it with a Z. <laughs> it's like in French, you know, you you got a lot of letters written, but you don't speak them aloud. You know, it's like 
he who Never must not pronounce be. the last letter in French ever. <laughs> okay. It's true. I'm not even kidding. Uh, yeah, because like vu is like it's v o u s, and but it's vu. Yeah. You're yeah, right. New, new, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. J voodoo. or no J was like an E, but yeah. I wonder if you could just speak English, and if you drop like the last letter of every word, do you sound French? I wonder. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that because I would probably be incredibly offensive. But it's just a curiosity. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> what not, not, not at all. <laughs> How do you even say the word the? It's like. Th 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. Who did manage to get a golden age? Who didn't manage to get a golden age? Yeah, it looks like uh, Spain, Dark Age, Cree, Golden. We got Mamelito Golden, the Bishop Golden. He did get it. 52 out of 49. Curtis Love. Oh my God, one point away from getting a golden. That's uh, Hungary, one point away from getting a golden. God, one point. Because, like, here's the thing that's, a, uh, that's the thing about this game. One point can make or break a game. He's doing, gonna drop probably like 20 culture a turn or something like that, 15, 20 culture a turn. Uh, at least he does have good science. He does, he did have good um, culture till now, but his expansion possibilities are just not there anymore. He, he's gonna be forced to put some non freshwater cities if he wants to connect everything and keep on expanding, which at the moment I don't think it's gonna be good for him. And he knows that, like, he's not doing any kind of. Uh, <sighs> settler here I, I like looking at hungary i'm thinking okay what can go through his <clears throat> mind right now is he gonna try to focus on defending on everybody and just stay alive because this might be a possibility right just like rome did yesterday he stayed on five cities and just you know waited until somebody just crushed him but it was late in the game anyway mm, what if i'm I hungry so i'm thinking i'm building money and i'm surviving he, he, his job is to survive i think norway has a better position to be more of the number if you think of like teamers i always like to think of like who's the win condition so i think norway is more of the win condition or more of the way of like they're their number one so hungry needs to recognize that they need to say this is my job to support my teammate give him what he needs and support him in any way so if, if norway wants to go to war with persia like okay i will send a little bit of units towards persia or like if you want to go to war with uh egypt okay i'll send a little bit of uh, units towards egypt but they're playing the support role right now and norway is kind of taking the the lead yeah that is true and norway is getting a lot of cities out i see him already with uh, two four six cities that's not even counting the ones that he uh, uh, conquered valencia and lahore that would be and Valletta, by the way, that's another three. He will get uh, Barcelona, or will he actually? Barcelona getting walls in two turns. Looks like. Uh, also, we got. Oh, the Berserkers are here, though. Oh yeah. yeah. But we got crossbows. Okay, crossbows do take down Berserkers quite fast. Okay. We'll see. It's it's definitely a messy situation, especially with uh, now uh, Dark Age for Happy Dragon. All of those cities to have uh, lower loyalty pressure. Oh man, that's just nasty. Yeah, it's definitely a nasty position to be in. Um, oh, we got a World Congress. Yep. Let's go. I go A or you go. A? Uh, I'll do B. Do be okay. Let's go great engineers, let's go preserves, and that's it. Yes, UAIB, correct? Yes, perfect. Okay, just checking. Uh, preserves and great engineers done. More theater squares coming out from uh, England. He did go for a second pen Russian voice. Oh, look at that 60 science and 112 culture, keeping up with uh, golden there. Well, I mean, I say keeping up, but then I see an extra seven over there. Yeah, um, <laughs> they, they almost look the same, but uh, Golden's one looks a lot more like a seven. Um, yeah. Is England just trying to get their culture up to hit like the key cultural text, or are they already spotting the Russian cultural victory and are preparing to defend against it? Probably. probably 172. Holy smokes. They really yeah, ramped that up. 56. Turn 56, 170. And he's getting more faith generation. He's getting a, a bit of more of an economy. And I do say that he's right now on uh, 41 gold a turn with just one single commercial. Uh, not even a commercial, a 
uh, harbor, two harbors. Okay, never mind. He does have two harbors. Okay, that's that's good. And Maybe he did Egypt, man. It's good. It's a very. Uh, what kind of a? I imagine they're not even on a military alliance. <laughs> they might be on an economic alliance here. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't see the military alliance uh, activated on uh, Egypt's horses. So I would assume they do have a different alliance going on. I don't know which one, though. So Android right check, huh? There's no way to check. Yeah. Uh, w one question I'd like to talk to you two about. Uh, it, it looks like the World Congress ha has gone through and um, the votes are in. And it looks like double great points, uh, great people points towards great artists and faster campus production. Uh, who does this help? Who does it hurt? Or is this just like standard play that you would expect? Campus production. hundred percent. I think at this point we, we're going to see exactly what happened yesterday. Everybody wants to get their science up. So they're just going to keep on spamming. Uh, the double camp... points towards great artists is... I'm surprised. I'm... I would have, if you, I don't know what the votes were, but I'm surprised that that wasn't contested, knowing that Russia's in this game and Russia got Oracle and that they're producing great people at a really great rate. That was weird to say in a sentence, but I'm, like I said, like if I'm playing against Russia at this point, like you have to, you have to vote against that. You have to vote against writers, artists, anything to really slow them down. Well, you know, don't forget that Pericles is in this game and the Greek player might be feeling just as confident as the Russian player to compete for those great artists. So I, I think it was their team that also voted for great artists. So I, I think it is a matter of these players just feeling like they can compete and they don't have to be afraid okay. of each other. Yeah, when when uh, they were highlighting the great people, like Greece did have more artist points than Russia. So you, yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I've been known to be wrong once or twice a year. And, you know, this is the no. first time. I, I think your logic again. I think your logic is incredibly sound. I just think these players are just like they're competitive. They 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 like they're like I don't think I'm confident. not gonna roll they're over confident. to Russia. I'm gonna fight him for these great artists. I'm gonna try to take them away from him. Screw that. I like it. Okay. I like the confidence in these in these players because I would not have the same confidence. Well, I mean that's the confidence that's built up from thousands and thousands of hours of playing. <laughs> I do think uh, going for the theater scores actually in this case um, it would have been better than going for the science really for production uh, yes. yeah because but I think... everybody like uh, Russia already built his theater squares he already got his amphitheaters like everybody else would have uh, benefited from that so it would have given a chance to Mamaleto, to uh, Kakis, uh, to build faster um, culture defense against Russia, like Russia's um, tourism. Interesting. Interesting that that's how, how you saw that. Uh, one, one question I do have. It, the Cree has so much land to the south. And will they eventually settle that or do they just not need to? That's a good question if they will settle that. I don't know. Uh, I, think... I think they will eventually. It's just like you block off to... other players' access to it, and then you have the rest of the game to do whenever you want to, like whenever you're comfortable to expand. Yeah, is it a case of that, like, you know, you just don't have the amenities to expand like that? Huh? I don't think a lot of the players think uh, only of amenities when they need to expand. It's more about the, the stats and you can help out amenities with just putting down maybe an entertainment complex here and there. Not from all of the cities, but between like five or six cities, you can still get one. Um, it, it helps so much in the late game. So if you think a long term, three extra cities with uh, less amenities for a while, but then one of them builds an entertainment complex to make everybody else happy around them it, it just feels like it's a good uh, compromise yeah you definitely. still get the campuses you get more commercials you get even stats from your citizens like everybody everything uh, would do well for sure I've uh, done, i just heard a couple of players talking about how important and many desire to to limiting your empire's expansion so i was just wondering what your thoughts were on that yeah, it, it is important. I don't think it it is that important if you're not going to go into minus six territory. You know, if you're going to go into minus six territory, yes, that is a problem. Um, that uh, brings me up to another question. Nobody did go for Colosseum. How come? 
Like we've seen everybody rush Colosseum yesterday. Nobody hmm. rushing Colosseum now. I haven't seen an entertainment complex now you mention it. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, I, I expect someone is going to realize in probably the next 10 to 20 turns that no one built it, quickly try to get it out and, and just snatch it up from the rest of the players. From what I can see, Greece has a very good position for uh, Colosseum. Also, Cree has a very good position for Colosseum. I don't know what they did here or why they didn't, I guess. Uh, also, I just noticed, by the way, Cree is on a triple continent split. White, red, and uh, green over here. Beautiful. Very nice, yeah. He, he did also manage to get the great uh, library in uh, one of his cities. I guess that was for the uh, points here. And this is another question that we... I, we should answer golden rpg with russia did not go for a second monumentality he went for a pen brush and voice this time that's why he has 184 culture yeah he's established Ooh. now he has his city he has like everything that he needs he doesn't need any like he can just produce his builders if he wanted to look he's just spamming out all of his culture things now it's like this is his push yeah. this is his era to really pull ahead from everybody else he also did manage to get pagodas in his city, so he's getting some extra influence points into his um, envoys, to his city states. For his city states, I guess. Ooh, pagodas is actually probably the perfect building to uh, fight, especially Hungary, to fight Hungary for suzerainty of those key uh, cultural city states. Yeah, for sure. Well, I guess uh, Spain is surviving living the dream over here or the nightman however you want to say it <laughs> well <laughs> nightmares happen when you're asleep so like no matter what he's living something <laughs> valencia got uh, flipped norway just lost it looks like uh, barcelona is alive he's getting a galley out of there uh, these viking long ships are getting destroyed here it's very low in hp uh, one of the um, nerfs that was done to norway was th they don't allow norwegian long ships to um, heal in uh, ocean water anymore in uh, deep water so Thank they can God. Only stay on the coast yeah I mean, thank goodness was, for uh, that I'm, yeah it was stupid you like you get viking longships attacking you when you couldn't attack back and they just healed in front of you and you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is like one tile at a range healing oh man <laughs> like even uh, look at the one in valletta that is sitting on that deep water tile between all of the all water tiles that you couldn't attack that and he would have just healed in your face then that would be so funny <laughs> I, I, I think we have different definitions of funny because I would probably want to <laughs> kill the Norway I'm player. I'm thinking doing about that. doing that. Yeah, I'm thinking about <laughs> doing that in like a, when I go to my games and just like laughing at the person like you can't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That's uh, that is actually a, f a fair question. Norway still has the coastal pillage ability on these ships, right? Uh, Norway, Norway, coastal. Yeah, yeah, he could. Uh, I think he already did though. Oh, no, I was just asking generally, like, that hasn't been changed by the mod. Oh, yeah, yeah. he can still uh, coastal pillage, yes. And so he could take, ideally, the mine, the quarry in uh, Seville. Yeah, that would, and, and uh, I think there's also another quarry as well in Madrid. He could pick up a little bit of faith and a little bit of gold there. I, I was just curious because, you know, a lot of saves have been changed, and I always felt like that Norway pillage ability was a little bit broken. So it's interesting to see that it hasn't been changed. Yeah. It's hard to execute. It is really good. It's just hard to execute. And you can defend. You just need to get a unit on the tile. And that's it. Even a scout or, you know, something really weak. It doesn't matter. I do see a massive forest file in Gordian. And it looks like the gods of Civ is, uh, uh, or are helping uh, MCS Crag, I should say. For five tiles, got, uh, with extra fertility. Well, Absolutely. We'll in fact, I just got a message there from uh, from Firaxis HQ. Carl is watching the game, and he just set those forest fires on fire to help out Spain. Um, <laughs> he pressed the button. He pressed the button, boys. Yeah, that's right. He he lit those forest fires himself in the game. Um, we we have, we've we've put a lot of focus on Persia here and the war, but like, how is Persia's position? Like, how are they doing? You know, uh, they've got an angry England to their left and a friendly Norway or is it uh, yeah a friendly or 
an angry Norway to their north. Is Persia, does he have to make a move here? What's going on? My take on this is if he doesn't manage to win the war fast, he is going to probably be irrelevant for the rest of the game. And it doesn't look like he's going to win this war fast. And this is the problem right now. Like we got 50 garrison strength cities on uh, Spain. Uh, Madrid is probably going to be lost again. He's, uh, it looks like these uh, Spanish galleys are just, you know, so relentless at attacking uh, uh, into that city's strength. And they're going to take it down. While he couldn't get Seville and uh, Barcelona. Uh, looking at his stats, he f he's half the stats of his um, ally, Kakis. Uh, Kakis is on 84 and 170. And then Mamaletos, next door neighbor, 94 and 117 uh norway getting uh, up uh, in the north with 93 and 41 i guess that's a free inquiry golden age yeah that's a free inquiry golden age and i guess of course uh, hungary over here is just gonna be ripped apart at some point in the game we're just waiting for that moment to happen so it's probably gonna be egypt with a, um, a possible attack from the north or england or Cree that will tear apart uh, at some point uh, Hungary. It's just a matter of time. The only one that I see having spies is Egypt into Hungary. That, that, that gives me an idea that it might happen here. Oh, finally, finally we got Sphinxes. Oh my God, I think he, he noticed all of that uh, nice and juicy culture that he could get. Finally, five Sphinxes being built in um, Egypt land. Yeah, that's a ton of culture and faith that he's picking up there. Um, so we've talked a little bit about uh, Hungary is going to get gobbled up by Cleopatra. Who do you think is going to gobble up Persia? I think Persia oh. is just going to sit here with uh, very low stats. Un unless we're talking about late, late game when everybody, you know, just steamroll him with tanks or something. Um, I'm pretty sure Mamaleto is going to focus on uh, going to that uh, tank um fascism strategy that we saw yesterday and at the same time i think the focus on the culture victory will also be a problem it might actually stop mamaleto from attacking anybody yeah that's true he might be forced to try to defend against that culture victory because russia is up to a very healthy 81 tourism per turn and has earned their very first tourist so i think the pressure is on now and, and that number is only going to start growing and growing Exactly. And I do see theater squares being put down from London. He, Eleanor does get good bonuses from uh, getting those books. It's just a matter of time until uh, we're going to see some better culture here coming up from his series. Is it going to be enough, though? Because, like I was saying, it's one about the tourism with Russia, but when he's going to use that faith to buy rock pants, totally different story. Those will give him so much Start. tourism so fast. It is it is a casino style play. I have to say this. I have to mention casino style play on uh, on Russia to get those rock bands in. You never know when they're gonna die. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's my least favorite thing about rock bands, man. You build a rock band. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know about you, but I think there's like some turn curse. All of the rock bands I build on the same turn, if one of them dies on their first use, all of them die on the same turn. <laughs> I heard about that. Yes, I heard the. Uh, that's how it is like it's like that to... <clears throat> so like it rolls on the spawn it rolls whether it's gonna die or not on the on the next that's what uh, it feels like. like right away yeah it feels I like it, it takes the turn seed and then it's like okay this this rock band is marked for death and it's like oh god damn it is, isn't that how apostles work too i think so sometimes apostles roll the same promotions if they're recruited on the same turn in the same city that's what i heard it was from Michael too, didn't you? Isn't you, aren't, weren't you the one that said that? I uh, heard that um, a few days ago uh, being um, uh, talked about. Uh, it wasn't talked about a few months ago about this, honestly. Um, and the people, the players were saying that indeed, if um, if you do, if the first one dies, you should stop for uh, at least a turn to play the other ones, so it doesn't, so they don't die. Yeah, I've I've definitely noticed that there there is like a, a there's like a weird thing that whatever the turn is, you've sometimes you have lucky turns and you have unlucky turns. Um, but if you if a, if a rock band does pop off, they can do incredible work. 
yeah. Uh, at the same time, I've heard other stories as well. Well, I guess with people just being, uh, well, player, I should say, just being a bit more cautious than usual with the rock pants, as in uh, you you might want to play it with a uh, full um, uh, movement, so you don't move and play at the same time. Uh, you want to play it on only uh, splendid campuses instead of like all of the campuses, and uh, you want to take into account the appeal of the time, like all of those. Uh, wow, really? No, yeah. I'm uh, gonna be. I'm now this is that much. This sounds like some gambler's fallacy stuff. This sounds like yeah, yeah. <laughs> this exactly. sounds That's like exactly some severe copium. Foil <laughs> <laughs> hat, man. Like, there's no way that's real. <laughs> No, man, I don't know. Especially with the rock pants, you never know. <laughs> like, unless uh, Carl maybe shows up here and uh, gives us some official numbers of how the rock pants work. <laughs> you know? ah! Where is Carl? We need to get Carl here. Carl! Uh, Carl! Show us what you brought for show and tell! <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of uh, 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 show and tell, show and tell me about the Netherlands. He's finally got two more cities uh, very late into the game. Is this like a particular strategy, like trying to get the stats up and then expand? Or is it like all about trying to get those caravels out to save their ally? They are one turn away from cartography and they have three, uh, four galleys set up here in Zanzibar and 400 gold in the bank. And another like seven in uh, his uh, lands, but those are caravels, right? They're not gonna be um, frigates. And uh, my immediate surprise was, why is he building Grandmaster Chapel here? Oh, does he oh. have the faith in? He has huh. fourteen faith a tail with five hundred faith in the back. I guess he could ideally he could buy a few units as in to defend the land war if there's gonna be a land war. It doesn't guess... look like it's gonna be, but you know. I think it's a desperation play. It's like the other two just don't benefit at all. Like, I know that you don't have faith, but maybe it's like, okay, later if I build one holy site, I can get a little bit of use out of this Grand Master's Chapel. And right now I'm in a point where my, my teammate is dying. I'm going to be the next target for either Russia or Greece, and I need to be able to protect myself. So I this at least will give, if it gives me that one unit that makes a difference, maybe that's what he wants. It's just like, yeah, it's a desperation. I need this. Otherwise, I'm just going to lose anyway. Definitely, I think, you're, I think your analysis is, is at least, if not on spot, it's on spot TV. By the way, you can go to twitch.tv <laughs> forward slash on spot TV. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, I, I, I think you might be right. I think it might be like, oh man, I don't have good options. I just need like one or two extra units with my meager faith gain. And you know, the other thing is, caravels can pillage coastal stuff. Like you could pillage harbors, you can pillage fish. You'll get a little bit of faith out of that. So maybe he's looking for uh, a little bit of a military faith economy. Uh, that could also be an option. Uh, I don't think you can do that unless you're Norway. Well, they can yeah, pillage Norway's... like uh, harbors and um, oh, fishing boats. Okay, sorry. I understand. Yeah, no worries. I, I I didn't make it clear enough. No problem. I was uh, thinking over here, what are the options for him to actually go against somebody? Because Jiraki with Norway is a hundred science. He's uh, going to have oh caravels at the same time. And he also has uh, a decent amount of gold uh, banked up with 300 gold with uh, th 26 per turn. Uh, he's now pre-building quadrims. Did he even get? Wait a second. Oh, no, no, okay. He didn't get his uh, caravels yet. It's, I think it's just a matter of time until he plugs in the double naval card, double harbor card, and he's going to get more gold. I like his sim in the capital, by the way. Not sure if you saw it, but he's like using that government plot exactly how we need it, how we need to use it to oh, give yeah. as many bonuses as possible. He just unlocked an achievement if you've never had it before. Surround your government plaza with all districts. Work <laughs> yeah, and you could definitely see his bias with those districts very heavily favoring science and culture trying to basically climb his way up through both tech trees as hard as possible well he's got no mountains yeah. for those for those campuses so i actually like the play because like okay since i have a lack of mountains i need some sort of bonus for my campuses oh let me surround it with the government plaza so that there's some adjacency but look, he made plus four out of nothing out of absolutely nothing he made plus four plus three campuses folks if you want to know how to be a better player given that you're a, a really bad map this is how you do it Just adapt your government plaza to what you don't have in your empire 
So he's not, he doesn't have any wonders for his culture. He doesn't have any mountains for his science, but he just made a, a like wonderful, wonderful planning in his empire. Yep, 100 science, 50 culture. I don't like his gold, though. I have to say, I would really love to see a few more gold points uh, showing up on his uh, side. I'm actually surprised he's uh, making so little gold, and I'm I'm thinking boats, maybe these traders. Oh, internals. That's why he's using internals. Because ah. yeah, he Norway does usually benefit from very strong harbors, like plus six, plus seven. Uh, this is a plus ten. Oh, he does have the double harbor card. Okay. Uh, another plus uh, eight over here so very strong income coming up from those uh, it's uh, unusual to see uh, such low uh, gold yields but anyway he does have 110 faith 115 production he should be fine um, the race is on for the culture Mamaleto Kakis Mamaleto 164 culture Kakis 171 culture gold per 10 coming up from the red team we do have Eleanor and Cree they both of them are making about 200 gold i think they just went over 400 in total per turn that's a lot of they gold are, they're going to be able to buy an absolutely gold. insane amount of civ6 bitcoin <laughs> oh <man>. yeah <laughs> Yeah, civ coin. Sorry. Buy the civ coin. <laughs> <laughs> Man, maybe that's one way we can get more prizes for our uh, uh, how to say for our boys, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's for right. our civ you coins. will win an NFT of your favorite civilization leader. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them ideas, okay? It's a dangerous oh, world man. that we live in. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so th this huge gold income, is this just like we can get away with making this much gold or is it like formulating a part of their strategy? What's up with this huge gold income? I think, first of all, they just spammed out a lot of these um, uh, trade routes and they got that city on the coast. So all of these trade routes are coastal. They have so much gold generated because of that. Uh, other players just don't have that um, uh, between them. That's the only, and well, I guess golden with uh, chuck do have and look at chess also checks um, gold per 10 he's 161 same thing uh looking at the long term this actually allows you to be very flexible in your uh, position you can uh, quickly upgrade units you can uh, buy a lot of pre-builds if you need to you can uh, sometimes buy uh, buildings if you really really need that one turn um off and it looks like it's uh, allowing them at the moment to be the most productive ones as well all right looks like we have a re-lobby re coming up here Exit to desktop quick. Every time I look at Russia's stats, I feel like every like three turns they just double on culture. It's crazy. They're at two hundred twenty six now. Like, excuse me, they're at like one seventeen like three turns ago. Yeah, it's uh, it's insane. I'm actually curious if anything happened in the live results here. Let me see. I need to click on a lot of buttons to refresh this page. Yeah, the tournament standings. Yeah. Oh, oh, zone of control with another big uh, point amassed on them. Uh, 1,405 points right now in total. D2 coming up in second place with uh, 1,299, 1,299. Cars dropped to third with 1,285, 1,285. So zone of control is keeping up that lead. Uh, for uh, the last uh, 30 hours or so a, a fair play to zone of control I, i've been impressed by the gameplay of all of their players that i've seen throughout this tournament uh, i'm gonna go run and get a, gra a glass of water so uh, uh i'll be right back to join yeah. the lobby oh right i need to give you the link 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 i'm also gonna go to the bathroom okay well i'm i'm gonna take it afterwards then what can i say sing a song yeah and you gotta entertain everybody yes sing a song <laughs> okay so uh, let me actually put it up on the screen over here so everybody can uh, see what we're what we were talking about there we go this 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 so uh in the, i already mentioned the three first clans in the overall standings uh parking x coming up on the fourth place with uh, 1237 points the germans with uh, 11 and 20 1120 points gilgaquit is actually coming up on the sixth with a thousand forty two and siv russia with a thousand and thirty these are actually the first uh two four six seven um clans 
and they are all over a thousand points right now. We do have uh, some uh, changes also in the 4v4 standings. Uh, we got a tie right now between zone of control cards and barking cards, um, all of them with uh, 300 points uh, in the uh, zero standings. I don't know what's that, uh, zero, 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 zero uh, over there in the 2v2 standings. Um, I guess there's going to be some updates at some point. We got uh, Gilga Quit in the FFA standings uh, coming up first with 635 points. D2 560, Barking Yanks 540, Zone of Control 525, the Germans 515, and Cars coming up with 470. Also, want to point out Task for Fish is maintaining his lead as the MVP uh, by Clans over here with uh, 340 points acquired only by himself. Only by himself. Uh, Ogothy, 335. Propagandi, 245. Jack the Ripper, 228. Romrom, 221. Distoria, 198. Uh, all player by scores. Let me see. Oh, this is actually going to take a while to update. And of course, we're still waiting for all of the uh, matches to um, uh, be selected over here. I'm still not sure what's with the 0000 clan. Uh, no more bags. Thank you very much, sir. Also, I, I'm sorry I wasn't uh, that active on my uh, chat. I'm trying as much as possible to uh, cover the, the bases. And at the same time, uh, if I do have some comments, I'm writing them down so I don't um, uh, you know, speak and uh, do weird stuff over here with uh, my co-casters. Hey, dude, dude, if you want to talk to your chat, if they bring up a good point, go for it. Do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Usually, you know how it is. I do want to... Um, 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 uh, be th thankful for their support and uh, say uh, on every little thing that happens over there, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but uh, it feels weird if you have your. Uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to speak out of place, you know? Like it's. Uh, yeah, so I, I thought you used push to talk. Uh, I used at some point and then I got used to just uh, <coughs> voice activation and I never want to go back to push to talk. Yeah, welcome, uh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using push to talk for a solid uh, 15, 18 years now. So I'm sometimes I'm talking to like people in the same room as me and I'll press the push to talk button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, right, uh, we've got our... <clears throat> sorry? Sorry, sorry. Uh, go, go. I was going to say, we've got our lobby back up now and we're just uh, getting ready. Uh, Michael, are you in the lobby? I'm joining right now. Gotcha. I'm, uh, I did want to say, by the way, it was kind of a major change up for me to from push to talk to the normal one. First of all, the, uh, my push to talk for some reason uh, had a weird sound on it. You always heard the s s s whenever I uh, uh, started up or um, unpressed the button. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah. I would get really annoyed yeah. by that. Yeah, exactly. It was a bit annoying. And then that actually made me take the decision to not have a push to talk. And then it allowed me to also use my hands when I'm explaining something. And oh yes. my God, it is so much. That's yes, that, that is, That's, oh my yes. God, yes. <laughs> that is true. Having, being able to use your hands when talking would help a lot, I think. Yes. Uh, I don't need to figure out uh, what to do with uh, other stuff. But anyway, that's just, you know, stuff about stuff. Um, stuff about stuff. Yes. I don't want to take stuff. a moment to also get some uh, something to drink. But first, I need to ask somebody about this. Uh, what's the 0, 0, 0, 0 clan in the 2v2s? Zero, zero, 0 clan? Ooh? Yeah, that's like a... Ancient Zero over here coming up with 300 points. Uh, I don't know what that clan is. It's the only clan showing up there. Uh, <laughs> I'm Six. not sure what to tell you. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. I'm, I need to figure that out. Maybe it's something like a buy clan or something. They, that's how they uh, decided to do the buys. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what oh, you're ready? looking at. Oh, sorry. Ready, yeah. ready. Ready. Um, thank you, thank you. In the spreadsheet, in the spreadsheet, in the 2v2 standings, there's like a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 clan there. Hmm. I, for, I don't have a Microsoft login, so I haven't been able to open the OneDrive link, which feels bad, man. Um, Wait, really? You can't open it? Oh, man. 
Yeah, it's a bummer. You know, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> oh, and I think I need to stream, right? Okay, there we go. Sorry. You just need to copy and paste the link because you can't click it since there's like an exclamation point. When you, if you click it, it only takes about half of the URL that they actually copy and paste the whole thing. Oh, I have to copy and paste it. Yeah. Let me see and try that actually. Because I've been clicking on it. Oh, ah, my game crashed. God damn it. Oh my. <laughs> No pasting it still has the same issue. All right. Oh, we got uh, two crashes. It's fine. Two crashes for Civ 6? I'll yeah, take that. You I'll wanna... take that. <laughs> Oh, weird. Magic doesn't see it. Wait. Refresh. Why do I crash that much? Crashing just happens sometimes in save, especially when you're using mods and I have a really complicated setup with three screens. Like I'm playing on hardware that the game wasn't designed for and stuff like that. And I'm playing it in a way that it probably wasn't designed to be played. So just a lot happens when you're crashing. Um, the game is pretty stable when I'm not like streaming and stuff. unbelievable what uh, we're getting with this technology everything is uh, getting easier and easier to use definitely and yet it's getting more complicated and difficult because like different things like it used to be that everything was turning into a smartphone it would all fit in your pocket but now you've got like a million gadgets people have got like smart doorbells all this crazy stuff that you have to try and get around you walk up to some houses now and they've got three doorbells because they just kept installing new ones. It's like, I don't know which one is which. <clears throat> really? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that. But... My lights. Oh, oh my God. I, you know, like it's going to be so funny when the lights will turn on and off in uh, Zeram, just played by the kid next door or something. And you don't have control over your own lights. Oh, I get you. Like your, your smart lights, they have like the, the dial or whatever and they're flipping it around. Yeah, exactly. And they're like doing strobes on you. Like... Yeah, you make a disco party. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There was, a, I think there was an episode in the, the Big Bang Theory at some point when they were uh, trying to bounce, uh, like control the lights and system, like the audio system from uh, all yeah, around the world. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then they were uh, allowing it to be China. open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was before mm. smart lights, though. So that was like the the joke of it, I guess, right? So yeah, if you look back at that episode, you're like, ah, like who cares? It's easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it happens. It happens. It was a big, big, big deal back then. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, wait, I did want to point out something, Potato. Do you know? Um... Moises over here is a master at the Raspberry Pis. Really? Yes. You know those yeah. little computers you that you you can get and just program them as as, as you want to program. Oh my god, it's amazing. I wouldn't say I'm a master, but I use one. Yes. You use one? Oh, what do you use it for? I use it to host a streaming service. So basically how we get everyone's perspective on our stream. Uh, we stream to the Raspberry Pi and then I connect to the Raspberry Pi to display it on OBS. So then I can see everybody's perspective on our stream. So that's why like we're a host of three people. So we can see all three um, at the same time, or at least we can like hotkey each scene to a different player. So we can see each perspective. That's impressive because it is. You're basically wow. That's a that's a really efficient use of hardware because you you'd probably need a full computer to do that. But to be able to do that in a Raspberry Pi, uh, that seems like a pretty interesting. Yeah, use of it, it actually, when I looked into it and researched, it doesn't take a lot of hardware resources. It's just network. So, yeah, it's very easy to set up. I can teach you. I have a whole like uh, documentation on how to do it. 
That's really, really cool. I, I don't know if I would ever have a real application for it, but it, it is, it's awesome that it is possible. I guess if we were, if we were ever doing like a LAN thing. But, oh, do you know yeah. what? It would be really super useful if we did have a LAN and we wanted to see like all the player perspectives and be able to switch Absolutely. to them. Absolutely. That yeah. would That's be That's exactly huge. the use case. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you could have all 10, let's say you have a 10, like a 10 player game. You could see all 10 players' perspectives uh, and actually really drop in on them and then also have the observer perspective. That is, yeah, maybe there is an application for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Any, any streaming, it's not, not, not even Civ related. Like it, it could be anything. Any perspective. Oh yeah, you could probably you could probably like hook your TV up to your smart TV to the network and stuff, right? Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, because well. it goes through OBS. Like it OBS streams to the server. So. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, yeah. It probably needs to be a computer, or at least something yes. that can run OBS. Yes. Again, hold on. Back to the game because I think <laughs> people are here for the game, right? So let's 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 bring it back. Absolutely Michael. not. I want to know more about Raspberry Pi. I want to know what you had for <laughs> breakfast. No, no, no. <laughs> but Bar, sure. Coffee. <laughs> anything else? Anything else? I mean, it's still a po uh, quote unquote. It's still a pause because they didn't uh, go for the next turn. Everybody's probably trying to do the moves over here before the um, uh, turn ends. They, you know. Because the timer is so fast, it's in a competitive setting. Um, sometimes you just don't have enough time to think about what you're going to do. Don't have enough time to get all of your um, um, build orders uh, correctly done and so on. So this is probably a moment of um, um, respite. It's, it's a moment. To, it's a breather. It's a, it's a moment to think. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So everybody's taking a bit of um, uh, time off here um we were talking about netherlands when we came in and his build choosing to build grandmaster chapel i'm still a bit surprised about that i was thinking maybe intelligence agency most of the time the go-to choice for the civs uh, would be foreign ministry uh for the envoys that you get and the influence in the city states um uh, but like you said, Grandmaster Chapel, I guess it will allow him to use his uh, uh, face pattern for something useful. He, he has been, or, or, or the Netherlands have been saving up their faith basically since the start of the game. And while their faith gain isn't amazing, I, I think it's maybe enough to justify a couple of unit purchases. Yeah, well, we'll see. I, I, at least he's going to get enough uh, unit purchases to defend against Greece here. He should have enough faith... Um, uh, to buy at least uh, like three units with his 529 it just needs to be careful not to be too expensive swordsman he can buy but anything more he, i don't think you can so Ooh, match Piju for greece I, I i noticed these so many mountains oh my goodness oh colosseum colosseum, yeah, colosseum yeah. Oh. finally okay he, he's doing it khakis over here is gonna be big I'm actually surprised we didn't see Golden go for the Colosseum, honestly, with uh, Russia. Too focused. So he's too focused on building all his theater squares and all their buildings. So now he's trying to catch up in science. It looks. Like. Yeah, I think I think it was a matter of he just didn't have he didn't want to use a district slot on an entertainment complex because remember he was on three and then four cities for a long time, and that means he's limited on the amount of districts he can build. Uh, so so that would be at least maybe that's my, my opinion on, on why he focused on di uh, wonders that don't really require a district or he already had the district for what what kind of religion did russia get what uh they didn't uh, feed the world right someone else did yeah he went for lay ministry with uh choral music and then he got the defender of the faith and pagodas he finished his religion with the mahabodhi temple uh, England also did manage to finish his religion with Holy Waters, which, by the way, just got a buff. Increases healing on your units by 20 uh, within the borders of the city that follows your religion. That's amazing, by the way. That's so much healing coming up from Holy Waters. Yeah, your units are going to be able to tank and cycle out so much because I think that means like a unit in your borders would heal a total of 30, right? Yeah. Yeah. In your city, a lot more, like 40 or something. Uh, 40, yeah. Yeah, that's nutty. Yeah. It is. Oh, and here's uh, the thing: Holy Waters works on enemy cities, so it's kind of like a mini crusade, but for healing. Oh yeah, you just need to have it uh, converted, right, to your religion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, oh, there's a race for a Colosseum. 
Can you imagine Hungary wanting to go for Colosseum four turns away from finishing it? Ooh, no. Oh my god, dude. No way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. Coming back into the game here. What can I say? Hungary is Curtis Love. Let's see Curtis Love. Oh, his last uh, slot. I hate oh, to see no. it. Uh, here's the thing is he going to be able to get a chop it looks like he's in position on a jungle tile there is that going to be enough to to to, to slice a turn off of that coliseum build that is a good question i do not know yet we're gonna have to watch this oh wait he just he didn't grow one turn he's still on four turns did something change Ooh. oh no he lost uh -oh. a bit of production somewhere or something maybe his amenities changed maybe a city grew maybe he lost yeah. at a city state it, uh, something has gone wrong here it's going to take an extra turn and save is a game that comes down to one turn yeah. uh, when it comes Little down to things, it and gets back the turn the turn is still bad oh no yeah he's also uh, getting stolen here you see that uh aziz yeah, aziz. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh He's getting his uh, gold taken away from him. Oh my God, he's being bullied. By... <laughs> he's being bullied by Egypt and England here, both sitting inside a city trying to steal stuff from him. That's what you get for being in the middle of the map. Everybody knows where you are. So like sometimes it's like, oh, they're the only ones I know where their cities are. I guess this is the only place I could send my spy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's... it's oh, uh... he, he chopped it. And it's three turns. It's the same again with uh, with Kakis. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, it's not looking great here, guys. Yeah, he might I... be able to chop the jungle that's on the spices. He can get there in two turns. Maybe that'll be enough. Uh, I don't but think you... he's gonna do that. I don't know. Do you? I, I guess you want to sacrifice the spice style for that awesome Colosseum, but oh man, that's that's a hard one to sacrifice. It's only one food on a really strong tile. I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess you're right. He has to. He has to know that the that it's such important. It's so important to chop that tile because if that's me, I'm thinking I don't want to chop that tile. I'm probably going to get this in three turns anyway. I'm just going to leave this alone. No, if it was me, I would be like unimproving the bananas, chopping the. I would be unimproving the stone. Okay. I would, yeah, I would be like, nah. If if I even think there's the slightest chance that someone's going to take this on me. No, then again, that is me coming from the perspective of someone like, I can see all the information in the game. I was uh, checking their both uh, their visions, and they don't see each other's Colosseum, by the way. So they don't know somebody else from the map is trying to snatch it away. I mean, you can assume, especially in this high competitive game, you might as well assume somebody you're always going to be against somebody in a race. I think it's a better practice to just uh, try to get as soon as possible everything rather than uh, delay it. Oh, Greece! Greece's Colosseum added an extra turn as well. Uh oh, I think Hungary's going to win it. I think oh, it's possible. This oh, this is no. so interesting! Holy <laughs> smoke! <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. The Civ God strikes Mycini. again. Only 26 production on Mycenae. And we got Buddha with uh, two turns to finish it with 45 production. Okay. Buddha is a pretty hefty city. I'm quite impressed by how much production he's managed to pull out of this city. He's working a ton of mines. And uh, uh, even despite that, he still has really good food in here. Oh, another job comes in or something like a change. Oh, he got a builder. Oh, Mycini... there was no builders there before. Interesting. And my Cine is uh, two tenths. So I think uh, it was a card. Ooh, it might have been a government card that switched out. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right there. Both of them are two, on two tenths. It feels bad because like you said, he still he did have the spice to uh, chop. Now he's not going to have it because he improved the mine. So yeah, oh, well. I would have chopped that spice. Now, then again, I am speaking again from, like, knowing everything. So, I mean, would I really have chopped the spice? Maybe I would have been, like Moisos was saying, maybe I would have been confident. No one else has gotten Colosseum yet. Maybe I'll get it. <laughs> oh, we got some points coming in. Menakshi Temple is getting built in Manchester. And, uh, of course, uh, Mamoret over here is going to get the five points for his team. Oh, really? There's extra, bo there's bonus points for building Menakshi Temple, is there? 
Uh, yes, there are. Uh, there was uh, extra. Um, In that um, Panama Canal, I think I saw as well as bonus points. Now, Greece can get one chop in here. They can uh, pop up onto this jungle hill and just give it the old... Uh, uh, uh. They can maybe get one chop? Well, no, actually. That builder already moved. That's your chop sound? Really? Listen. <laughs> trying to keep things friendly, okay? Do you want me to go like... <laughs> 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 I, I don't know. I thought it'd be a little bit more intense. It's, that's it. Like, wow. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so Cordoba over in um, Persia, Spain's war. Cordoba has finally fell, and is this now the signal of the end for for Spain? I, I think it might be. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Have you seen what's going on in uh, Persia's land, by the way? Yes. Yes, hungry. <laughs> let's go. Hey, <laughs> oh my god, it's like five or six turns late because of the, the city-state, but man, is it just on time regardless. You need more uh, units. Like, I don't see any black armies, I don't see any hussars. Like, where, where are the other units? Yeah, he, he's not getting them. He, he's just going to try to focus on that Colosseum, which is yeah not going to finish. Uh, it looks like both, uh, Greece is going to get it. And I, I think I saw Madrid flip at least five times till now. Like, Got one yep. population, man. It's it's been flipped a few times. Yeah, <laughs> that's a city that's been through some stuff. We do have also um, a war on oh. the seas, a skirmish between uh, Netherlands and Norway. Both of them with the caravels here. Where are the Evans? That's the question. I see people. I, I see people. Yeah, not yet. Where's the? Yeah, where are they in the research tree? Is one that? Oh one no. Oh. No, he's going to finish the Dezeven uh, technology and he's not going to get to build them. Well, I guess he doesn't have a Niter. You can give Niter away. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, but, yeah, but those Dezeven prov provincians, those are expensive to upgrade into. I think it's like 250 to 500 gold. I don't remember on online speed. Um, wow. Yeah, it's half that. It's only half. It's always half. But they have like a plus seven against the defensible districts. They start up with uh, fi uh, 60 strength, range strength, 50 melee strength. They're extremely, extremely good. Uh, I mean, I I'm amazed that Norway managed to get out caravels here. I thought the Netherlands, because they had a much easier sim over there. I thought they would get there way faster. But the Norway also pre-building quadri reams for frigates too. So... This is going to be a true brawl on the seas. Yeah, and it looks like uh, right now Norway is just uh, tearing apart the, uh, say the boats, the navy of uh, Dutch. I love a good navy battle. That, that extra promotion on these uh, caravels makes all the difference, by the way. That extra plus seven from the Embolon just allows them to do the necessary damage against the Netherlands. The Dutch Navy. Uh, yep. I'm sorry. Whenever I want to say the Navy, it's like it's, I should say Netherlands, but it's actually Dutch. I don't know. It's it doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah. The the that plus Netherlandian one... Navy. What is that? Netherlandian Navy. The, the... <laughs> Just say Dutch. <laughs> Um, but but I, I was actually going to point that out myself because because that one promotion, the fact that these Norwegian boats have been in a little bit of combat before, uh, is completely swinging this fight in favor of uh, Norway here. Yeah. Uh, what can what can uh, what can the Dutch do here to 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 push this in their favor? Do they have to rely on maybe doing a tactical retreat and waiting for the their frigates? I think this is way too late. They poked the hornet's nest. Now they're gonna get the hornets. It's at this point, it's not gonna be an easy way back. And he, he, since he already discovered caravel technology, he's not gonna get um, the production necessary to build the boats anymore. Mm, for sure. Yeah, his caravels now are just like too expensive to really make it viable to replace them. Yeah. Uh, I got people asking me about the admirals. Oh, admirals got uh, blocked, by the way. Really? Everybody passed them. 
and nobody picked them up and looks like they're waiting for Spain which Spain is not making points anymore amazing uh, I guess is the, the one that's making some points now and is this a case of uh, do, do, do people do this when they know that a better great admiral is about to come up and like even if they like if they know everyone else is going to pass on it they'll still do it yeah mm -hmm. A lot of people will just block it. And also I see a city taken away from um, Persia. He lost um, the south city of, uh, from Gordian. Oh, yeah, he did. That city has been completely obliterated by the levied troops from Hungary. Yeah, well, it looks like uh, Hungary's war is paying off here. He's uh, also going to get some more damage done on uh, Persia's uh, units. He's getting pillages off. Oh, man, this is... So, so what is Hungary's goal with this war? Is he trying to take over Persia? Is he just trying to do damage? Maybe get a bit of pillaging? What, what's the goal? Just damage. This is pure grief right here. He doesn't <laughs> want to do anything. This yeah, these grief. are free units too. Well, free, quote unquote. Like, they're not his, right? So they, he can say, like, I'm just going to pillage everything in your land and they can, all these units can die and they serve their purpose. Like, they, the, whatever. Right? Yeah, chaos maker. That's why he's so annoying. I'm actually surprised he didn't try to get a general over there to help out the war. Can you know, imagine a general with those units? Oh, a great uh, general over man. here would have been scary. Yeah, he even has two of them. He has Timur and Shun Tzu. Oh, well. I guess he was scared about uh, Mamaleto. Honestly, you, you should be scared about Mamaleto with uh, only 79 science and Mamaleto 172 science and 300 culture at time. Just Whoa. exploded. It feels like we looked away from Mamaletto and he was on like 112 culture and then he's on 300 now. What happened? Where yeah. did all this culture come from? Uh, he spammed out his uh, theater squares. He got uh, amphitheaters. He got his, used his production to just um, build them really quickly. And uh, he did also manage to get that Kuete um, Okali in uh, the city of Leeds. And now he's getting uh, all of that uh, extra culture and uh, production and food on his uh, lake tiles. Actually, oh, yeah, I see that. Is on 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 culture just from that wonder. I'm really enjoying England's play. They're also using, they're using their projects uh, very strategically. I've always noticed that they're always doing one or two projects basically throughout their empire and they're always having an influx of great people because of it. So he, he gets like only his uh, bonuses when he has great works of art or great writing. So like, he's always been using the culture project to make sure he keeps getting an, uh, an income of great writers and spreading out among the empire those those great books. <sighs> I can't talk today. I'm sorry. Wow. You're doing great. Don't worry about it. It was a long sentence. <laughs> That's uh, that's my point. It's I can't get to the point. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Um, I actually wanted to see how many works did he get. Okay, so he did get an artist. He did get a merchant. Any more art? Okay, some of these uh, great uh, writers. Okay, I didn't see any books in his uh, series. That's why I was worried. Oh, okay, and I thought I saw a few. Oh yeah. Okay, I see four over here. This one, okay, another two over here. Yeah, so he does have uh, a few. Yeah, and, and and taking those books away from Russia is actually quite important because Russia's culture right now, uh, he's at ten out of sixty tourists, and his main opponent <laughs> is actually England. Uh, we might see some serious pivots here based on this culture victory. Yeah, and he is going going that culture victory as fast as he can getting Bolshoi getting uh, Forbidden City he has uh, St. Basil Cathedral coming up from St. Petersburg um, it looks like he's trying as fast as possible to get there I'm a bit surprised we don't see him uh, trying to get uh, one of these uh, fast oh he did already get a musician okay let's see who got the musician sorry uh, he, he did get it okay and you see the next one is 535 points because he got it way, way before the the industrial era. Yeah, the, the, the price of the great people goes up if you earn them. Like the next one is, is really high if you earn them too early, right? 
<clears throat> yeah. I don't know if it matters when you earn them, does it? Yes. Yeah, if, if you earn them okay. before the era, like if it's the medieval era and I get uh, uh, the oh. last medieval era, the, the Renaissance great person will be more expensive. Okay. Usually it's like double. It, it, it's a lot. And I think, and, and the most annoying thing about it is like, sometimes I'll pick up a great person for like 600 great people points and then the next one is like 200. And I, <laughs> it, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> um. I mean, I get why the mechanic is there. It's just it, uh, very occasionally you get like an annoying situation. England is starting to make great engineer points and that is going to help uh, him uh, get a few of those uh, awesome engineers uh, to allow him to build wonders faster. And that would be uh, quite good for him uh, to keep up with uh, the adjacency for his theater squares, uh, get some more tourism on him, and maybe some uh, nice and uh, good bonuses, uh, like Menakshi Temple. That's going to be another five points on um, on his side from building a wonder. He's going to get to redeem that as uh, an achievement. Yeah, by the way, if you don't know, there's a, like a list of achievements. Let me actually share this with... Uh, what One question... Uh, sorry to interrupt you there, Michael, but one, one question I do have about Russia's position in the game. Now, when I was playing uh, 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 Civ, 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 Civ 5 multiplayer, um, if there was a player running away with the game with a culture or science victory and you weren't adjacent to them, uh, it typically fell on whoever their neighbor was to, to try and stop them. And their neighbors are Greece and the Netherlands. Are, you gonna are we going to start to see uh, a players pressuring Greece and the Netherlands to try to do something about Russia? Or what what often happened in my games is the person who could do something about it just never did anything and just played as greedy as possible so that they looked good coming in second place. What, what kind of outcome are we likely to see here? Are people going to be gunning for Russia here or are they just going to try to solidify their place in the, in the score list? Well, ideally, that's what you should be doing, what you said you should be doing. Uh, the person next door should uh, try to knock on uh, Russia's doorstep and uh, take him out, or at least force him to defend. Uh, use that face pretend to buy units, uh, put a pressure on his economy and so on. Um, but honestly, looking at the positioning over here, it doesn't look like Russia can be uh, easily attacked. He doesn't have city states, for example, for Hungary to come in. Uh, there are only a few tiles that um, Greece can come against him, and immediately after he will see uh, Greece uh, getting units, as in getting a build bigger army, he is um, going to have the ability to just buy out a few units. And remember, we're getting into the Cossack area. Those Cossacks are going to be nasty, and I'm pretty sure they're going to get uh, mobilization. So they're going to be army Cossacks with a plus five next to Russian territory and a plus three from Defender of the Faith. Very, very hard to go through. So not only that Greece doesn't have the technology, he doesn't have the um, uh, strength to go against his uh, do next door neighbor. And who's, uh, who's going to have available options? Netherlands? I mean, Netherlands is about to die to Norway he's not going to do anything here uh, Egypt is on the east that's going to be his ally uh, so the only option actually available for the other players to stop the culture victory is exactly what Mamaneto is doing right here trying to get more culture trying to get more um, books out more works more great people away from Russia and uh, trying to prepare himself for the late game to uh, maybe maybe do some uh, attacks with uh, tanks, artilleries and so on. But again, you've seen yesterday, the second you commit to the tank artillery push, you lose your seeming. Like, that, that's the second you basically stop getting more stats. Yeah, well, for sure. Hear, hear me out here. I, I like Doe's uh, suggestion here where England defends and just buys turns for Cree. Cree has really good science right now. And so England's job, just buy time. Cree, get your military, get your nukes, get your tanks, and they're the ones that are gonna invade Greece. They're the ones that are gonna invade Russia. And so I think I like that strategy a lot. Yeah, it could be. Uh, also, looking at the positioning of Cree army, I'm pretty sure he's gonna wanna go through- uh... Greece, right? Uh, he's uh, no, not, not Greece, uh, Hungary first, okay, and then go towards the north, towards Russia. And he doesn't have a way to go directly against uh, Russia. Uh, That's you see the, the mountains, thing. yeah. 
That, that's the problem here. You would need, I guess, mountain tunnels to go through. Maybe take a cad in the meantime. Actually, does he have a city state? Oh, yeah, he did take bull. bull. Okay. So he needs to raise that city and set another city. If maybe maybe to. take out Egypt. Maybe be like, okay, if I take out Egypt, Russia will cripple. Their economy will cripple. They don't have a trade partner anymore. I don't know what kind of alliance they have anymore. I don't know if it changed to a military one but at this point in the game. But I feel like if you take out Egypt, Russia will have a much harder time doing what they need to do. Yeah, uh, they, they still don't have a military alliance. They might be in uh, economic or they might be in um, science or culture. I don't know. We don't know yet. I, I just don't see the plus five um, activated on the units. But I do see it on Hungary's place. Yeah, uh, is Hungary attacking Egypt with a, a, a black army here, by the way? He's speaking of Hungary? Or is this just, just a scout? In, he's putting it in his face. I have this, bro. I don't know. <laughs> don't come at me, bro. <laughs> like a flag. Yeah, it looks like uh, Kumasi lost all of his units. So Persia now uh, managed to defend. Got Cordoba, got Madrid. But I think this is damage done already on uh, Persia. He's half the stats of almost everybody else that is relevant in the game. Yeah, definitely. Persia is probably one of the weakest players in the game and we've seen that the one of the, the weaker players in the game they tend to get gobbled up by the stronger players um yeah. he's, he's really a, like nobody's strong next to him <laughs> you know yeah he's just really really lucky i mean if england had maybe settled uh, like four or five tiles closer to him they might start considering going to war but right now they seem to be happy to sim for culture <clears throat> yeah Oh, and there it is, the call for an irrelevant vote on Spain. Yeah, for sure. Spain's... I guess both of them. Two they, both of them want a needle vote. Uh, Dutch and Spain. Yeah, uh, dude, I, that I, Norway I Navy. Woo-wee! Yeah, I can't blame them. This is unstoppable at this point. It's a rolling ball of fire. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the only thing that if, if I were Russia or someone like that, I would say, no, nah, I think I think Netherlands has to stay in the game to fight back against Norway. Otherwise, Norway is going to border Russia and that could change the political landscape of the game. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Uh, can you imagine having Norway over there that can manage to get uh, good enough uh, science, uh, can manage to get uh, production gold to uh, go against Russia, maybe do some nukes? I'm pretty sure nukes will come earlier than the the cultured victory here, especially if uh, Mamaleto keeps on defending this. It, it all depends on how well Russia can keep expanding that culture or that tourism. They're up to 200 tourism uh, uh, so far. Yeah. I mean, just look at his... You, you gotta see this. You gotta see St. Petersburg. He finished St. Basil Cathedral. And kind of as we... As we as we kind of t talked about there, Russia is actually voting no on the irrelevant vote. He, he seems to think that uh, Netherlands is important to stay in the game to buy time for uh, Norway making their way over and taking their cities. Oh, for, for sure. I have to point something out. It's really important actually for a culture victory to keep your um, uh, tourists in other nations. If another nation dies, you're also going to lose the tourists that you got from them. Yeah, that's um. This is a way to defend the culture victory, just straight up killing other players. Yeah, and it, it also every time you kill a player, it like slows down the the acquisition of tourists as well, uh, which is important because Spain getting wiped out here will significantly change the game yeah. uh, in terms of Russia's culture victory. So I think that's why. Russia wants them to stay in the game for as long as possible because maybe he can squeak out the victory as he needs it. Even England, Mamaleto said uh, straight up, he doesn't want Russia to roll Netherlands. They don't want to give that option to even Russia to take over another five cities here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because the second that that's, th those cities are in the hands of a, of a basically AFK a AI player, those are, those are easy pickings for, for Russia to sweep in with like a few Cossacks. They don't even have walls in here. 
Yeah, this is. Uh... Well, I, I'm pretty sure Norway is going to get the coastal ones uh, with the frigates, with the caravels. It's, it's going to be quite tough for, for Russia to invest in uh, defense. And honestly, I don't think he wants to poke another enemy. He just wants. He's probably happy just um, you know, trying to get his uh, culture victory here in this scenario i i do have I, I do have to say i have my own doubts about this culture victory here uh, i like his simming i like his um, going for it but i just see Mamaleto. it's close yeah. man it's incredibly close yeah it's uh we'll see we'll see yeah i'm I really mean... liking england Cree right now as favorites if we're gonna pick favorites yeah, I, I definitely feel like the, the two superpowers here are England, Cree, and Russia, Egypt. And it's just going to be a question of who blinks first, who kills Hungary, uh, what does Greece do? I, I, I really do feel like um, it's kind of a situation like we were in yesterday. I think the Kingmaker is going to be the third place team because whatever that third place team does, uh, it could severely hinder whoever's gunning for first. Let's see. I'm actually curious. Who is the, th the third team is... Persia and uh, Pericles. Yeah, Persia so, and Pericles. If uh, well, I, I, you might be right though. But if England again, if England s switches to an army and try to go, tries to go against Persia to take over his empire, yes, he could. He has a lot more stats, uh, a lot more um, economy. Everything is better. But then he's gonna stop defending the culture victory. So exactly. I don't think it's in his best interest to do that. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and at the same time, uh, Greece can cause problems for the Cree uh, or for Russia. So the like I like like I really do think the Kingmaker's shoes are being worn by Team Three. It it might be it might be. at the same time also you have to take into account this uh, Hungary in the middle Hungary in the middle is gonna get eaten up by uh, Kree it looks like he's already preparing those bombards he's not that far away from getting uh, cuirassiers and when he's gonna start rolling he's gonna take really quickly uh, the Hungarian Empire with only eighty three science and fifty culture Hungary is just not gonna get to his necessary text to defend. No, it's Hungary's, Hungary's game is, uh, I mean, it, it's kind of dependent on getting carried by Norway here. And Norway isn't exactly in a position to, to, to do some major carrying unless the war with the Netherlands and possibly even Spain and Persia uh, changes things. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really curious how Norway will get out of this because he also invested quite a lot into his uh, push right now. He's minus 31 gold per turn by the way it's really awkward to see norway with that uh, kind of uh, gold per turn Ooh. and uh, he has quite a few more cities that he could settle on the coast but again he stopped expanding yeah I i'm noticing players have a real aversion to settling in the tundra like it's almost like the tundra is a complete and total border uh, uh to settlement because like yeah. Uh, maybe maybe this is just like single player bias but like there's a luxury up there there's a bunch of deer tiles uh, i would maybe throw a city down there but, so how many turns does it take to build a settler and how many turns are you wasting building that settler and getting him over there versus what else can you do with it it's like an opportunity cost almost. yeah well, that's true but i mean a settler all like I feel like settlers always pay for themselves. Maybe this is these players are very experienced. At turn right? seventy five. How many? How many? How many more turns would uh, is the game going to go? And like, how many turns can you reliably bring that new city up and running where it is now paying for itself? Well, I don't know. It, it depends on how long the game will go. That is, the, but those are the questions that you kind of have to ask, right? That's all yeah, I'm really for sure. At. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, you're right. Like it's t it's a tough decision, and like there's yeah, there's a luxury up there. There's you can put some pretty good districts if you like kind of district plan well. But yeah, is, is it worth your time? It's like ah, it's a tough question. I know. Uh, I I have to assume that these players they're very experienced. They know the game better than me, and there's a reason they don't do it. 
sometimes it's just uh, reasons out of uh, like i was saying um, subjectivism not ro- not only uh, skill they just don't feel comfortable enough to have cities for example so close to persia they don't want to antagonize or maybe give chances for persia to send an army there they don't want to handle any kind of defense uh, they had our priorities uh, having like using an an extra um, you know part of your brain to just um, uh settle cities and figure out what to do with them might be something that they don't want to do at that point uh, or they just didn't think of it uh, at all from the beginning to settle those cities they yeah that makes sense like getting them from their opponents and so on um but we've seen a clear difference in the players approach to the game and usually the ones that keep on expanding are the ones that later on in the game do have uh, more advantages at, over the others I have noticed that. I have noticed, even in my own games, like if I have a lot of cities, generally I do very well. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, well, to compare those numbers that you're talking about, putting right now production into a setter it would be around five to six tens. Let, let's say five tens for the sake of, you know. Sure. Five. I think that's even like a good, uh, like that, that's like, if you have really good production at this point in the game, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, like eight, nine, ten. That is around the same production that you would put into a university, for example, or a university in another building. So let's say you're getting four extra uh, science uh, extra uh, after you finish building the settler. So it, you spend five turns, you get a settler, you don't get any kind of return from it until you actually put it down somewhere uh, compared to four extra. Uh, let, let's say you get it somewhere in seven turns just for the sake of uh, you know, doing the exercise. So uh, that, five turns to build, seven turns to move. So 13 yes, or 12 total, okay. Exactly, so, but you're, if you do compare it with um, university, you're gonna get seven turns of uh, fourth science. Uh, you know, uh, that's uh, what, uh, 28 uh, science? coming up from uh, compared to no income for that settler. But when you put down the settler, you immediately start to get a little science, a little culture, a little gold. You also get uh, to use some resources, depending on what your empire is capable of, or for example, if you spend some more uh, resources into a builder and so on, you can you get to chop districts, you get to uh, improve uh, resources, get amenities, which help all of your empire and so on. So it, it, that, 30 extra science ish the 30 ish extra science that you would have gotten from a university starts to pale in comparison to what you can get after those 13 turns okay that was a really good explanation it was a really good explanation which uh, i don't know maybe i'm just like the greediest player on earth and i'm like i just want more cities i just i want more i want more cities <laughs> Yeah, more than more cities. Yeah. It, 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 on the other side, I have to point out something else. It, with and this is uh, about how you do your resupply, uh, or I should say, what your empire is capable of uh, when it needs to go to war or defensive or has the need to defend himself. Uh, that you have to take into account distance from your cities that are capable of pumping out units uh if you do have gmc or you don't have gmc to just straight up buy your units somewhere closer and how much does it take for you to move those units to the front line to that city that you need to defend if you have a city for example dutch right he has a city zanzibar this was impossible to re- reinforce mm-hmm. yeah for so sure. far away right yeah, if you lost your fleet here and you didn't have uh, pre-builds ready and, like, and starting to move, that city would have died before any kind of pre-build would have uh, gotten there after it got upgraded. It just You cannot do it. It's too far away. Even with the extra movement of uh, the boats, four or five movement of the boats. Uh, same, you, you can see this actually happening on all of the empires. They try to put their uh, cities as close as possible knowing that they will re- need to reinforce them at some point for yeah for a, sure easy example look at persia to the west side he has no cities that's his capital and he has no city to the west side that is fear uh, of not being able to move units from the right side to the west side to reinforce that city 
That's really. I, I thought maybe it'd be because of greed. Like he got greedy, or think, or rather, like overbuilding for the for the war. Like he flipped Madrid so many times, and that like that's costly. Like he's still losing units every time he's attacking the city, and so like he committed to the Spain war so much that he didn't feel like he had the time to produce a settler and get it over here uh, versus building units to go to war. Uh, you have to take into account this is his capital. This is four times. I know, I know. I'm just saying I think that's what the decision was in his head. It might be. It might be. I, I personally think uh, it was also fearing not to have uh, another open war with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you are Norway, I noticed... Let's go back to Norway, because uh, there's a better example up there. Yeah. If you're Norway, do you build a settler in Oslo and move it to the lake tile? Is it worth it at this point of the game? So I'm going to... What would you think, Michael? This one to the west? Yeah. Uh, I would say... Uh... Or wherever. Like, build a settler out of there right now. Like, where would you go? Because he has a lot of room to settle. I would say go on the coast, keep on getting those um, uh, holy sites and uh, harbors, uh, getting the gold, and if you're forced to go inland, sure, go inland. Oh, like you it's... don't want to go inland, you want to stay all on the coast? Yes, because like okay. his whole fire power is on the coast right now. He has frigates, he has caravels, he can, uh, he can defend or retake cities on the coast. Inlands, he cannot move boats on inlands. But then what's his win condition? So like if you get all those all those Oh that's cities at the moment he has no win condition. Yeah, like that's the, the thing, right? The only way that Norway could be still relevant to the game if he keeps on pumping out settler after settler after settler and settles all of the little places between him and the Netherlands. Like literally everything. He needs to settle everything over here to become relevant. Okay. Thank you. Very interesting. Pretty sure. We yeah, should host. Sure. I think it'd be really cool if you were to host film reviews, of, so uh, quote unquote film review, and post it on YouTube. I, how many people would watch that? I think a lot of people would watch that. Wait, film reviews? Yeah. So like you 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 go through film or go through the game, right? Like record this whole game, and you quickly okay. scroll through it of like this is the this is these are the points where I think they made a mistake, and you go through each step, saying on turn like sixty five you have to like be really specific. Your turn sixty five he made a decision to do this. What if he did this instead? And you go through the math and how it could have affected his game in the future, because then you can say this was the outcome of his decision, and if they I think if he made a different decision earlier, he would have had more success. Oh, I would have. Uh, I would love to actually have a tool that allows me to do that. It's just at the moment how uh, civilization builds its replays is not possible. As in, there's no replay. Well, you can just record it like like now, like go through the stream, right? You just go through the stream and like you kind of just do it. Yeah, I, I like that. Actually, I was talking with the test for fish. Maybe he wants to do something like that. Um, doing some reviews for. Um, uh, how do you call them? Uh, CWC games for the 4v4s uh, because usually that's where we have all of the information packed. Um, but we never got around to doing it. Time Think about it. Things, I, guess. I think it's really good for your community, especially a very competitive civilization community. Yeah, yeah. You need to think about it. Um, no, for sure, it sounds really, really interesting. Uh, I really wish Civ had some sort of replay function. Um, yes, please. It would be so nice. I mean, we have, I think there is one mod that like does map replays, but that's not really a replay. Wouldn't that be cool? Like you can like, you can like say, I want to see what turn 63 looked like. And then it's just like, it brings up the save state of 63. Yeah, right? that would be amazing. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Uh, there is somebody, his name is Keride. Uh, he's actually working with the BBG team also and with us in, C in CWC, but it's, uh, I don't know. I felt like all of the whole process of getting all of the information is a bit clunky for me I, and I couldn't get it to work. Every time I tried to make it work, it just uh, crashed or did something. So it, it's at the moment is not uh, as stable as I would have uh, liked to see it. Yeah, but like a Civ 7 request, you know? Uh, oh, like yes, how do we how yes, do we make this better? Like why don't we rec like what if this was a thing? 
and also, then they... Go ahead. camera camera please camera i like that I, I can do 360 but oh man i would love to see from the unit's perspective or stuff like that units oh like warhammer right yes yeah i always love zooming on the warhammer and watching them like just duke it out it's so cool yes like from a outside perspective from a competitor's perspective we're getting that juicy like one cannonball shot from the bombard onto the wall waiting for it oh my god that's just like so much good uh eye candy over there uh okay should we bring this back to the game now that it's unpaused for sure i i, I was gonna ask a question here oh god it's gone out of my head uh, russia has built a couple of chariots is this a cossacks pre-built <clears throat> oh no um <sighs> every chariots are um Cuirassiers. Cossacks are uh, like yes. light cavalry. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. I think he just he just wants to get some pre-built in his cities. And looking at his positioning, I think this is for the card, the um, what is it, the uh, retainers card or what do you call it? Oh um, yeah, the plus one amenity for having a military garrison. Yeah, that would definitely make sense. Yeah, that one. That one. The other question I was just about to ask you is, as the turn rolled over, you can see England had levied over here on the left side of the map, Caguana and Fez. Um, now, I think they did that for era score because the era just rolled over and we can check who has a golden age and who doesn't. <clears throat> good catch. Yeah, good catch. Yeah, he does. He does. He did get a golden age with uh, Russia. Cyrus did get a golden age, but Pericles did not, even if he did build the Colosseum here. And so, uh, as the game goes on, do Golden Ages stay as important as they are in the early game? Or does it become, like, if you don't have a Golden Age, it's not that big of a deal? The third one is not imp that important. The fourth and the fifth one are extremely important. Uh, usually, in the fourth one, most of the players would actually want to go um, Dark Age. So, they can get a Heroic in the fourth. Uh, because the fourth one comes with... Um, uh, the two arms with um, the reform production the too from uh, university or campuses, right? Yeah, and heartbeat yeah. of steam. So you get like three major amazing bonuses, and you get to go to war. So basically, everybody's uh, trying to nail that timing. And by the way, wow. it looks like he's going for um, uh, artillery with cuirassiers on the offensive here. Or is he going to wait for tanks? That's my question. Is he going to wait for tanks? I guess. Is, is this the Cree you're talking about? Yeah, Cree. Because if watch it getting more and more military, every like every turn we see him getting more bombards, getting more um, encampments built, getting more uh, units there in the city. Now, uh, I would guess that all of the players in the game are probably very carefully watching what the stats tell them about the other players. So seeing the Cree and England jumping up here to nearly a thousand combat strength, that's going to tell their neighbors that maybe a war is coming. Yeah. Uh, so so if you're in their shoes, what are you doing? How do you prepare? Do you just build whatever you can and fortify every tile? If you can. <laughs> the, um, the thing is, like you said, you can see this coming a mile away oh and boy. you have to prepare for it. How, how can you prepare for it or what would be your... Um, um, defensive capability that's totally different and that actually the, the preparedness for defense I, don't, I think it starts from turn one uh, rather than uh, those moments because uh, you don't have the stats you don't have the technology you don't have the units right yeah that makes sense uh, do we do uh, I do B you do A okay let's go breach dam and preserve breach dam and preserve okay I am doing B and you're doing A Yes, sir. Perfect. And I have to voted. come back specifically on this question with uh, Hungary, uh, it doesn't look like he can do anything about this. Like, uh, at this point, with only 82 science and 56 culture going against uh, Pound Maker's 300 science and 11, 111 culture, he's just going to lose cities here. Like, even if he wants to go for... Um, Field cannons, for example, and get a lot of them, even if they're not caught up or something. He's barely on banking right now. 
I don't think he even has. Let me see. Does he have? Well, at least he has castles technology. Does he have muskets? I don't see the muskets. I see only men at arms. If he doesn't have muskets, he doesn't have uh, uh, gunpowder. That means he doesn't have metal casting or ballistics. So it's like three takes away from getting that uh, necessary technology that he needs, like the minimum amount. Yeah, that's the minimum required to defend here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a rough game. It's a rough game for Hungary. Um, uh, I think he's, we're going to... He's the gold maker. I'm sorry. I stopped you. I'm sorry. But he's the gold maker right now. The the, the king maker, I think. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, you think Hungary is the king maker? Like whoever eats up Hungary or whether or not he defends well, that's going to dictate the winner of the game? Or at least yes. who's in a strong position? Yes. Very interesting. It, it's interesting because uh, Hungary right now, they're in... Um, second last place uh, for 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 someone who is arguably towards the bottom of the scoreboard to have such a big impact on potentially the outcome or, or even just the leaderboard here uh keeps things interesting uh, are we pausing the lobby no uh this thing that's a this thing one of the players uh this uh i don't know who so jack is or, i don't know yeah or cs crack <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a special curse when I join or watch a game. Uh, you're going to have way more techn uh, technical issues than you would otherwise. I mean, I do have to point out, we started up with uh, 10 players in the game and two extra spectators, and we kept the game going for 77 turns. So it's, uh, That's know. true. That is like a decent amount. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh! Yeah, yesterday we had the same. Uh, throw your eye over here to the border between Greece and the Netherlands. There's a, a conflict has just exploded out. And I think players have realized now that Netherlands is too juicy to be left alive. Yeah, they're, they're turning it apart slowly. He's going to have a hard time uh, defending his border. I don't think Russia will interact with this. Like looking at his units, he's not moving them. And coming no. back to your question about those uh, heavy chariots, they just cored up and stayed out of the city. It doesn't look like he's using the retainer's card. Is that retainer's card? Yeah, that is the retainer's card. Yeah, so it, it, it seems like he's just having some pre-builds, like you were saying, just to be ready in case someone attacks him. He can pop out a cuirass here uh, 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 and send it off to the front line to, to hold the line. Yeah, I, I do have to say, I do feel like his uh, science is a bit too low. With 130, he's uh, probably never going to get to uh, computers. And you do need your computers for that extra um, uh, tourism boost that you get. The same with, uh, well, the Civic Tree on, uh, what is it? Environmentalism. Uh, environmentalism, yeah. I think it's environmentalism and computers are the two key texts there, combining together to give you a 50% tourism boost, I think it is. 50-50, yeah. It's 50 environmentalism, 50 computers. I think it that it got doubled in BBG, so we can actually have a competing uh, culture victory versus uh, science victory. Oh, interesting, really. Yeah, yeah, because it, it used to be... I'm pretty sure it used to be 100% for one of them, and then it was split to be 50-50, and then in the base game, it's 25-25. So it's interesting that you guys decided to buff that. Um, now... Russia here it's saying that they're going to win in 25 turns is that true like are we going to have they put the game on the clock here did they just finish St. Basil's is that what the boost of tourism was possibly uh, they finished it a few turns ago I think it was turns ago? more yeah I think he just rolled over a few uh, tourists there's like a threshold when you like the computer says okay we need to give you some uh, tourists now yeah yeah so, yeah for sure it's uh it's a uh, 200 tourism per player in the game when you get that much against someone you steal a tourist yeah i honestly i never knew the uh, i i know and i've been told the math of it for so many times i never uh remembered it i don't know why <laughs> hard to remember man <laughs> this uh, well culture victory is my favorite victory so that's the one i know uh, uh the most about uh, there we go uh, Spain making a play to retake Cordoba. Uh, Spain is definitely not going down without a fight here. Uh, and, you know, you have to give them credit for an absolutely heroic defense. 
the cards were completely stacked against them and they've done everything in their power to make it so that they were not an easy kill absolutely i took i had them out on like what turn 20 and they've lasted like 50 turns after that like good on spain you fought well you put persia in a much harder position to win this game so kudos to you and, and i think that's important if, if you're going to have respect in the community if you're going to be like this is a good player you have to give anybody who tries to think that you're an easy war you got to give them a black eye and almost force them to lose the game because you're going to be given respect in future games and people are going to think twice if they declare war on you again absolutely you, i never thought about the diplomatic part to the tournament he didn't only give uh, mcs crack a black eye he broke one of his legs as well <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 not only uh, not only that but now there's a, a norwegian bear uh bearing down upon him you gotta be like this is for persia this is like a bittersweet victory it's like oh man i finally i beat spain and then like this <laughs> formidable fleet of norway just swings around the peninsula it's like oh god damn it i'm actually curious are they at war already or are they fighting did they fight till now i didn't see a notification of war between uh well oh they are because uh, curtis did attack him right so uh, yeah they are they are at war okay yeah he attacked him with the kumasi unit so i think they they have to yeah. be at war here well we'll, we'll see if uh, norway over here will recover i doubt it because he's like he still has a big hole in his economy minus 29 gold at 10 91 science 64 uh, culture uh it, it does look like uh, they haven't been able to keep up with um, uh, with the seeming here and uh, looking at his land he's gonna get grandmaster chapel soon still not building uh, the economy it's uh that's i think uh, what will break the camels back here while uh, persia and I think at this point, the camel has a black eye and broken legs based on the war that we've seen from here. Uh, what were you going to say about Persia? Uh, they do have the economy. Yeah, Persia's economy is quite impressive. Um, despite the fact that they've been at war, I, how has Persia managed to to keep up here, having having this much gold while having this many units? Oh, oh we got um, too many of these things, so we're uh, going to reconnect that is my favorite favorite part of the game re-lobby simulator 2016 this is where it's nice to like not be an official spectator because i guess i could just go do something and come back when the lobby's up <laughs> <laughs> yes i i'm not gonna lie over the past hour or so i've been uh, watching the kinder eggs and i've been uh, drooling uh, all over them Kinder eggs. You know those are a band in America? Because yeah, Americans are too dumb to not eat an egg. <laughs> no, the eggs are not banned. The toys are banned. Kinder surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the toy. <clears throat> I just, I, that was always the main part of the Kinder surprise for me. It's like the chocolate's good, but I always liked the toy. I thought that was like the best part. Dude. The the toy got thrown in the bin every time. What are you talking? The chocolate was amazing. I know, but the excitement of getting a toy, at least for me, right? It's like, yeah, you never played with it. And it's, it's always really dumb. But it's just the excitement of like, oh, why, oh, I wonder what the toy is. I wonder what it is. Because they never told you what it was. So it's like just the imagination of what it could be. Then you're always left with disappointment. But it's still fun. Yeah, definitely. No, no. I I liked the toy as a kid. I honestly, <laughs> I, I almost got more joy out of like uh, unpeeling the, um, you know, the guide on like how to put your toy together thing, and then like looking through <laughs> the like because they always had really cool little pictures in them. That was like, ah, I really liked that part. I kind of wish I wish I was the kind of kid who like collected things and cared about like keeping stuff because you could make like a really cool little like collage out of all those little Kinder Egg uh, uh, guides. Yeah, they were like 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 mini Legos. It's like only like two or three steps usually, right? Yeah, there was only something. like two or three steps, yeah. and, but they had like a really nice little illustration with them, and it was just, I don't know, it was kind of sweet and nice. I agree. I miss those. Remember, like, even, the, I don't know if you have these in Ireland, but like, uh, Double Bubble, do you have those? Uh, no, what is a Double Bubble? What Was it like those, like, weird, like, vending machines where you put, like, a coin in and you turn it and you get one out? <laughs> no. no, it's just, it's, it's literally just a, a brand of bubble gum. Oh, and okay. So it was like this little, like, rectangular, really hard, like a rock piece of gum like you know when you're chewing into this thing you're like your your jaw's gonna hurt afterwards for how much pressure you got to put on this thing but 
Like, you still ate it anyway because when you unwrapped it, you got a little comic, a two panel comic that was different every single time. They made hundreds and hundreds of these. So every package had a little comic and you'd read the comic and they would, it's always like a joke that you're like, <laughs> that's funny. And then you throw it away. But that joke was enough to fulfill any sort of enjoyment I had with that gum. Cause then I would eat the gum and be like, yeah, it's okay. But the, the comic is the best part. Yeah, for sure. I, it, it's like be mad. Life was so simple being a kid. You got so much like fun out of uh, such the small things. I did actually I just get a donation and someone is claiming that Nestle actually lobbied the American Congress to ban them because they didn't want the competition, which is like an interesting, uh, perhaps, modification of the of the lore behind the, the Kinder Egg van. I don't know if that's true, but that's what someone just said there to me. Oh, interesting. I uh, remember when I was uh, like in the fourth grade or something, we were trading turbos, uh, still gums, but you get like pictures with uh, cars or stuff like that. And you had, uh, you could make collections out of it. And if you get like doubles, you could trade them away with your uh, uh, friends. Where was this? Sorry. I don't know, to Romania. I don't know if you had it there. What, what were they like, called? Uh, no, sorry. Like you, you got it like uh, in a chocolate. Interesting. Oh, it's a gum. It's a gum, just like you said with the um, uh, with the joke or yeah, with, double, yeah, uh, yeah, double yeah. bubble or bazooka Joe, as people are correcting me in the states. Yeah, or bazooka Joe. Uh, we just got pictures of uh, cars and uh, other stuff, and you, we get to trade them. That's interesting. I, I was never really a collectimum kind of kid. Like I didn't care about like football stickers or, uh, you know, Pokemon cards or, or Magic the Gathering. I liked playing Magic the Gathering and stuff like that. But like the actual collection aspect to it, I was like, I sleep. Mm, I like the art. Well, I think that's my favorite part on the Magic the Gathering cards. I like looking at the art of every card and how it's always different. I cannot believe we actually still have Turbo Guns. It's like, it's like five dollars for a hundred pack. What? Wow. Okay. Oh well, it happens. Memories from uh, the childhood. Uh, some another memory. Since we're, if we're gonna go down this path, we're just having a conversation while we're waiting. I guess. I remember that you would get video games in cereal boxes in Canada for very specific ones. And I, that's how I got introduced to like Roller Coaster Tycoon. And I Ooh. played the absolute crap out of that game. And it came from a cereal box. I couldn't believe it. We need to bring back getting video games with cereal. Dude, it was yeah, so man. Oh. I remember I got so many fun like toys and games at a cereal. Now, I guess technically you could say, I mean, it's like a, <laughs> it's like a it's like a ploy to get kids to eat unhealthy food but we need we need to bring like because uh, man there was such a joy like when i was a kid and i got a game like roller coaster tycoon i would wake up before school like 6 a.m and i was in school at like half eight and i would play it for like two hours i would get my time in for that day you know what i mean it was that good that's funny i do that now <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, before I go to work, because we were, we were from home still. And so I'm like, oh, before I go to work, I'm going to go play, like, some games. I'm going to go play Skyrim or, like, other like a game, whatever. And then I go to work and I do my work. So that's, that's really funny that you did that as a kid. <laughs> and yeah, for now. sure. <laughs> did you have to get your gaming in sometimes? And, like, and the funny thing is, uh, I was almost better at games if I woke up super early. Because I showed my brother one of my parks that I had been playing before school one time. And he was like... Yeah, you already did well because, like, you woke up before school. Your park actually sucks. <laughs> he was so mad that, that my park learn, was awesome. Though. That makes you learn that waking up in the morning, you're the most productive, right? That's true. That's true. So I, you have, like, a major task. Like, you learn that as a kid. Like, oh, where can I How? Where can I make time for this? You make it in the morning. So, like, as you get older, you start to prioritize a little bit differently. But you kind of keep that same mentality of, oh, if I just wake up before work, I can get this done, right? Yeah, for sure. Although I, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. Like as I've gotten older, I'm like, noon. <laughs> That's the crack of dawn, baby. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I used to, I used to, but I am no longer in that stage of my life. Unfortunately, you have that opportunity for your job. I don't have that opportunity for my job. For sure. I, I actually, I, I, I found 
I'm, I'm kind of going back to an early morning lifestyle though because i found waking up early is is just so you have such a more productive day your day it feels like you have a full day you know um you get to see the sunshine all day if you wake up at noon i mean it's kind of cool and i can i can dig the lifestyle for a while but after a while i think i just feel so unproductive <laughs> I thousand percent agree. I've learned to really enjoy the morning. I also get confused when uh, I get one, in one of those days in which uh, I need to uh, wake. Well, I, I'm forced to wake up at some uh, somewhere afternoon or something like this. I get confused at what day it is. It's oh my kind, goodness! I, I lose a day. You know, I, I, don't <laughs> I don't think that's good for you. <laughs> Have you ever woken up, uh, Michael? Where because you change your sleep schedule all the time. You wake up and it's dark out. Like I can yeah. totally yeah. understand why you don't think like you don't know what day it is. You, you go to sleep, it's day, it's dark. You're like, oh my god, like where am I? I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, it's still a pleasure. You know, it's like a, a job for me anyway, so m might as well do it. But I, I still talk with my parents, and sometimes I refer to uh, um, a Tuesday instead of Monday, or. Uh, talking two days from now where it's actually one day from now and so on it's so weird that's how uh, it happens unfortunately you know what but yeah i do uh, need to thank you both and I, I need to thank you both though for staying up for civ give because that was like mighty cool you both since you're both from europe but uh we're hoping this year will be a little bit better we have a, we're gonna do it a little bit differently uh we have some new ideas but we're hoping to accommodate for EU folks. I, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really cool ideas here. Uh, I would just like to point in from the Potato McWhiskey chat analyst desk, I'm getting a new donation from Joshua Sanders, and he's saying that the Kinder Eggs were actually banned because the toys were contained inside the candy, and it violated uh, US law for food to contain non-food. Uh, so maybe oh. that sounds more believable. I'm not sure. You know, you never know. You never know. Maybe maybe I can farm another donation, <laughs> finding another <laughs> correct answer. Well, maybe the first <laughs> one led to the second one. You know, Congress is like, well, this isn't food. And then they did it that way. <clears throat> but thank you so much, Joshua. I, it was important to the stream conversation. That's why I brought it up. I, I tend not to bring up the, the donos, though. No, I like it. Thank, thank you for sharing. I didn't even know a few days ago that uh, you guys did ban, uh, as in Americans actually, did ban uh, uh, Kinder Eggs. I, I don't, in my mind, I that was, was like, a long time oh, ago, yeah, like like, like wow. 2006 or something. That's so weird. I mean, everybody else has them and you don't, like US doesn't like, yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I gotta say these these toys are uh, kind of cute, but they they don't feel like uh, they have any sense to them. I bought one of those uh, thirty packs, and I'm starting to go through them. They, they don't seem to be from the same um, universe. They're not the same. They've gotten a lot worse. So now it's just now, now I don't even think you build anything anymore. Just back when we were kids. Yeah, you you build this like little contraption. It, like it just does one thing. It, you just hit a button and it like throws its arms up. That's it. But like you know what? I built it and it was fun. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, these are just basically like one or two or three pieces. That's it. And maybe you put some um, stickers on them, and that's about it. Uh, I do remember also they were um, uh, themed. If I do use the correct. Uh, name here uh, as in uh, they always had for example mickey mouse theme and you you had all of the mickey mouse characters and uh, something from the mickey mouse universe and you know and then you have yeah, uh, mickey like collectible packs like january through yeah, like yeah. may it's like these things and then like may through december is like these things yeah 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 that that's what i was referring to this one it doesn't i don't even recognize where these are <laughs> you know Maybe the maybe the I don't watch cartoons as much as I was watching as when I was a kid, I guess. Can you stream to Discord, please, so I can see what's going on? Yes, uh, I just had to connect, reconnect, connect, reconnect for a few times. Sorry. Oh, I, I was okay. I was just in case you forgot. Oh, I see. Uh, Groovy is sharing to me there is a Kinder Egg. Oh, oh, a Nestle actually not. Nestle Wonderball. Do you guys know more about that? The Wonderball. No, that just sounds like looks... a. 
<laughs> I'm looking at it. It looks like the the cheapest knockoff. Oh, you got the same message? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that this is, is funny. copy paste Kinder. <laughs> you made this? I made this. But it's not a toy inside, it's more candy. Uh, yeah, it's it's very scuffed, it's not cool. Is it? Oh, this is a nice candy oh. treat. And you get like, I don't know, what, what is this? Uh, Lady of the Tramp, uh, Cinderella, stuff like that. Little Siren. Oh my, okay. Those. Anyway. Uh, they are asking in game if they should wait for the casters. Uh, uh, wait, we're in, right? Are you? Are, are we in? Oh. Oh, I thought. Oh my God! It's good that you told me because I thought they uh, are waiting for something else. Didn't wow! Uh, they just <laughs> it. He's waiting for me. I was in a long time. Anyway, uh, all right. Like... We recap what's happening because I uh, maybe I forgot. Uh, Hungary uh, is um, <laughs> about to get <gasps> obliterated. Whoop! I think that's the that's the correct uh, name of the action. Whooped. Yeah, they're about to get bopped, blopped, and scopped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Blop, blopped, and I can't even imagine what that would look like. Well, you know what? I don't think you should. I don't think you have the constitution to sustain yourself through that imaginative thought process. Um, <clears throat> so Persia has... Spain was dying, I think was the most salient point that we were discussing earlier. And they're one or two turns away from death. The consequences of this... What are the consequences? I mean, first of all, Cree will get direct borders with uh, Egypt. That's the first consequence. Uh, it, it will allow England to keep on uh, defending the culture victory. And if Cree really needs to, he's going to keep attacking the zone of control team, which I guess at this point, there needs to be a clash of titans here. Mm, for sure. Uh, is this a case, Michael, where we're just waiting one person is going to start dropping encampments and then the world is going to be lit on fire with war i think so and but i was also thinking maybe it would be a good thing for uh, even england to try to take out persia really quickly because persia lost so much science so much production so everything uh, uh warring spain but then i thought uh, then i saw that he's not prepared for a war at all he, he has a few walls here and there that's probably with uh, uh how to say um with the engineer uh, he does have two encampments and that's it and by the looks of it no major units so i think at this point it's gonna be Cree taking up uh, the bodyguard position over here to the north trying to take out the player from the game making uh, it a little bit harder for russia to get uh, tourists and then uh, we need to figure out how they will try to actually get a win condition because culture out of the game. If both of them are defending, neither of them will uh, will actually get it. And then are we going to see nukes? Are we nukes are we gonna see domination? Ooh, are we going to see CCs? Are they going to force them to CC? Are we going to see science from England? Let's see production. Uh, production right now is on 274. Not an amazing amount, but it is good. It is Cree, though, massive. has got some good production in science. Yeah. Yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, Moisos, I want to ask you here. You've got the bird's eye view of this game. You can see everything that's happening. Uh, I asked this question earlier. Who would you like to be right now? But I'm asking you, like, who would you like to be right now? Uh, and who do you not want to be? I, I think the answer is probably Spine, but like, you know, what's your take on the game? I still think I want to be England because England still has that like X factor to take out somebody to make a big difference for them. I don't think Russia has that. I think Russia basically is <clears throat> capped. Like they can build more cities, but I like I don't think Netherlands is the land is good. It's not as good as Hungary's. Hungary's land is absolutely incredible right in the middle of the map the juicy resources as well if you can take out hungary that is a massive gain for england 
And I don't think Russia has, again, that option to mass massively get ahead of England. So I say, I say I wanna, I'd want to be England still, or the Cree, one, either or. Uh, and how about you, Michael? Who, who would you like to be? Whose shoes do you want to wear today, right now? I want to keep my uh, oh, first option, Cree. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be bang. it's gonna be hard for him. So just thinking of the logistics of the next turns, it's just a nightmare to plan them out. And not only he needs to go to war and take out uh, and convert the cities of Hungary to his side, but then he needs to keep being uh, paying attention to his own cities to keep on seeming getting those uh, points for uh, culture, for science, for economy, and uh, mixing those uh, cities of uh, Hungary. In the, for the next turn. Okay, there we go. We got the first shots fired. Ooh, baby! Ooh. Yeah, that's not not survivable. <laughs> um, in this the long term, I think it. only nukes will stop this game, honestly. I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, we no, need it's good. Nukes. So a, a, a nuclear end to a to a very difficult game is, is what Michael is predicting here. How, how about you, Moisos? What How do you see the game ending? I would absolutely agree with you. I think the Cree has every intention of going to war right now. They have high science, high production, great military, good land too. Like after they're done with Hungary, they go over to Greece, right? And they take over Greece. And that is a big option for them. And once they're in Greece, then they, they can keep, I don't know, can they spy? Is stealing great works like a, is that a thing that people do in multiplayer, Michael? Well, of course, but I do have to point out it's going to be very hard to take Greece. And uh, as we've seen yesterday, uh, players do prefer to go the path of least resistance, uh, which is surprisingly, it's uh, Hungary and then it's Persia. Oh, okay. Okay. I like Once that. Go against uh, Egypt, though. Uh, Egypt does have a lot of science and a, a lot of culture, so it's going to be hard for him to go through. Yeah, on the path of least resistance thing, just to give you a little bit more perspective, some of the some of the players here were telling me that they like to have like two to three combat advantages over the opponent. So maybe like they'll have cores while their enemy doesn't, or they'll have a great general while their enemy doesn't, because they're looking for wars they can win easily. They want to they want to get them over and done with. Because every turn that you're building military, whoever you're whoever is beating you is still simming and and increasing their economy. Yeah. That's also, a really good point. Taking out Netherlands, by the way. Uh, uh, what am I noting? Taking it down. Yeah. It, oh, 100%. Sorry. It, it looks like we've reached the, the piranha stage, the cleanup stage. Uh, the, the strongest players are going to eat the weak. And then once the, the dust has settled, we're going to see which of the titans will fall. Uh, this is something uh, the the pro the sort of pro players the the experienced professional I, I don't know if pro is the right term but the 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 good players were telling me is that this is kind of the scenario you often find yourself in a couple of players will fall behind and get irrelevant and then towards the late game they'll get gobbled up and then like the real late game war begins. Yeah, that that's the nightmare over here for for Cree for England, uh, for uh, Russia and for uh, Egypt. It's gonna be a bit easier for Russia and Egypt to, to handle the logistics because they're going to probably fight next to their territory but for Cree, for England, everything needs to be <clears throat> created so they can reinforce the northern war yeah, yeah for sure, my, definitely my chat also is saying that uh, Persia is too big a detour and I, I kind of tend to agree especially for Cree, but what are they going to do? Are they just going to leave Cree over here? Oh, I mean Cree is fighting Norway anyway, right? <laughs> Persia, I think you mean, but uh, Persia, sorry, Persia, Persia. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I'm with you. I think maybe after Norway, I think their their play is actually go to Egypt, even if it's just like you're not going to take over Egypt, but you have to do something to Egypt to make Russia a little scared. Yeah. Uh, there's also you have to take into account the mind pressure that you have right now, the psychological pressure of the game. Uh, the players will try to figure out okay what can i do in 30 turns always like it's turn 59 what am i going to do in 30 turns it's turn 60 what am i going to do in 30 turns what what will happen and if the pressure count becomes too big and too many unknowns then they're probably going to be forced to say okay okay it's fine i, I concede i don't want to go through uh, 30 turns of uh, pain here now, which some players do want to take some players don't want to take 
Yeah, yeah for in this sure. scenario, being a tournament game, I totally think they're going to try to do their best. Uh, like we've seen yesterday, until the end of the line, you know, until the game breaks. I'm pretty sure if you could get those uh, uh, turns rolling, yesterday would have had another 20 turns or something out of that game. With nukes flying, uh, uh, tanks everywhere, modern armors and everything. Yeah, for sure. I, I think the late game of that game yesterday would have been probably some of the most intense save that you would see because the, every single city would have been cranking out units or nukes and the devastation that would have been wrought upon the map would have been a sight to see. And I'm kind of hoping that we get to see that sort of stuff tonight uh, with, with this game. I agree. Uh, we do have Kursars coming up from uh, Hungary, though. That's going to be nice. Uh, those are what? Replacement Rhine Infantry, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, I thought the Hussars are cavalry unit. They are cavalry oh, units. They are cavalry. Okay, they are cavalry. I don't know why... Okay, so that uh, it's because they have the hat like the um like the guard imperial. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I thought yes. Um, but so I think it's a foregone conclusion that Hungary's dead here. But but here's the question: How do you divvy up the land? Who takes Hungary cities and, and holds them? Is it England or is it Korea? Uh, what do you think? <clears throat> that is a good question. Um, I have an opinion on that. If I can go, go first. Yeah, sure. Go. I go. think you should give it to England. I think England needs... I think, like, I don't know how much more culture they can produce and tourism they can produce from the land they currently have to compete with Russia. If you give England this, they have the opportunity to catch up and then surpass Russia uh, with culture and possibly tourism as well. And create. I feel like it's kind of already established. They have all everything they need. They have great science to get to where they need to go. I think they can even expand south still on their own. England has nowhere else to go. This is this should be England's land and Creek can if they want more land, they can go south or, or southwest. Yeah, I think I think that's an interesting take here that England should take this land and try to outcompete Russia here. What do you think, Michael? What do you do you disagree? Do you agree? <clears throat> Uh, for a certain point, yeah, you, taking into account that the, most of the districts have already been built, it's kind of hard to build uh, theater squares. Um, on the other hand, sorry, you um, I'm pretty sure Cree. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Cree wants to get a highway of um, cities towards uh, Egypt. Him taking on the role of a bodyguard would really help him if he manages to get um, uh, units faster towards the north there. Uh, I guess Eger, I guess uh, Buda, uh, Kosek, and Nestercom could easily become uh, England cities, but the western cities, the ones close to Cree, should be Crees. Okay. I like that. If you can build uh, our railways uh, a thing, I think I remember watching... Yeah someone do it uh way back in the day yeah so if he builds a railway all the way to egypt yeah okay i can see that working and then probably we're gonna talk about megasi Wachi connecting through those encampments and going towards pest and then uh, going towards yerevan that's probably gonna be the the highway uh, he doesn't need to kill egypt entirely he just needs to get towards uh, russia closer if he takes yerevan flips it and then uh, goes towards solicoms egypt is not the um, win condition russia is yeah i i I, okay. I think i somewhat agree with michael's analysis here i think the goal is, is like what moisos was saying earlier i think you want england to just buy time you need to buy time on that culture victory so that the kree can work their magic with their insane economy and absolutely just burst out up into the north north <clears throat> and obliterate uh, uh, uh egypt yeah but, uh, one of my uh, viewers is telling me that it's uh, the fastest way towards Russia is through the mountains. I agree. It's just like at the moment there's like no tunable, easy spot over here. I guess on the on the truffle next to the truffle tile you could get uh, some tanks out. Well, I was thinking uh, if you have an engineer, which you can get now, you could build like because the mountains basically become a railroad. Then you put one yeah. down by the campus and then one up by the coal, and your units basically jump out in between. Egypt and Russia's territory. I love that mechanic so much. I think it's so cool. 
He could even kill a cat. I, I, I don't know how this city survived for so long, honestly. I, I would have thought it would uh, die. Oh, it's MC. Oh, that's why. Okay. So if they declare war on a cat, or uh, they might uh, antagonize the Khakis and MCS crack, Persia and um, uh, Greece. And I don't think Kree wants a war with Greece. Uh, also, Russia at the moment doesn't have an army at all. He's a 466 uh, military, has a few heavy chariot pre-builds, and that's it. I, mean, I, I think as soon as Kree puts pressure on Egypt, that's when Russia is going to be very worried. Uh, by the way, the Cossack cores are 90 strength on the attack. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's oh my god. Army. Yeah. Do they have the gold? They should have the gold. Let's see. Yield stab. Uh check on 250 gold. Golden on 128. That that those cities on the water help them so much to stabilize their economy. Is there is this the trading between England and Cree that you're talking about? Uh that one and the north uh, between uh, Russia and uh, Egypt, both of oh, them have uh, coastal cities. Yeah, uh, it really just goes to show you how important it is, like on this kind of map, to if you can get near enough to your neighbor or your ally to trade with them. It, it just makes such a huge economy difference. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and we got Artis. I don't tend to agree with uh, my uh, my chat here. Going through the mountains seems like to be the ideal um, uh, solution, but it looks like they do want the points in between as well, like taking the cities of uh, Hungary. Is this a mistake, though? Was this a mistake to go through Hungary instead of directly going against uh, Russia? Well, see, here's the thing. I, I think it's, 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 it's a matter of economy, right? You take out Hungary, you get a much bigger economy, but you basically give away the element of surprise. Because like if you build that um, that tunnel through the mountains, you can just roll in with tanks and Russia has no time to prepare. But if you roll through Hungary, they see you coming for 10, maybe 15 turns and they have plenty of time to prepare. And Egypt is preparing. We've got military academies coming out. Yeah. And cuirassiers. And I see also Russia is preparing, getting those heavy chariot armies there. Uh, he did manage to get ballistics, so the, can turn at any point uh, into cuirassier armies. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, go ahead. On the west side, we do have uh, Greece over here tearing apart um, the cities of uh, Netherlands. He got Eindhoven, and we're probably going to see Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Utrecht also uh, taken out slowly. Uh, he, he didn't even commit a big amount of units like a big number of units it's just one bombard one field cannon one cuirassier core and one musket that's it so are we gonna see greece then go after russia after they're done with the netherlands that is a good question he does have the positioning in Fokia, which that name does ring some bells in my mind um i actually have a, a take here because if you look at what greece is doing i think greece knows that team russia and team england are going to go to war and he's putting settlers all over the map just trying to get as many cities as possible and try to be forgotten by the other players so that he can maybe climb up to being in the first or second slot on the on the team rankings that is a good point they do have 300 less points than their uh, opponents here, uh, the next team up. And the uh, Mamaleto with Alcotolic, by the way, uh, are uh, keeping up the lead over here with uh, 13,000 points, uh, 1,300 points, while uh, Golden is on, uh, with the Chuck, are on uh, 1,191. Uh, getting more cities is definitely going to help uh, Greece out. Also, taking down uh, a whole empire is going to help him out, but it might also push him to... Uh, um, or say um, go to war with uh, Norway. He's already at war with Norway on the coast. Or is he going to be forced to build a fleet here to defend himself? Oh, that's a good question. Wow, cause... that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, because it looks like Norway is the dominant sea power in this game. Uh, and, and any city on the coast is 
liable to be taken over by this huge Norwegian navy. And if you already have a navy, you're going to be looking for ways to uh, to get value out of it. Yeah. So do you leave those coastal cities alone? Like, okay, I'm done with... I'm, oh, no, he's not. But would you say, I'm done with Netherlands right now? They're going to get lost anyway to Norway. But I'm So I'm going to focus my energy somewhere else instead of actually attacking the Dutch? I would assume so. I would assume he's going to want to keep away from the coast because I'm pretty sure he knows that uh, those cities of Spain got taken by uh, Norway and uh, Norway didn't have a problem f training punches with his uh, friend here. Actually, his brother. They are brothers. MCS Crack with Kekis. Really? That's that's funny. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, the, the two, sorry, Pericles and Persia are brothers? Yes. Oh, I thought you were saying Norway and, and Persia were brothers, that he was like fighting his brother. Sorry, I misunderstood what uh, you were no, saying there. No. I mean, it's, they're allies. It's fine. It's a friendly scuffle. Yeah, yeah, say. yeah, for sure. Uh, one question here uh, I have been wondering for the last few turns is what happened to the Dutch army? Uh, is it. They didn't, I don't think they ever had one. They had a navy, but I don't think they had a land army. Is this just a case of where the Dutch were so far behind that they couldn't really mount a defense of themselves? I yeah, think it was Spain like... was far behind and they were trying to help Spain. So they focused their energy. They took like they went all the way left and took the island on Zanzibar, right? Built a huge navy. And then when the navy came from Norway, they took out the Dutch's navy and they just didn't focus anything on land army. And then the little land army that they had was out teched by Greece and Greece was easily taking it over. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe they were just, <clears throat> just in a bit of a struggle there. Um, I mean, it looks like they're trying to get builders out to maybe chop out a unit or something. Or I, I'm not sure what they're up to. Uh, but I mean, Greece is just piling in more and more units, and more and more Hungarian cities are falling. And I, I, I can't help but feel like the next phase of the game is bearing down upon us with some sense of inevitability. Yeah, I am also thinking, oh man, Norway has such a big problem with the blob here. <laughs> I, I was uh, thinking of what you said yesterday with uh, Dramatic Ages and your your movies with the blob. <laughs> this is exactly what's uh, happening here in uh, Norwegian land. He's losing all of these every few turns and <laughs> he needs to take them oh, back. Oh no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... Such a chaotic it's so frustrating too because if you invest like three turns into a district and then the city flips independent all of that production is just lost and it's very easy for a city to to just get caught in in a doom cycle uh, of never being able to uh actually produce anything can and, he yeah. not move his governors or does he not want to move his governors for loyalty I don't think he wants to, but my, my surprise is he didn't keep on settling cities. He could have gotten connection cities to get more loyalty pressure on uh, on these uh, southern cities. Especially on the, like I was saying, two over here, another one over here. That's three more cities that could uh, um, interact with the city of Seville. Definitely. ABS always be settling. Yes, exactly. I learned that from Peppermint Butler. He settles so many cities. Yeah, uh, it, yep. it's, it's one of those things where uh, if people get away with settling cities, it's really hard to punish it. But you can kind of punish them while they're building the settlers. Finally, Persia sure. moved that army from the east and now he feels safe to settle the west side. And he's going to get Kurasia Kors to defend those. And I see him uh, starting to build quite a few settlers here. Two yeah. already out with another two. Yeah, you d you definitely called that perfectly, Michael. Uh, he really just didn't feel safe potentially antagonizing England or Hungary. But now that he sees Hungary going the way of the dodo, and he might accurately be predicting that England and, and, and the Cree will be too preoccupied with Egypt uh, to stop him from settling these cities and, and catching back up into the game. Yeah. Looks like uh, Hungary is falling quite fast now that England did manage to get tank armies. These cities will fall extremely quickly. Yeah, that got swallowed up, man. <clears throat> yeah, especially without, without walls, it's very hard to like keep those from 
them from uh from happening <clears throat> oh man that that tank just survived two attacks and died to the third one so is england gonna take the capital city I would see my guess is the Cree is going to take the the western half of the um, empire and then England is going to take the eastern half uh, because that's kind of how their empires position. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay. Bingo. And I think what's important okay. about this is that gives each player a reinforcing route directly into Egypt for them to attack. Oh, rogue I'm bands. I'm silently rogue bands. agreeing with you. Sorry. We have rogue bands. Three of them on the way to the cities of Egypt. And, and, and here's the thing about rogue bands. They're a bit yes. like a doomsday clock, aren't they, Michael? Because once the rock bands are out, that is kind of like him really declaring that I want the game to end now. Is that actually? Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically. Oh, five rogue bands, actually. I keep on seeing cities, and he bought so many of them. Um, yes, it's he's going to try to get them as, uh, to get the win as fast as possible, to get the tourism. Um, the only thing is, this is casino. This is not going to be consistent tourism being generated by these rogue bands. You might lose, you might win, you might... Um, invest way too much when you should have uh, invested into your defensive uh, capabilities it's very hard to know when you're going into this stage with um, a face civilization if you're going to win this or not yeah definitely uh, the rock bands it is just like pulling the the lever on a slot machine here sometimes you know sometimes you get twenty thousand culture or, or, or tourism out of them sometimes they die and give you 200 uh, it really yeah. is just going to come down what is the outcome on these rock bands is there anything is there anything that England and um Cree can do to stop these rock bands? Step on them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill step cities. on me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, kill Egypt. That's that's the target right now. They wanna that's why they're getting those um, uh, tank armies to bear. Uh, and Egypt's the... army is not that impressive either. So Yeah, can, can Egypt like... defend this? No. I mean at this at this point he's trying he's trying to get cuirassia course he's trying to get as fast as possible to um, tank uh, technology to combustion but it's i don't know if it's gonna be enough we're gonna need to see how many units are gonna come against them because at this point kree is uh, having the technology advantage actually looking at uh, egypt here he's on wait is he going top three why is he going buttress Bro. yeah that's confusing uh, I was just about to ask you about that. Why would they be going buttress? Um, I don't know. Because these tank armies, man, they... Maybe pre-building? Doesn't want to get it yet? Maybe. But is he, I mean, that would assume that you would assume that he's like one turn away from combustion. I guess he does have steel walls, so it does make sense in a, in a way. <laughs> I mean, this can't be some sort of Hail Mary aircraft play. I, that would be crazy because that's on the top half of the tree, but he, that's he would a be good so point. far away from it. He's like four or five or more technologies from getting. I don't think that's what could be happening here. Could it? No, I, I think you're right. I think uh, for pre-builds, because uh, looking at uh, his um, resources, he does have oil, 36 oil. So uh, I think he already has oil, he already has steel, it's just uh, one or two turns away from getting um, uh, tanks, combustion. So he just wants to pre-build a bit. That's... Yeah, if all these become tanks, then, that, then that's a very impressive army. Yeah. I, I, I think he has a bit of a problem though. It, Russia is going to have to help him defend here and Russia has gone all in on faith. I don't think Egypt is going to hold forever against two players. I think just hold as long as you can. I think that's the play. Just limit the damage and let Russia do its thing. Yeah, you might be right there. I, th I think that might be their hope is, is they're buying time. And buying time, this is starting to look better and better for Greece, who is just happily simming away, uh, slowly climbing up the score ranking here to, to try to close the gap between these two juggernauts that are duking it out in the center of the map. <clears throat> And so then if you're... 
getting more cities out, getting more points. They they want us. They want to try to go for the second place. I don't think they want to go for the first, but at least the second place. Yeah. So then, if, if, I think if you're Cree, you're producing units. I noticed he was still producing units on the western half of his empire. Do you say that those units are? You cannot reinforce the north because it's too far. So I'm going to build this army to then go to Greece to fight off of Greece being happy in like Simi. Uh, two front wars, man. They're just. I know. I I think it I think it would be too difficult to fight a two front war. I think he's. <clears throat> okay. That would that would be my take. I don't know what you think, Michael. Um. Yeah, I mean, we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, we'll never know. In fact, Michael has actually been sucked into the void. Uh, so, uh, in fact, I am Michael. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think a two front war would be too difficult to, to really maintain here. Um, like, you know yourself, anytime you're being attacked from two directions, it's difficult to manage. I think what the Kree is trying to do here is maybe look for more upgrades and, and, and just push with what he's got and see if he can give Egypt a black eye. I just I mean, wonder if like Greece is so confident in their technology that like I can f I or I uh, I can fight a two front war because what whatever you do to my units it's not going to matter because I will bulldoze your units. Yeah, just I'm to really play devil's advocate. Succeed. Really curious. Uh, I I see England is starting to hard build his units and like getting uh, tank armies, getting artilleries. And now he's putting down a lot more of these uh, encampments and getting the buildings in them. It, it just feels like he stopped defending the culture victory and started going to war. Um, this might be the correct move, though, because those rock pants will push the culture victory through. Like looking at the two, four, six, eight rock pants that are coming from Russia's uh, mainland into Egypt, it, it feels like they will uh, have quite a bit of an impact. Um, uh, Oh, actually, one got already. Wait, I think what? you're right. I think that was a, that was a very good prediction. I'm um. Well, the only concern I have is does he have enough production though to keep this up? Um, his Mamaleto is on three hundred sixty two, while uh, Paul Maker is on four hundred seventy one. He's the second highest in the game, so like, he's got he's where he needs to be to do it. Yeah. It, it, it could be that even being second highest, like depending on how efficiently that Egypt defends, he, he might not be able to sustain it. You know, it's a, it's a long way away from his reinforcement lines and there's a lot of open land that's been unsettled. I know, I think it, it could go really either way. It's, it's really just down to how well Egypt defends here. Actually, quite curious who is uh, Alcotolic because I, I didn't see them I didn't see him that much in the uh, in the games and uh, you know this is one of those moments in which we get to discover new players uh, being focused so much on the four v four scene uh, it, it's hard to know all of the other players uh, but I see him uh, playing quite well over here. That is an interesting point because uh, I've had a day now to see Mamalet and Alcatolis play. Oh, I think that is the Netherlands fully defeated uh their city was yoinked um yeah i've had i've had a day i've watched mamalet and, and Al alco tallis play two games now yeah and it, it is fun like you're saying to discover new players um three two one go sorry i was getting distracted by what the players are doing pausing the game and stuff god i lost my train of thought never mind <laughs> i was just uh, I you basically the two players play uh, multiple games You've kind of learned the, uh, how their play styles are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think I think we saw um, Alco Tullis on Khmer yesterday, and he went for a very, very hardcore sort of faith early game, and he went for a completely different style of game today. And it was the same for Mamalette, who went for a very, very reserved kind of five city uh, uh, Pericles play, and it, it is a breath of fresh air to see him kind of come out here and, and do this huge England England game where he went for Huey he went for a massive culture defense and now both players are springing into action in unison into war against Egypt which has just been like I don't know it's, just, it's really really fun to see players play at this level and, and, and see players do different strategies as well 
and succeeding at doing them, uh, at applying them. This is uh, props to them for uh, making making them work, uh, especially if uh, it's a new strategy coming out. Uh, for example, trying to get um, those achievements uh, worked with uh, their own uh, wants and needs in the game. It's uh, quite uh, nice to see. Yeah, I, so I thought that. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, who do you th who would you take as like the MVP of this game if you had to pick one? Ooh. Well, if if I, I was picking someone, game. both of you, yeah. Uh, what did you say, Michael? Go ahead there. Spain, man. He 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 railed two players or got like three players with him. Yeah, he basically defined the eastern half of this continent and irrelevant like two or three players. I agree. I, I feel like Spain might take it for me. Um, but I, I gotta be honest. I, I love a culture victory. I love a culture play, and I really like playing Russia. It's been really fun to watch this Russian player play such a crisp and clean early game Russia. I know it's like the kind of strategy everyone does with Russia, but it really does just please me to see him put so much cultural pressure, so much tourism pressure on these other saves that forces them to play his game. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Russia here was a very good, uh, important player in the game. Or deciding player in the game, I should say. Uh, that's what happens with um, Russia most of the time in the games, actually. Uh, not saying that... Um, uh, because it is... Um, victory condition civilization that's what i mean just like sweden really likes to go for the culture and the diplo uh, and china as well is like a very heavy cultural sieve exactly you, you know from the beginning you're gonna need to have to fight that uh, culture somehow yeah you need like at least one person on your team defending the culture victory to give time for your other players to make something happen on the map yeah yeah, so on that note, I would like to give it to actually England, which maybe you all expected because I've been all over them uh, today. But they've shown how versatile they are. They defended or they they are defending, the ones actively defending against Russia winning right now. They had to adapt their plan to now have good science and a good military to join Cree and take out uh, Egypt. So if they can pull this off, the versatility that you, we saw with England today, I think would warrant them my mvp status i think it's really cool that we can all look at the same game and come away with a different impression of who yeah. who impressed them which i think really goes back to just how much of actually playing the game is down to personal preference and the style of play you like and what's happening in the game and stuff uh, it's really really fun to hear you guys not necessarily disagree but come to different conclusions yeah i don't disagree with you it's just like you prefer that play style and i respect it and I, I have a different preference for play style yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. I mean, England has played an incredible game today. Honestly, I, it's very hard for me to pick an MVP. I just found it funny to say uh, Spain. Was, uh, <laughs> I, you know. I think those, they Spain is a good do answer. Well. They did very well. Uh, I, I just noticed, by the way, the Hungry Technologies rock band did manage to get 1,500 tourism uh, from that uh, play, from that last play. And we're we do have uh, Golden growing uh, higher and higher in uh, tourists here. Oh, yeah. He's at 29 out of 140. Now, England is pumping out the culture. Uh, you've, you, you're the most experienced person here watching these games, uh, Michael. Do you think Russia can pull this off? Yes. I think Russia can actually pull this off. Uh, amazingly, but Russia can pull this off. If nobody is uh, on... Egypt's territory, or maybe cut him off um, between Solicams and Memphis. Uh, I think he can pull this off. He just needs to keep on uh, playing those rock bands, buying them, and he has a, enough faith to keep on buying them. Four hundred twenty-three faith a turn. My and God, I do see four hundred twenty-three uh, faith a turn. That's an and insane he's doing amount holy of faith. site prayers in like almost all of his cities. Yeah, this is all in right now from him. He knows this is all in, so he's gonna put as much as much uh, pressure on that uh, tourism as possible. Yeah, if Egypt can hold this off, uh, can defend this, I would I would actually change my MVP to, to Egypt. So it's like basically whoever does 
their job a little bit better if england can be that x factor for that team and if egypt can be this x factor for their team just yeah, admiring russia right now and then these rock bands every time the turn rolls over i'm like obsessively checking like the tourist count to see ooh, like where is it at now how close is he you know it's it's, it's kind of exciting for the game to come down to this this, this wire although it, it kind of looks like Cree has been stopped in their tracks um what's yeah. going on there and not enough uh, units to begin with there weren't enough to take down hungary but they weren't enough to push into egypt so... is that just overconfidence or a lack of commitment I think it was just time. Uh, he needed to move then. He went with uh, what he could, and that's that's it. I, I don't think he could have done uh, that much better at this point. He still needed the science, he still needed the culture and everything else set up for, his, uh, for this era. What he could do is uh, try to use his gold to... Oh my God, 3,000. Sorry, I just got distracted. 3,000 tourists from one single rock band. Oh my this god. This is exciting, man. This is this yeah. is crazy. So just to just to put things in perspective, I think it's every 2000 tur tourism is worth a tourist in here. Uh so every single time he earns over 2000 tourism, that's a that's a tourist in the bank nudging him towards victory. My uh, stream chap is uh, contradicting me, saying that it's a lack of commitment like you said. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't want to say lack of commitment honestly because uh, he did try but it's uh i, I, mean, I don't was, have to agree that he needed a lot more units he, he was pushing with a handful of units and then doing um commercial hub investments on the back line oh do you know what he's looking for he's trying to pick up mary catherine goddard the plus one diplomatic visibility uh great merchant here he's hoping for a war uh, later on with a diplomatic visibility advantage I, I, is that accurate do you think i'm right there yeah, yeah, yeah. I see he's doing three commercial hub investments finishing, four commercial hub investments finishing four, next turn. 100% he's uh, trying to get that great merchant. Is it going to help him instead of building tank armies? I'm not so sure. Uh, the yeah. time is ticking right now. It's ticking in uh, Russia's favor, honestly. Yeah, definitely. He, he's picking up two to three tourists per turn and that might accelerate as these rock bands get promotions. They might start earning more and more. Um, uh, sorry, what was it? They might start earning more and more uh, blah, 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 tourism. <laughs> God. Yes. Uh, it's it's fine. We're, uh, we're getting to that X number of uh, hours we've been streaming. <laughs> Our brain, uh, you know, just at some point yeah, true. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up for you guys since I'm not streaming. <laughs> uh, what, what are you looking up? Sorry. Uh, like tourist calculations. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember. I can't remember. I know the numbers have been changed in the Civilization game. I don't know if BBG has changed those numbers. So this is just kind of a lack of 4,000 tourism. Did you see that, Michael? <laughs> yes, I'm watching that like a hawk. Jesus Christ. 1,000, 4,000, 1,000. Okay. Yeah, he's getting it. He's getting that. Oh my god. I mean, I'm actually curious how much is he making per turn passively. He's on only 408 passively. Yeah, 408 passively is a really good number, but I, I don't know if that, with this many dead players, is that enough to win? I think he needs these rock no. bands. He, it's to win passively, he would need uh, 1500, 2000. At this point, because of uh, Mamaletos um, and uh, yeah, culture, like three hundred forty nine culture. Yeah, that it, culture uh, right now is is the bulwark against Russian uh, cultural dominance. Yeah, he pushed the necessary tourists to one hundred forty seven. God, that is. I mean, if you're Russia here and you're seeing that necessary tourist number climb and climb, turn after turn. It, does doubt start to set into your mind? Uh, 
Yeah, for sure. But Rockman's, that's probably the reason he's trying to get uh, so many holy side spreads. That's uh, his response to those uh, doubts. He wants to get as many faith points as possible so he can uh, have it available for the Rockman's. So in turn, he can get the tourism necessary. Yeah, he's he's just rolling that dice over and over and over and hoping for natural 20s five times in a row. Is that what's happening here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually curious if uh, Greece over here will uh, try to uh, attack him like we were talking about earlier, but it doesn't look like he's uh, doing that. He's, no, it's... Uh, he's just happy seeming there. It, it kind of looks like Greece is, is also trying to intercept the culture victory. He seems to be running a couple of industrial zone logistics. Now, I can't tell if that's for power or if that's so that he can steal Sarah Breedlove, which is the great... Uh, oh, sorry, that's a great merchant... Uh, thanks. Sorry, I mixed up. Sarah, oh, uh, somebody actually took the plus one diplomatic visibility. Wait. Oh, Cree got it. Cree yeah, got um, the Kree. plus one diplomatic Kree. visibility. Yeah. yeah, they got it. And then uh, I see Admirals got uh, picked up and uh, England got all of them, like six like of them. Turn like five. Yeah, like five in a turn. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what happens when your points six. get saved up. <laughs> Holy smokes, man. <laughs> I mean, That's I, hilarious. <laughs> Talk about a guaranteed golden age. <laughs> 157 points out of 152 on England with two turns left on this era. I I'm not seeing anyone miss it except for Egypt here. Or am I misreading the era score screen? Oh, hey, that's... Uh... Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Yeah, it's he's 10 points away. Doesn't look like he's going to get it. More tourism coming from those uh, rock bands. So tourists, I've, I put it bo in both your chats. Foreign tourists equals the lifetime tourism output to that civilization divided by the number of civilizations in the game times 200. Yeah, that, that number of civilizations in the game, I think, is the, the number at the start of the game. So it's... Uh... Yes. So it would be about 2,000 tourism per, per thing in here. <clears throat> it's with us, so it's 12. Oh, I, I thought spectators weren't counted. But so, I... Yeah, I guess they do, technically. So it's 2,400? 2,400? So by 2,400. So that every 2,400 tourists, they get one... Yeah, de definitely. I, I, I think the, 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 uh, oh my God, I'm losing my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> it's getting to that time I of the day that. where you've yeah, been sitting oh. here for five hours and you've, you've talked a little bit of nonsense the whole day and <clears throat> it's hard to keep talking nonsense. Oh, we might have uh, England flip a city. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, and oh, he's playing Eleanor, so that's an instant flip too. Yeah, but the Love next era will it. come in. Let's let's see. Uh, era score, uh, Persia is gonna be. Oh, he's in a golden age right now, and he's going dark. Oh no, Mama Leto oh, still yes. gonna be in the golden. That city is gonna Eleanor, flip faster. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons you don't want to get the cities next to England. Absolutely. It's one of those terrifying things is like, because you, if you ever drop the ball when you're near England and you go into a dark age, you could just start losing cities. And it's so frustrating. It's so difficult to deal with. Especially if they uh, immediately have uh, steel walls. <laughs> I once was in one of those games with I was with Cree in between everybody with uh, England Eleanor to my uh, England France actually to my left. Oh my god, man! I ha I had three dark ages in in a row. I was losing oh. cities everywhere. So so weird as a game, frustrating. I I think that's the name I would use. Uh, thinking of the number that you called there, it feels like he should have had a bit more tourists uh, from what I've seen. I'm, a bit concerned that he doesn't have enough passive tourism to push this through. Uh, he is going to get environmentalism, though. So that number is going to go up 50%. Uh, well, how's, how is uh, Egypt's culture? Because if Egypt's domestic tourism is not that good, then it's harder for him to actually steal a tourist from him. Is it? I I, well, I, I don't think that's how that works. I, I could be wrong, though. Uh... 
I think you steal it from everybody. It's not only you. know it's because the way that it's worded, it it really seems like to that civilization. So when you look at like the top tourism, usually on the top of the screen, that's your output to all civilizations. But then as you start to use rock bands, you're you're really directing it to one civilization after that. Mm, yeah, that is well, true. I think you're trusting the Phyrexis explanations a bit too much. Okay, that's fair. Because I am taking it literally as I'm reading it, so... <laughs> it's uh, it's not always what it seems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rock bands um, apply their pressure to a single player. I, I mean, technically, we could theoretically get into a situation where Chuck has zero tourists, so Russia can't steal anymore. I don't think I've ever seen that situation before, though. Yeah, me neither. That's why I'm... We gotta here. test that. We gotta have, like, a Civ with one... Like a Dido, like a, a can't loyalty flip one city... And just keep stealing tourists from it. See what happens. That's actually that would be an interesting test case. Oh, Sarge! Sarge! <laughs> so we do have a hundred internals for Chuck. Oh, oh yeah, there's there's still a lot, but he, he you need he needs a hundred right now, right? He's at fifty out of one hundred fifty, roughly. If I round stuff, yeah, forty nine yeah. out of one hundred fifty nine. Yeah, but I mean. That number doesn't go down when you uh, steal anyway. You you just have like you can steal a maximum of a hundred for each rock band, or is it a maximum of a hundred in the total bucket? Sorry, what was your? Uh, when you when you take a tourist from someone, it lowers their domestic tourist. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, you like legitimately steal their tourist. I'm not sure what our confusion is here. But the other considerations are that um, Mamalet is pretty close here to these late game governments. Like, especially, like, now it's so rare that this is relevant, but digital democracy plus two culture per specialty district, that could aid in the defense. And there are some cards deep into the future era that also help defend against a, a, a culture victory. Is it likely we're going to see these things become relevant in this game? I find it unlikely that uh, we're actually going to get there. The defender is going to get there fast enough. And I'm looking at how fast this uh, tourism is generated by the rock bands. It's, uh, uh, for example, if you're talking about um, uh, denying borders, that's not going to happen because he's just going to use Egypt to play them in uh, over and over again until he's going to get a win. Yeah, I, I think it's more that the, he gets the extra culture from. Uh, uh, what's that government? A, a digital democracy gives you extra culture. And then I think there's a card that lowers enemy tourism pressure against you. Is there really? I don't sure. remember that. I'm not sure if it will actually matter that much with uh, Russia. Once he's going to get uh, environmentalism, he's going to play them a bit harder. Uh, he's going to better, I mean. And uh, computers is also going to allow him to push this through much faster. Are we going to see national oh, parks now that you mentioned that you mentioned <laughs> conservation? I, mean, I think I'm... he already has national parks. I saw one oh, in. He does? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, he has one. Uh, I guess ski resorts are missing, but he only has like one, two. Because you can boost three, the tourism from four. those, and then those affect every empire. So you, those are the national parks are incredibly good as well. That's that's oh, honestly sure. something that surprised me a little bit. Is is how few national parks he has as Russia. And I mean, it's not like he ha doesn't have the tiles. There's plenty of room here uh, for un unimproved tiles to become national parks. Yes, there could be a lot of national parks. I agree. Unfortunately, I don't think he will invest into those because you need the builders to get the forest. You need the, Then you need to invest faith into getting those... Um, whatever they're called um naturalist but, uh, naturalist 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 yeah is this uh, just a case of he doesn't think it's worth it or is this like his style to go for the the casino play with the rock bands in this particular case in which he's basically rushing it i don't think he's thinking it's worth it interesting interesting for example, Canada, 100% most of the time, it's worth to go for both national parks at the same time as... Uh, but you do get them with your mounties, so you basically get defensive units at the same time as uh, national parks. Yeah, that's true. They have the advantage of... Um, 
using production and faith to to get both. Uh, what are we voting here? Uh, writer. So let's go. Yeah, let's go engineer. Let's go engineer. Uh, you go, A maybe. Yeah, I go A engineer and, and let's go recon. Recon, perfect. By the looks of his projects here, it's a hundred percent only holy side, holy side projects. He's getting a few more armories and uh, one more encampment, which honestly I'm not sure if it's going to help him or not in this scenario, because uh, Egypt is uh, the one uh, defending, and unless Greece is going to enter the war, which again it's not, it doesn't look like it's going to happen, um, he's not going to be pressured from uh, the south. Well, it depends on if he's allowed feed oil to Egypt. Maybe maybe he's building those to get a little bit of extra strategic resources to feed his ally. Um, could be. Definitely could be. Now, I do see Chuck on full 60 oil. Golden is on the 35. And so many of these rock bands actually level 2, level 3. Yeah, I think rock bands start getting really scary once they get up in... in, um, in uh, in promotions because i don't know if you guys know this the the probability that a rock band will succeed changes like massively based on the level they are uh, i think it's like a one percent chance for a level one rock band to like get the perfect performance but that goes up to like a 10 percent chance i think when you're like level three i will look it up i do remember seeing that so it's been a while since i did all the rock band math but man if he can get like these highly leveled rock bands, like he has a level three rock band over here with 500 album sales. Now, for people who don't know, album sales is really, really straightforward. Just like put a decimal point uh, uh, at the at the second place here. And that's how many ex how many times extra tourism this guy makes. So he's making five times more tourism from this rock band than he would normally. That's how it works. I didn't, never knew how albums work. Yeah, it's just a simple percentage multiplier. It just adds an extra percentage to it. Or in fact, it's an extra 500% is basically how album sales works. Whoa. Yeah, it's crazy. This rock band is the one to watch whenever it does a, 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 a concert. Because if he nails one of those uh, perfect 10% chance rock band things, we could see literally somewhere in the region of like twenty to 40,000 tourism in a single turn from it. You mean the nuclear carrots are going to rule the world? I, I really do. I think the nuclear carrots are going to rule the world. Oh, 70, 7,500. Wow. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, level 5,000 from that one. Oh, my goodness. These aren't even high rolls. These are mid rolls. Yeah. You'll know when you see a high roll. <laughs> yeah. We do have uh, more rock bands uh, getting on the way here. And uh, looking at the score screen in here, Golden does have uh, a bit more faith. I think uh, around that number of faith to buy another one, 846 faith. Uh, each time you do buy a rock band, it does increase its price with like 50, if I'm not mistaken. So I think he already got to almost a thousand. Yeah, his rock band price must be very expensive because he has just built so many of them and so many rock bands have crashed and burned. Their albums selling nothing. Uh, basically footnotes in musical history here. Of yeah. these of these rock bands that are available here, guys, I want to know which one is a band that you would most likely listen to. Like the Nuclear Carrots, the Hungry Technologies, the, the Lonely Tigers, the Giant Spades. Like if you were in, you know, if you were like, you know, 15 years old and you were in a music shop as a teenager and, and you saw these names, which album would you pick up? Man, Hungry Nuclear Hippos. Uh, what, what did you say? Sorry. <laughs> Nuclear Hippos. <laughs> Nuclear Hippos. I think they might take the biscuit there. I would definitely, definitely pick those up. But I would give um, um, Hungry Technologies a look as well. Where is the Hungry Technologies? Oh, the one they could uh, swing it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I do um, see uh, Mawaleto is uh, starting to get his infrastructure uh, up there uh, with uh, the rare roads right next to the border. Uh, he did connect his uh, southern city with the ones to the north. And now it's just a matter of time until he's going to push Egypt here. Uh, do they have what they need? My, my stream chat is screaming at me, nuclear, nuclear, bombs, nuclear, just nuke the, the rock bands, you know? But I don't see nukes any, anywhere. I see... Wait, well, let me see. 
Displaceable parts, replaceable parts. Okay, so they're going there. Slowly, they're going there. Uh, actually, are they? They're going chemistry. Why are they? No, they're not going there. Ah, oh, man. Where's combined arms? Where is nuclear fission? I don't know. Uh, this game has been suspiciously lacking any sort of nuclear technology outside of band names. <laughs> yeah. Just to let you guys uh, know, I may need to leave in a few minutes. My, I, well, you know what? I'd rather not talk about the reason. But I'll, I'll message you privately. But yeah, totally. uh, just letting you know. Yeah, no, that's totally okay. fine. If you have to go, you have to go. That's uh, real life uh, takes precedent, man. That moment when you really have to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> he said he didn't want to make it public god damn it michael no i'm i'm, I'm just kidding <laughs> i'm kidding too I, I don't know what the reason is uh, um yeah these you were you were talking about mamaletto uh is that how you say his name yeah mamaletto yes. he's got his infrastructure up ready to go to war yes I, I, is this too slow is he ready is, should he go now should he have gone already I mean, I think he would, uh, he should have gone, but he's uh, trying to do both things, trying to defend and uh, do that at the same time, uh, go to war. Uh, I, I do also want to point out going for um, uh, rocketry would be a thing here to defend the culture victory, uh, chemistry and rocketry. Uh, getting those projects for the space victory gets you so many tourists. That is so, true. Uh, the, the moon landing gives you 10 times your science and culture, which is a massive explosion in tourism defense. Yeah, he's also going to get Sydney Opera House over here. Sydney Opera House, yeah. Oh, uh, he's going to get uh, quite a bit more culture and a lot of uh, musician points per turn from it, not to mention those uh, three works of uh, music slots. Yeah, this definitely. is so cool to see like high level culture defense. You don't see it very often. Yeah. No, Wait, you don't. Did the level three die? <gasps> level three died. Yeah, I think the level three died, and so did the other level two. Yeah. But look, uh, level two did get go through. So you know that uh, fear mongering with uh, oh, if one of them dies, all of them will die that time. Looks like it doesn't hold up. Yeah, I don't one know. One did I mean, I feel like three rock bands died this turn. I feel like I'm vindicated that there are good turns and bad turns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely a bad turn for Golden here. He needs to invest so much more into this uh, rock band explosion. And this is the danger when you're playing the casino style play. And this is the danger you're always going to be in. Uh, you might invest so much faith into those rock bands and you cannot get a good return out of it. And you won't get the win and if you don't get the win your opponent will get the, the win before you yeah for sure um i i kind of want to take a moment here we've spent so much time talking about egypt and talking about russia's rock band victory uh, is there any point or not any point like is, is it time to maybe talk a little bit about norway a little bit about persia and maybe even greece here who has expanded massively since the last time we talked about them Let's take a look the uh, let's take a look at the points here. We do have Greece on twelve, uh, Greece's team on twelve hundred nineteen. Even if they did settle cities, it doesn't look like the points are uh, matching their uh, expansions here. Um, on Persia's side, he is starting to attack on the north of Norway uh, with uh, Kurasir Kors in his in Norway's main cities. So he's still at war, building. Um, some of those artillery armies and so on and so forth. Uh, Kumasi got flipped, by the way, to England. It's now an English city. And That's Spada, is, Sparta's for. going down. Sparta is like blinking. Uh oh, oh, and another man. one. Oh, it's starting. It's starting. <laughs> MCS Craig is probably so frustrated right now because of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, there's a lot of things that can happen in this game that will tilt you. Uh, so Norway and Persia are, are jostling. And I, I think it is really just the case of uh, are, are Greece tr uh, and Persia trying to get enough score to see who gets knocked out of the second position? I think so. Yeah, that, that's the only mission right now. Even though I do find it extremely unlikely uh, they can uh, influence the game that much. But looking at what's going on here, Cree, three tests, nuclear fission. We got Mamaleto getting his sanitation. And it looks like... Uh, on the other side, MCS Craig is going for cartography with Persia. 
don't know why. Uh, oh, maybe he wants industrialization. And then Kankis did manage to arrive to a comfortable 250 science for 310 culture. He's also doing quite a bit of an important defense here in the in the culture screen. If Mamaleto stops the defense, I'm pretty sure Kakis will try to uh, ramp it up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, that just goes to show you it's so important to have one player countering a, a culture victory across the game because if it was um, if it was Kakis who was the defender here, the game would almost be over. Uh, Kakis here, yeah. he looks yeah. to be pumping science at a level I've never seen before. Like he is building campuses and gold everywhere is he hoping that maybe the game can be dragged out until he can make a nuclear intervention I think so uh, the problem is nukes will 100% be built in Kree's land way before him uh, looking at the yield step here Kree did manage to arrive to 716 production while um, we got Kekis on 464 he just yeah, doesn't wow. have the the production necessary he did try to build a few industrial zones here and there but they're not um, as strong as uh, uh, Cree production especially with the internals we, we did notice from the beginning Cree had very good uh, internals with those um, uh, pastures and everything yeah that's, that's very true um, the, the Cree's internal trade routes are just kind of insane actually and he's still running mostly internal trade routes to his capital city uh, it just goes to show you how powerful it is for the Cree to, like and his economy is, is still insane he's on 555 gold per turn those are some crazy gold numbers especially when you well I guess maybe part of it is the fact that there's three uh, economic city states on the map are, are they having an influence do you wonder Oh, for sure. The gold influence is uh, important. One of them is being held by Chuck, and the other one is being held by uh, Alcotolic, that's uh, Cree, and uh, Kakis is... Uh, so every team does have one city-state, at least. Uh, one gold city-state. Um, on the other side, Kaguana being held by Golden over here does give him an important amount of um, culture. I think the most impact that Kakis can have is killing Kaguana at this point really you think killing Kaguana and, and what would be the consequences of killing Kaguana around 10% drop in the culture of uh, Russia wow uh, and, and Russia yeah so Russia is or definitely... more actually yeah it's more than 10% it would be a significant drop for sure because Russia is getting like six culture per city at least from that never mind any of the multipliers that are applying to that culture yeah I'm actually Surprised. Well, Mamaleto did keep it for a long time in the in the game here. And uh, talking about Kaguana, it does have a very good, unique improvement, the Beatty, uh, which does give you uh, tourism after you research flight. So basically, what you can do is just uh, try to spam those out as uh, much as possible everywhere, and uh, get the tourism when uh, flight is discovered. Yeah, I'm quite I'm quite surprised we haven't seen Russia do that. Uh, I'm not seeing many Beatties in his territory. Is he just? not caring about builders and is sticking to the all-in rock band play i think at the moment he's uh, doing what you were suggesting earlier uh trying to get more um, appeal for those um uh, naturalists to put their uh, natural parks in that's how it looks uh, i do see him putting down a few forests here to the southwest of kazan and east of tula Mm, interesting actually yeah I, I can see those diamonds coming up now it does look like you're correct yeah. there he's trying to get those uh national parks up uh, i think he lost faith in his rock pants and now he knows he's gonna need to hard take it otherwise they're gonna get nuked he's halfway there he didn't even manage to get halfway there it's 87 out of 172 it's a actually, target it's, man it's halfway. yes halfway never mind it, it was a heroic attempt at a culture victory and and heroically defended by by england over here yeah what's his next step does he transition into getting as much passive tourism as possible and then participating in the war probably and keep, try to keep on uh, getting more rock bands i mean he can't stop this is this was a commitment he he can't stop he i don't think he has enough science to defend a to put up a proper defense when it comes to um, uh, nukes and artilleries and uh, tanks and everything. It's all up to Chuck. And also Chuck is starting to buckle here with 243 science, 125 culture. He went for modern armor armies and 
this is going to stop his production. Like looking at Aketaten, 10 turns for the modern armor, and not, not an army, not a core, just one single modern armor. Wow. It, this yeah. is like, this is all he's going to get. Like probably three, four, five more units, and that's it. While on the other side, we do have Mamaleto with um, quite a few tanks, a lot of pro a lot of science, a lot of culture, and uh, it looks like he's um, 617 production versus, who is it, Chuck's 317. That's 300, double, more, double the production of his opponent here. Yeah, to put that in perspective, that basically means Egypt has to kill two of every, like, like two units for every one he loses to, to survive this war. And that's only against England, never mind the fact that the Cree is building up on their border as well. So that could very well jump up to needing to kill four or five times as many units as you're losing just to survive. Yeah, and uh, also to put it in perspective, uh, Cree has more production than uh, England. He's on <laughs> 732. It's like three turning tank armies from his uh, cities. I, I think I have to hand it to, to England and Cree here. They have managed to sim up uh, probably like the thickest and most strongest empires I've seen in a multiplayer game. These guys are, are basically titans coming out of the gate ready to fight a war. <clears throat> yeah. They did very well here. Research Lab's coming. More uh, science is going to be pumped out of uh, Mamaleto cities. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to see the same thing out of uh, Cree here. Uh, one, if they do manage to put one single of those, um, um, how to say, space ports down in a very good productive city and starts to get the two or three projects in, that's it. Culture victory is not going to happen. No, you, you think you think that the writing could be on the raw wall uh, 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 for for golden R, golden RPGs culture victory. We might see that. It all depends on how many more rock bands he can buy and how much tourism he can uh, generate. I I fear is uh, not going to be enough. He's 856 tourism per turn right now passively. He does have 93 out of. 179 tourists so he did go over the um, uh, halfway point computer says 10 turns but you can't really believe the computer when it comes to these and i looking at his um face generation it looks like he can buy a rock band around every one every two or three turns yeah and uh, that just doesn't feel like a, a fast enough pace does it yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, that that initial push with the rock bands was just not strong enough. Yeah, that's this is the danger of going for the casino play, isn't it? That you know, it might pay off and you might win the game, but you know, it might not. Yeah. Oh, also, I mean, generals for modern armors. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> oh yeah, information era generals. We're not even there. We didn't. I want to point out they locked the generals as well. So the the next general is like in the Renaissance Industrial, and it's thirty two points. Nobody picked it up. And is this is this like a a particular decision by these players to say nobody's getting a great general? Is that like is that something that yeah. they commit to? That if if yeah. I can't have it, you can't have it. Basically, that's what's happening. And it's all up to Norway. If Norway wants to buy a general here, which honestly, it will help him because he has like cuirassiers. <laughs> Actually, no, wait, no, it's in. Oh, yeah, it oh. is industrial and uh, the Renaissance, right? Renaissance industrial. So, yeah, it's fine. Part of the problem there is that no points can actually be earned towards great generals right now. So, oh, uh, another problem. Yeah, we're, well. we're not going to see a great general come out here for a very, very long time. Yeah. Well, rip. Yeah, rip indeed. <laughs> they looked it. I didn't even notice this, by the way. Oh, and the uh, plus five siege. Okay, so artillery did get the plus five. Mm. Yeah, that'll help them out on the oh, offense, yeah. surely. Yep. Well, I, I do have to say I was planning today to um, also take uh, another stream, the 5v5 um, Protect the King, which is a new mod, uh, a new mode, a new game type of uh, uh, Civ that we Why don't you tell us about it? What, what is Protect the King? 
So basically, there are two teams, right? In a five v five setup, but one of the each one of each team will have the king status. If you kill the king, you win the game. So you're gonna see. Uh, I, I I'm not sure if uh, they went for the east versus west type type of maps, or uh, are they gonna randomize? That's one of the questions I had going into the game. Um, but just thinking of uh, the possibilities over there to. Uh, see the players try to adapt to this and protect their uh, uh, king. It would be amazing. Well, it looks like it, it should have. It should start in around twenty minutes, and this game doesn't look like it's going to end in twenty minutes. So, no, definitely. We we we've settled into what might be a long night here, a, a long siege <laughs> yeah. uh, along the Egyptian border. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let, let me double check this. Uh, yeah, it's nine. Oh, it already started. Never mind. It was like forty minutes ago. Oh yeah, because the, the the it's French time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh well, it happens. It's fine. Tomorrow we got the finals, right? Uh, what? The four v four finals, which would be the first one that we're gonna see as a four v four, and uh, the one v one finals, the two v two finals. And looking forward to. See. I I still didn't. Um, I'll say made up my mind if I want the 1v1 or the 2v2 but I think with uh, all of these uh, delays I think the 1v1 would be the safest one so wake up earlier yeah maybe we'll we'll do a little bit of casting of some of those games tomorrow uh, it, it depends on how the times so I'll have to see like what time do I get to sleep tonight and, and which games I'm ready to cast uh, yeah I, I would like to bring your attention to Michael uh, uh, the Cree has begun the Manhattan Project <clears throat> uh oh uh oh uh, uh oh uh oh so it begins five turns manhattan project that's a decent number of production points he has there 86 okay let's see his capital he's on uh, 69 we got uh, 43 in other cities okay one thing that i do want to point out about Cree, uh, he didn't quite build a lot of good uh, industrial zones here most of the time i was expecting to see um, uh, more uh, more of those um, aqueducts around his industrial zones, but and yeah. he still technically start to do that now. He could in certain places. Uh, maybe he just values like the lumber mill over the aqueducts. Because I was thinking the exact same thing, Moisés. Like, you know, there's there's aqueducts he could throw out here. Oh, for sure. It's just. Um... Uh, you don't need to prepare your land in such a way and sometimes the districts uh, you need to plant them before you're actually going to get to place them so you get the maximum output out of uh, both worlds now, for example in um, the south in Mikisi Wachik and uh, wait what did he place there oh aerodrome okay and uh, the north of Makhva Sakahikan if he didn't place that um, um, in campus Instead of the campus, he could have placed an uh, aqueduct. Instead of the industrial zone, he could have placed an aqueduct. And between them, he got two plus fives that would turn into plus tens uh, industrial zones. Yeah, but that's like a really expensive investment. It is, but that's it pays off really fast afterwards. You get so much production. And anyway, I mean, it's too late now to, to do something like that. He's just going to focus on getting tanks, getting economy, aerodromes, as you see, planes. Uh, I'm actually curious if he's going to go for bombers to deploy the nukes or if he's going to go for uh, missile silos. I guess bombers, by the looks of it. Yeah, I mean, he has access to the missile silos and I think he has position to use them, but it, the dropping of the aerodromes kind of suggests a more bomber direction. Yeah, exactly. I, I do see aerodromes being built in uh, Russia's land also. This might be a, a thing. And he, he is going to try to defend himself maybe with a few fighters here. I don't think he wants to go bombers, but fighters maybe. Even though I don't really like the chances of uh, going uh, fighters versus bombers. He's trying to put trees in his land though, Russia. Yeah. Still didn't get enough um, appeal to actually get his um, national park going. No, That's I, a lot of investment. No, I'm surprised that he hasn't gotten enough appeal yet. Um, Whitmer, so tell me, tell me a little bit about the nuclear war dynamics. 
uh, so people can be prepared to see how they work. Uh, when a bomber is coming in, what can you do? What what can you do to stop a bomber? And the air guns, the first thing that you need to get. Uh, second thing that you need to um, uh, get is maybe try to focus on a city as a massive defense. Um, with uh, Victor, uh, Victor has an um, impressive uh, ability in the last um, choice, the air defense initiative. It gives you plus 25 combat strength to the air support units. So basically, you can defend with only one uh, anti air gun uh, instead of having three or so. Uh, the problem is nukes don't always focus on cities. They can focus down your uh, districts, they can focus your armies, and then uh, slowly pick away, like chew away at your uh, defenses. So that's one of the things that we might see over here. Um, other than that, it doesn't look like it's going to be an easy way to defend himself because of his uh, lack of uh, science. He's 148 science a turn. Yeah, 148 science per turn. That doesn't look like enough to hold against uh, nuclear bombs, especially like what, what is he unlocking right now? He's only just now getting to steam power yeah and he's on 423 production yesterday you did mention uh, i guess we need to reiterate about the anti-air guns oh my god they're like so expensive anti-air oh. guns are 455 wow. production base and uh, that's on normal speed right so it's uh, 250 something to 227 uh, yeah, yeah, it's super expensive. Like to, to put that in perspective, Russia, if Russia's entire economy was put towards making anti-aircraft guns, he might make two per turn. That's, yeah, basically. Uh, you know, that's just, that's just not enough. It's extremely, and he needs three of them to properly defend against bombers. You might not stop it with just one. Yeah, you'll need three in every city that you think might be nuked, right? Yeah. Well, I guess there are cities like, for example, Kazan is too far away. Soli comes, uh, feels like it's a bit too far away. Uh, but uh, Tula is definitely in range of uh, nukes from um, the Cree northernmost city. Northwesternmost city. He can't take it, though. There's like no unit there. So he just gets to nuke him. Uh, another way would be Egypt. Egypt, as in, I'm talking about Russia defending, but I didn't take into account Egypt needs to defend as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in terms of like actually changing the landscape of the game, when the nukes start flying, right now we're kind of locked in this little bit of a stalemate. Uh, when the nukes start flying, does that stalemate stalemate break and all hell breaks loose? Usually, yes, slowly, but it does break. If uh, if you don't go with the little nukes, you can go always for the thermo nukes, which cannot be defended. Uh, because they do get, attack uh, two tiles out. That's one tile more radius than uh, Sam's even defend. So you can just uh, click on a city uh, two tiles out and it deletes the city and the defenses around it. Oh man, like like if you take a look at Egypt's territory in between Rakadet, Abydos and Swenet, there's a thermonuclear spot on that industrial zone that would obliterate yeah. all three of those cities. Uh... Or, uh, oh, wait, no. Giza. Giza, Akitata, mm. and Planet. Yes. Two. Oh, wait, no. Uh, one it was, it the, two of the on cities. The one, on the mine, yes. Yeah, it's... Uh, oh, Thermonukes okay. are extremely, extremely costly, but at the same time, extremely effective at uh, deleting your opponent's uh, cities. Yeah, it's basically the, the, the stalemate breaker. It's like, okay, we're locked in forever war. Whoever throws the first Thermonuke has the advantage. <clears throat> yeah. I'm uh, like the start of the Cold War, huh? It's like, who... Who gets the missiles yes. first? <laughs> uh, I'm curious if we're going to see Mamaleto here go for um, uh, spaceports because that will 100% stop the culture victory. Like At the moment, they stagnated. It's 106 out of 198. It doesn't look like Golden is getting enough tourists to get the win. And uh, he is uh, getting more... Uh, Mamaleto is getting more science. He's going for advanced flight. And... It feels like he should really discover um, a rocketry after this. I don't see a spaceport anywhere. Yeah, for sure. Especially with the 382 science per turn. That is a very, very healthy science number there. He should be able to, to skyrocket his way through to the end of the game pretty quickly. 
Yeah, if it ends up in a stalemate, he can just get a science victory. He does have a leads, which is a 140 production city, 139.1. That is an impressive production number. I really wonder how he's getting that level of production in here. I guess the Torres del Payne is, is really helping out with him there. <clears throat> yeah, plus 10 industrial zone. It's, I think he, oh no, he doesn't have a shipyard. He could even build a shipyard. <laughs> would be more. Yeah, just to squeeze out that extra little tiny bit of production from yeah. that really nice Huey Lake. Or is it the, oh no, it gives adjacency. The, the lakes don't get the benefit from sh shipyard, sorry. No, but it's fine. You just get the plus three from yep. uh, the gold. I don't know. It, it looks like it, it's... At the moment, it's basically like uh, Moises is saying. We're in a, a cold war. Nobody's moving forward. Nobody's moving back. Uh, everybody's uh, trying to get the win here. But they 100% lost the rock pants. Rock pants are not going to happen at this point. I find this fascinating i england built or cree built a supply convoy i never see anybody build a supply convoy at the front lines where to egypt they have one well if i can make a hail mary prediction it's because uh, 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 if you oh, don't have england. great generals uh, supply convoys actually allow you to move and shoot your artillery oh yeah it's a very yeah. good point i think maybe it was england that had it i definitely saw one yeah, oh, England yeah. has a supply yeah, convoy. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, uh, unless supply convoys have been changed, uh, uh, that's what I remember them doing. They allow you to move and shoot your artillery like a great general. Um, and, and since there is such a huge stalemate for great generals, they might be desperate just with a little bit of extra mobility. <clears throat> yep, it also increased, uh, increases uh, healing. Yeah, it's a medic and then a medic plus the bonus movement. Yep. This is cool. I get to see all these units I never get to see in any other game. I never see supply convoys. I never get really to see modern armor because the game's over by then. This is exciting. Paratroopers are down. This is amazing. Yeah. Wait, well, it, it, paratroopers. Oh, I see them. I see them. Spec Ops. Yeah. Spec Ops. I'm sorry. Spec Ops. It's definitely one of those things where the higher level players are able to actually survive to this this late game because you know if you had a rusher like this in a pub game or in a lower ranked lobby uh, they would have cc to russia you know uh, 50 maybe maybe 30 turns ago but because these players are so good and they know how to defend uh, we're actually getting to see this incredible late game build up wow uh -oh. yeah team three and team four look at their score yeah yeah i see fourteen forty. In for uh, team four and then uh, team three golden, golden rpg with the uh, chakar 1446 only 32 points between them it's so close that's amazing this is a heroic recovery from persia and greece to uh to, yeah. to potentially snatch the second place here uh from team three who, who we thought was going to win the game Indeed, and it looks like uh, the moment, well, I mean, Sparta is still uh, flipping, uh, unfortunately. I uh, might not flip before the next era, though. I have to point that out. And I do see a lot, a lot of coal power plants being uh, built in uh, MCS Scrag uh, cities. Uh, does he have the coal for it, though? That's, I think, the biggest question. Each one of those uh, does use one coal per turn to function properly. And I see one coal tile, two coal tiles. Yeah, okay, he does have. Have uh, you ever seen a strategy where they purposefully pollute the world to sink other cities? No. I, I Wait, think it's... that brings me up to another question. Who did get the Stonehenge? Okay, never mind. It's not. Okay. He's not going to get the Seahenge. Okay. <laughs> the Seahenge. That's um... funny. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's one of those cases where purposely f flooding the world takes so much effort and um, has such a low percentage chance of actually hitting. Like if you look at the, well, actually, I can't see the floodable tiles because like you, you might just like flood a random farm, you know, and like, OK, I'll put a farm somewhere else. It's one of those cases where now if it was apocalypse mode and the meteors start dropping, I think we might see that more often. Yeah, I love apocalypse mode so much. It's so fun. 
<laughs> oh man, those those boards right there. Absolutely. I, I you know one turn Manhattan, one turn Manhattan. We're like three turns, four turns away from seeing the first new drop. One turn Manhattan. Oh right. Sorry, I I misunderstood what you were saying. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, this is look tired brain is kicking in. So nukes are going to start dropping. Now, Michael, if you were the holder of the first nuke in the game, what are you going to do with it? Where do you fire it? Do you hold on to it? Do you launch it? What what are we expecting here? My initial reaction would be to take out Yerevan, as in take out those uh, modern armor armies. That's the most effective way of using it at this moment. Uh, taking out three modern armor armies that cannot be replaced is going to hurt so much Egypt. He's struggling to build them for like 10 turns in a city. The anti-air starting for Egypt in Swenet. Let's see. Yeah, four turns. I mean, four turns for one single anti-air. I don't know. It's, uh... The investments are starting, right? The... Yeah. Protect what you can. It, it it's going to be tough to, to to keep those bombers off of his cities. I mean, even if his cities are well defended, those bombers could just pop off somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Like, look at all of the units in front of uh, England to the east, so, uh, north of uh, Kyoseg. You get uh, another ball of uh, artilleries with uh, modern armor armies. And if he does manage to break Yerevan, all of those tank armies could just go through to the uh, to uh, Russian uh, cities, and they only need to go and pillage, not actually take cities, just pillage. Yeah, if you disrupt your enemy's economy, that's as good as killing them. Yeah, this is like uh, in StarCraft. You know, you you this is this is like the medevac drop, and that's where paratroopers can potentially sometimes be useful here. Uh, you know, you drop five marines in your opponent's mineral line, kill all their workers, and he has to GG out because he doesn't have the economy to fight you anymore. Yeah, exactly. A really good point. One of the reasons a lot of Mapu pillaging. Get, uh... What is going on? Wait, do you hear a lot of pillaging? Where? I, don't I know. think that was a city flipping somewhere. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see what's happening. Persia is uh, killing uh, Norway. Slowly. They're like, this is, I mean, I guess, you know, those memes with uh, kids attacking each other and <laughs> they have like uh, padded defenses all around them this is what's happening it's slowly slowly getting there but i have to say uh, i have to say this and recognize mcs crank was extremely tenacious in killing spain and now going for norway he's like he's doing it he's there definitely and also he's running in and he's not even immediately going for the kill he's trying to pick up value at pillages on the way yeah might as well and since he invested so much into this uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to keep them in the... Oh, they just went second team. Okay, never mind. It's fine. That, that's it. They, they just need to stay there until uh, Mamaleto and Alcotoli get, get the win. You know what's funny? I think if Russia and Egypt proposed the CC to Mamaleto, I think they would have gone, gotten the second place. Because nobody would have thought, oh, rock bands are going to fail. Yeah, for sure. That would have been a, an interesting um, an interesting outcome. Because sometimes these games do come down to diplomacy. <clears throat> but uh, I'm kind of excited to see them come down to uh, to war. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And that was Pipe Ten's first nuclear bomb. Uh, no bomber yet, though. Let's see. Do they have the money? Oh, and he's building more. He's got he's got six turns in another city, seven turns in another city. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're. I don't see bombers though. He, yeah, he another one in five turns. Oh gold? my goodness. He has. I the think. Gold I, yeah, I think he's gonna buy. Yeah, you know, we got one bomber northeast, no, most northeast city. Eleven turns, one bomber. Oh, I mean that's eleven turns. That's a. Uh... A long time, a long time. Also, I want to point out something. In just shooting from a missile silo, you can shoot like 10 
whatever x number of uh, bombs with a bomber you can only shoot once so we might see a missile silo over here somewhere mm, for sure i i, I would honestly it, with that advantage of firing uh from missile silos i would expect to see missile silos pretty soon yeah <clears throat> He doesn't really have a air force to fight with. No fighters, no you've uh, no not a lot of bombers. But I guess with uh, five hundred gold per turn, they could afford to buy one if needed. It's what twelve hundred, I think, for a bomber. Yeah, it, it's around the thousand to thousand three hundred gold mark on online speed. Yeah, but it's. Yeah, 1170. 1120. Oh, 100. Well, yes, yes, you're right. I don't know why I put 70. Sure. It's okay. Oh boy. I'm seeing uh, spec ops here. Uh, how are these spec ops usually used? Uh, what is their purpose? Honestly, they're not used that much. There was a call for help uh, on the spec ops, so players would actually use them. But I have to, I have to point out, I have uh, seen a lot of players try to grief with the spec ops before, uh, back before they were uh, really powerful, and they were killing cities. Uh, so, at some point, nobody wanted to take care of them. Uh, Nobody wanted to give them more strength. I, I guess you can still scout and use them for vision, but at this point in the game, everybody has a lot of vision anywhere, uh, everywhere. So don't it's not. They not have, don't they have the ability to priority target a support unit? So like technically, that uh, he can kill the general. Maybe I don't know if he applies to general, but he can uh, kill the supply convoy, for example, from England. That's like the only way to get rid of those units, even if it's on top of any. Like, so the observation balloon, he can just target the observation balloon with the spec ops and, the, and it dies. I think you, you might actually be right there. Uh, I, I think with this allowed priority targeting, but I know that's for bombers. I don't know if uh, we disallowed it for the spec ops. It usually is in vanilla. I haven't seen them used any time like this, by the way. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was thinking more that they might be launched for um, for pillaging. You you launch four or five, uh, you know, spec ops into your enemy's territory and just try to hit a couple of districts. Yeah, that could be that could be an idea. Uh, the the only thing at this point is tanks are going to be on you very very quickly. Uh, this is the time where most of your land is already connected with roads and you have uh, re even rare roads at some point so everything moves extremely quickly oh by the oh, way the first true. bomber in Kyoseg we got Mamaluto with a bomber <clears throat> not the one that's building uh, nukes though no he doesn't have priority. does have priority targeting by the way Oh, nice. Okay. I've, I've never actually seen that ability be used. It would be interesting if it did uh, come into use here because these artillery don't have great generals. So if he takes away that obst balloon or maybe the supply convoy, could be uh, annoying for um, for Mamaletto here. Oh, looking at the rules, we actually removed the um, priority targeting because uh, I think we disabled it with um, oh, a BBG. Okay. It's like the one thing that spec ops are useful for, they have taken away from them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, well, you laugh now, but uh, when bombers would uh, kill your anti-air guns <laughs> before they can shoot. <laughs> it's Actually, it only anymore. says they deleted the priority targeting for airplanes, like in BBG. So I wonder if it's an unintentional change for spec ops. Yeah, so it, it could yeah, be. It might be. I'm going to be honest yeah, with you. They don't I have... Have... Go ahead. They don't have that much uh, strength, though. Only 65 million and 75 strength. That was the call for help uh, on them, on the BBG server, to give them more. I think, like, honestly, need to come up with like 10. what they need is stealth. Like, So you can't see them unless you're adjacent to them like privateers. That would be, you know, 
That's in the promotion tree, though. Like that's the last promotion in the recon promotion tree. It's, a, it's camouflage, where they act like. Uh, it, uh, unless you're adjacent to it, you can't see it. Like submarines. Yeah, I, I would just say take that out. I mean, recon units they should be, at, at least the higher tier ones, they should be invisible. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're adjacent to them. I I agree with you. I'm just saying it is there, and I think that's why they don't introduce it as a base ability. It'd it be more exciting as a base lot, ability. Anyway. Like Sorry, spec ops are not easy to build. They're like, let me actually take a look here. They're 520 production each. Yeah, late game units are like insanely expensive. Uh, like even machine guns are 540. A helicopter is 500 yeah. and, or 600. We're, you know, the bombings are beginning. Oh, did we see a bomb? Oh, Giza has uh, been hit. Just sort of like a, a bomber attack. What, what was the tourist? No, is he almost done? No, he's uh, oh. very far away. He's still halfway, okay. 126 Everybody. out of 271. He's getting more than Mamaluto's defending, but that's, I, I, I mean, that's just a matter of time until uh, Mamaluto's going to get, uh, I hope he's going to get a uh, spaceport here. That's his uh, way. Leeds oh. is also doing Manhattan Project, so he's going to get a nukes of his own. Oh, three turns, actually. <laughs> God, okay. Leeds is such a powerful city. Yeah. Also, three turns for the first nuclear device to come out of uh, England. And England is going to... Uh, England, Cree, is going to get next turn a bomber. He's going to finish Prepare it. for the fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Late Getting game that. thermonuclear war is coming. Uh, even, uh, it looks like maybe Greece is looking to get in on this. They're dropping airports. No way. Are you kidding me? I mean, they're dropping airports. Their science is climbing up. They're up to 500 signs per turn, which is the second highest in the game. They're on radio. We could see a Greek nuke here in this game. This game you just know, gets more exciting, be, man. It's crazy. This would be amazing if Cree nukes Russia and uh, Egypt and then gets nuked by Greece and then England starts to nuke uh, Greece and <laughs> Persia. This is going to be all out <laughs> chaos over here. <laughs> Nobody know, knows. This what. is an amazing game, man. I, 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 I can feel the tension in the air. You could cut the tension with a with a butter knife. I've actually been dying to go downstairs and get like a snack or something. But I I've been know, glued same. to my seat waiting for this to happen. Uh, how are they going to play this? Because, I mean, they need to be careful now not to lose the first lead, not, not to give too much, uh, you know, um, openness to Kakis to intervene into this or for Persia. And then if they do go to war, what if Kakis and uh, Persia do decide, okay, we're going to interact with this. We're going to try to take out Kumasi. We're going to try to get some pillages in England's land. What's going to happen then? I don't know, I but don't re regardless answer. of what happens then, I'm going to be excited. That's my answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, me, me too. I, I can't wait to see how they're going to plan this out. Where are they going to strike? How are they going to strike? God, it we really gotta... is like a nuclear Mexican standoff. The first person to blink loses. <laughs> or is the first person to flash? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a different kind of stream. <laughs> Natural History Museum going down in St. Petersburg. I, I do see Golden did get uh, fascism. Of course, uh, he's probably going to try to go for uh, democracy as well. He did also finish Rule Valley in that city. That's a really good productive city of his own. 156 production in St. Petersburg. Wow. Yeah, that is that is very good for him. But that's what is he? What is, what is that city. government building that he's building? Is that the War Department or something? No. National, National History okay. Museum. So he's getting the extra um, uh, works uh, slots for his um, uh, musicians and stuff like that. Yeah, usually uh, musicians. And on the fascism legacy thing, this is um, this is something players do because because combat strength bonuses are so important. Uh, they they basically they sit in fascism and then they finish their tier three government building so they can get the plus five combat strength card. Isn't, isn't that what they're doing here? Yeah. Exactly. Um, they want the democracy card, the plus five. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of like small little things players will do in this game just to eke out a few extra points of combat strength on their units. 
I think yesterday we saw a, a, a galley swarm with scouts embarked in the water just to get the extra combat strength from having units supporting them. Yeah, and then those scouts came back to haunt him because uh, attack once came around, smashed them, converted the cities, and killed him. Yeah, that was that was a feels bad man moment. <laughs> oh my god, a volcano just exploded in Giza, absolutely obliterating a modern armor core down to half health. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is the most action we've had of the last hour, people. Let's look at this tank. <laughs> 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 we do have artilleries with balloons over there. I'm actually surprised we, he doesn't uh, train them on uh, Egypt's uh, units. And now we do have also anti-air guns uh, showing up there. I, I saw the bomber got damaged, by the way. Uh, there are more showing up on the front line slowly. This is really impressive. Like, there's always a an answer to everything that the Cree and the England is throwing at Egypt. Egypt has is figuring out, is predicting what they're going to do, and it has a response to absolutely everything they're throwing at them. Yeah. They can't defend everything, though. You, you can see this. Uh, he has some units out of position that are not in range of the defenses of the anti-air guns, so those bombers do get some free hits here and there. Still, they're doing what they can. Like They're making it really hard for them. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to need to see if these bombers actually will push through. Uh, I, I do think it was a bit too late to get the bombers. And uh, without the nukes, uh, it doesn't look like they're going to push anytime soon. Uh, they will get promotions, though, for the bombers, which is going to be nice. Now we got anti-air guns going towards uh, Yerevan. Uh, Abydos also got one over there. Uh, really curious. Again, uh, the first bombs will be extremely extremely important over here they don't have a lot of them yeah and there's there's three i think there's two coming next turn another one the turn after that so there's basically going to be four nukes over the next four turns that we're going to see and like you said i i think that these are going to set the pace for how this this late game stalemate breaks down Yes, I I can't wait to see where he's when they're gonna throw it. Also, I can't see yet the defense on uh, Yerevan, but I'm really curious if he went for that um, uh, anti-air promotion. If he did, that's basically an unnukeable city. Given their how have they been performing, I imagine they did. Yeah, I, yeah. I would be shocked if he doesn't have that incredibly important anti-aircraft uh, uh, promotion on Victor. But here's the other thing that has me on the edge of my seat here, guys, is this this can all be broken by one misclick. One mistake could could change the outcome of this war, couldn't it? Uh, yes, one mistake, one bad move from an anti-air gun, like revealing a tile or something like this without no support and uh, allowing it to be nuked will allow your opponent to uh, get a win on you or at least get a window of opportunity on you it's uh, I, I still believe they shouldn't focus on uh, Egypt that much I still believe uh, Russia should be focused on because at the moment that's the only win condition of the game and how do you how do you get there though you through Yerevan and Memphis and like uh, Egypt right and, so yeah, that, like Dora is saying on my stream, all of like he has been saying for like two hours now, go through the mountains, go through the mountains. That's true too. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> new oh! he you didn't did. even hesitate the second he had it. He dropped it. <laughs> I don't think I know. I told you, man. That More is... than I... oh. Another one. Another one. Oh, let's go. This is it. This is it. This I is think the moment. Oh, that one got killed. Did that one get killed? No, it didn't. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, he has the city and he oh. raised it. Dude, oh, this is God. actually too fast. It's gone. That would... So that anti-air gun didn't even get moved to defend the city. No. It, it was away. Didn't get to move it. That was insane. He had like sat there like a Zen master and planned every single move he was going to do this turn. And he did them all without even giving Russia or uh, giving Egypt a chance to respond. That's insane. I've never seen it. That's a like that. pro gamer. That was so fast. Like one after the other after the other. It's crazy. 
this is why i can't play in this league that's that's insane holy smoke <laughs> yeah i'll stay in the newbie league please <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll stay in the casting desk this is much safer here oh my god i even just the technical like navigating your way through the menus clicking on the right stuff to make sure that like that was half of egypt's army that just died is gone now yeah and remember england is right up there he's starting to get his nukes next turn finishes manhattan project has unbelievable production in leads he gets just spammed them out of his cities yeah I, I, having seen the devastating power that nuclear bombs can do in this game and here comes the tanks heading up towards russia here they come yeah there's no more danger there's no more army defending russia it got obliterated i i, I do want to point something out if yesterday there were calls for cc every 10 turns nobody's calling for a cc now no they're Everybody. in it to win it nobody is drinking yeah. It is unbelievable how even like Khakis with MCS crack are not going to leave this alone. They're, they're breaking apart uh, Norway. Uh, they're almost on their capital. Oh, oh, they, oh there it is. Oh. <laughs> CC to Sivjer. Let's see. Let's see if they're going to pull this through. Ooh. Them, I don't know. Oh, oh. I don't know about them second. I don't know about that. I can't kill you too. <laughs> <laughs> Kak is over here uh, flexing. Kak is minus. He wants that second place. He's refusing. Oh, Chuck disconnected. Not I even. don't think. I don't think we give Russia and Egypt second at this point. I don't think so. It, On the caster's desk, like we see everything, right? So we have more information than they do. So what do you guys think? No, the, the, the plus. That's it. Golden agreed to third place. They they gave second place to Kakis mm. and MCS Crack. Unbelievable. Can you imagine MCS Crack fighting against Spain from the be beginning, managing to take him down, barely taking him down in the like fourth place in the teams, now ma managed to crawl their way up to second place. That was sick, dude. Oh, what an end. Oh, my God. This yeah, really was just such an amazing and beautiful game. Like to see the underdog story of Greece and Persia, to see the dominance of the Korean England and to see Russia come so close to winning, but then to falter back down to third place on the very last turn of the game. That was just a pleasure. Yes, indeed. I asked them if they want to do some post game uh, chat, if they're not um, uh, too uh, tired. Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. Post game one. Uh, I'm gonna. This is where I'm gonna drop off, though. So thank you guys okay. for inviting me and having me on. Really appreciate it. This was super exciting, and uh, I will happily come back if you'd have me. Yes, sir. Thank Absolutely. you for. It was a pleasure. Yes. Okay. Thank you I'm both. Have a good day. Post game one and drag you. Yeah, please do drag okay. me. I want to talk to the players. Okay. Have a good evening. God, where? Wait, did he say he can't drag me? <laughs> I did, I did, I did, I did. Oh, oh, uh, there, uh, there you are. Oh, hey, how's it going? Hello. Hey, guys. Uh, hey man, uh, question. <laughs> Were you ever going to come for me? Because when you said that peace deal, I was like, oh, thank God, dude. I'm safe. That was the best. Uh, did you did you mean us? What what'd you say? You mean Cree? Yeah, you and I, you and Cree. Like I never knew if you were gonna come for me or Persia. I mean, I guess if it went on, I probably would have gone for Persia too. But like, the point yeah, was to stop Russia from winning culture. So we thought we'd go through Egypt, and he might give up if we go through Egypt, which he did. So yeah. Well, I, was I mean, it was mainly that, like, the tourism's been, or the culture defense has been at a stalemate for the last couple turns. 
yeah. like a hundred or so tourism off. You've actually gained even slightly more than me, which I don't know how. Uh, I guess it just has to do with the formula where three people are dead, right? So uh, yeah. if three people survive, I probably have a much better chance. I mean, some of my cities have been spamming projects for like the last half of the game. But... Huh? Guys, we should. Um, this uh, post game is only moderator chat. Okay. <laughs> That's quite we, uh, not abuse. Yeah, not abuse. Seriously, yeah, is there one, one that we can? Maybe we go down to. Uh... Oh, you guys see the hot? Why don't one we below? just make? Why don't we just make this uh, non-admin on? Okay, go for it. Uh, uh, I got to say, I was impressed by the level of play in this game. Uh, Golden's attempt at a culture victory was like incredible, but I feel like there was just far too much war in the game for him to pull it off, and then. England's defense was like heroic, and then Greece and Persia coming back from near death was uh, <laughs> incredibly impressive. I really, really enjoyed watching this. the The entire yeah, time we were, nice. we the entire time me and Persia were just like, okay, we're just cockroaches. This game, we're just no, we're not fighting, we're not doing, you know, don't mess with the big guys. <laughs> yeah, well, we were talking about it a couple of times that you guys could theoretically be kingmakers. You know, if you distract one of those two teams long enough you'll lose the game but then the other team will win so I, I kind of predicted that you guys would be jostling for the for the second spot yeah that's what we were going for i mean yeah, if the game went really went really really long here it could be interesting between me and Cree. he used his nukes up there right and uh i'm building jet bombers so it could be I an interesting three fight. Other nukes coming out so oh did you okay okay yes. i didn't know how much uranium you had I, I hadn't watched like i wasn't watching the uranium tab like a hawk so i saw that you were down to like none and i was like did he just use his nukes like so yeah, I, mean... to be honest, I was going to use them on probably russia because we figured russia is the one who's actually going to win the game though it looked less likely at that point but like yeah yeah the rock bands actually what um the thing that lost Russia the one if they started you... hot but I didn't get yeah. a lot of good RNG later. Yeah, you like, got, like I kept getting terrible teams. promos too. Ah, oh, dude, that's the bad part about rock bands. Feels so bad. That sucks. Did you have a bunch that died? Well, I mean, yeah, I I only have one remaining now, and they cost me like let's see how much they cost me that I'm in fascism. Uh, a thousand fifty. Well, you didn't have like insane cult or um, faith, faith gen, right? No, because you no. went. Well, what uh, Michael and Potato know is that I spent like twenty turns just holy site projecting to reach like three hundred yeah. something faith per turn, which uh, I just stayed in theocracy and was just buying rock bands, uh, which I thought uh... was going to yield more positive results. And there was one turn where I had like a fifty-five hundred tourism rock band that had the. Um, 50% tourism to civs uh, within 10 tiles that I did in Egypt's land that was within 10 tiles of Eleanor and Cree, I think. And I got like I got like a 10 tourism boost then, which was like 10%. It's like, oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. And then from then on, it was happen. just shitty. It yeah, was just yeah. so bad. Uh, well, I was you watching went... and I saw one of your turns, you lost like four rock bands. In one I turn. know. I was just like, oh man. Oh, dude, that feels so bad. When, like, you, I tried to went... micro as best as I could them. Like, mm -hmm. I was doing them on Wonders first, and so I generate the most tourism. Like, if I don't have any promos and stuff, I was doing all the theater squares when I had the theater square promo before moving on. Like, I was trying to do it as, as best I could, but. What, um, what Pantheon did you get? You went Open Skies, right? Not yeah, well, I, I mean, did you ever see my cap? Uh, no, I, I, we don't see it, actually. We I'll never got that far. Here, I think I can... I'll share it to you. I'm still in the game showing people. Oh, God. How do I stream? Oh, wow. Okay, so Open Bastards uh, was good. I, I mean, was really like, confused. I, I went originally. Builder first, and I improved the... Like, because I started with these two sheep and this sheep. So I started with Builder first, and I improved this sheep. Uh, wow. And then obviously, I got Artemis selected. My cap is pretty pretty my good. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Got, like, um, my cap alone is getting me 300 or... culture. Holy shit! <laughs> I mean, I also have like you know the Moksha, and like I have the themed art museum. I have uh, Broadway. I have Apadana. Um, what I what I didn't do, I guess, and what I, I could do now is put my music that I have in Bolshoi into the uh, um, the National History Park. Where is it? Where, where's Where's my Golden, what what have we learned about pursuing victory conditions? Yeah, fall. I mean, like, what do you want me to do here? Like, 
Mm-hmm. Try to out symbol like like I don't know like you gotta have a victory condition right I don't know it's the problem with the game type because the same thing happened to Lala he was four turns from CV in our first two v two and then got hit by four people yeah, Oh, yeah that's I mean it, it but like I have like if you don't have a win condition right like uh, you know what, nukes is a win condition sure but obviously I uh, my build was to go for culture early I did make one pretty big mistake which was that I was so focused on getting like the fact that I needed writers because I was going against Pericles and Eleanor that I settled the city and like immediately popped down Oracle. And then like a turn later, I was like, wait a second, this would actually be a great city for Coliseum. And then like, you know, I just, I didn't have any other city that could do Coliseum. So yeah, like, that's rough. I don't know if I had gone Coliseum early, maybe that would have helped me. Um, I also got cocked so hard by Norway. I'm like, Norway really wants coral, like I want feed the world, I don't need a project, you know, blah blah blah. And then Wait, did he behold, go feed? He, he went feed yeah. the world, so I had to go coral. Oh and my like, god, I was so curious why you went coral. I was really like, this makes no sense. Yeah, and like look, I have all these planes and all this tundra that like it would I really yeah. like Tavur is stuck on seven pop. Now granted yeah. I I took my governor out, which I had um, um Victor and he uh but then I obviously needed to swap it to this front-facing city. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know that. If I had feed the world, I think like yeah, it a looks lot different of my for cities sure. are are better. I go holy site first in like almost every city, which like, I did not do. Like, I went holy site first in my first three cities, and then they were sort of afterthought. Yeah, that oh, makes a lot of sense because we were we were really I, like I was really confused watching because you went pen and brush second golden age too right so you had pat you yeah. had open sky you had coral and then you had pen and brush and I was like man he's really trying to make like an early culture victory I thought you were going for like a turn eighty culture victory which is like the amount of culture but well yeah I, I, mean, I had rock bands like hitting I had like eight rock bands hitting like turn eighty eight yeah it was just yeah so I mean it's tough when there's two other people in the lobby with like I mean, well it's Eleanor also and... tough when there's like three paid actors who just die. Yeah, that's it's true. true. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Man, you you gotta you gotta admit Spain over there put a hell of a fight. I, I we me and Chuck don't see Spain like at all. Dude, oh, he put really? up a yeah. fight. I don't think we saw much of our Ivory to be honest. But we like I knew was, that like, Scrag had to be the one. Yeah, it was Scrag. I shouldn't have done that. I grieved so hard by going for that. <laughs> Did at one point? Even still, like, I even if I kill Spain there, like Norway's just comes and then like makes my life miserable, you know. Yeah, the cities aren't even worth it. So, Michael, did you like my good use of Magnus early? I think I, I thought I really maximized the value of it. Yes, I, I, we we did see that, and also we um, drooled all over that Artemis that you had at the beginning. Oh yeah. Oh, did anybody God. else go for Artemis? Like, uh, I, no. I went I, I went to two settlers and holy site before Artemis, which is obviously pretty greedy, but. I was considering it, but I was really late as well, so I didn't try. But I actually maybe could have got it if I had, because you were so late anyways. But Yeah. yeah. Well, Dude, you guys, um, well, Korean well, Mamaletto, you guys high-rolled so hard on the spawn there, being next well, to each other with the and, traders. Me and Egypt. Yeah, the two teams yeah, as well. Yeah, both of yeah. you guys high-rolled so hard. I had no nothing to trade to the entire game. Like, we're sitting on, like, 50 GBT. It sucks. My whole economy is coming from these two cities. These are the only cities that have a commercial or a harbor. But Egypt's got to be making like how much turn? I mean, crazy I, amount, I don't right? Know. Obviously, gold was never an issue for me and for me and Chuck. Like, I was also like, I got so much gold from rock bands. Like, I guess I didn't get lucky with like the tourism promos, but like I had a couple that had the the pop star fifty percent gold or oh yeah, dude. Gold. So like the you know, a special rock bands were like sixteen hundred gold. So I like yeah. bought a shit, like a ton of builders. I bought like a, just a bunch of stuff, and like I Man. gave Chuck a lot of gold too. So, you know, my gold was not really a problem for me this game, even though I didn't go tithe. Look, I also tried to, like, maximize the babies to get <laughs> culture, like, Taurus. Yeah, well, end. I mean, that's good. Well, I'm at, I'm at computers really now. I'm at 1,500, but it's just too late. Yeah. I, I was cool. lamenting that I only well, want seven cities. Like, I kind of realized, like, turn 90, I was like, wait a second. I only were have you seven watching, cities. Were you watching these guys' uranium? Because I'm pretty sure you guys had zero uranium. Yeah, no, I, I saw they had uranium before our, uh, coal. No, 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 I'm, like, they have, uh, they don't have any uranium in their land. Oh. Like, so that, that nuke that hit you was probably, like, the only one for a while, right? 
No, that's no, not what I, I, I had five nukes being built, and I fired yeah. two of them. There was one coming up the next turn, but two the turn after. But I think they just unlocked oh, okay. uranium so early. Like, it was so early. Them so early, like so, like before industrialization, I was like, that's insane. Yeah, you did have uranium we before were, coal. We were tracking it for a while. You were only getting one a turn. I guess you found somewhere. I only got one turn as well, but there's also not like the Arena promo. Um, yeah, there is. That's yeah. true. I yeah, there's oil in Dude, now I didn't have a yeah, single man. oil tile. I had to go like this random city over by Cree, all the way down in the tundra. I had to build two cities down there just to randomly get some oil. I don't even think you can see it. It's like way down in the tundra. I was wondering why you'd settled that city, but it makes sense it was for oil because I was like, what is that about? Yeah, it was for for the two oil uh, spots that were next to it. I only got one after uh, Kamasi flipped to me. It was so fun. I was, I was telling Scrag, I was like, "That's the Eleanor bonus. Is that it's not gonna go?" Because he was like, oh, "I'll just liberate it. I'll let it flip, and then I'll liberate, and we'll get a bunch of Diplo." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the? Uh, did not work. <laughs> Have you seen the Torres of Eleanor? By the way. Yeah, we yeah, saw it. We were good. pretty. We were pretty fucking salty. Honestly, that was such a god spawn <laughs> for me, Eleanor. Yeah. Like was that was sure. such a such a bullshit spawn. <laughs> I mean, we had good land too, though. Like. That's fair, I, I have good land on my land. Yeah, I mean, you have an amazing Alchemist as well, though, because that imbalanced. No. We have lots of hills. That's true, I, I had, yeah. Which I is all you can ask for is Persian, man, because it's pretty easy to get flat grassland. Oh, well, That's there's true. a super cherry on top is that Chuck found a relic, so I had a relic turn 26. Dude, we saw, we saw turn 3, the relic thing pop up, and it was like, oh god, really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, two players actually got a relic right off the bat here. I think it was Netherlands and Russia. Oh, Netherlands got one too? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah I know Chuck is the one who got it on our team, not me, but oh, the same difference. I, I got a 10 yeah. hut, and I got like my fancy on like turn 12 or something. And God of the Sea was already gone. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yep. Typical. I don't know. Part of me wonders if I would have been better off in the end going Goddess of the Hunt because uh, like obviously the extra culture right now is limited i just saw like it, like the tempo that i had on culture was super high um i i, I think i would have if i were you looking at your land I, pasture seems weird because you're just gonna well, get you know this these look great now right but keep in mind that this is after saint basil's this is after mercantilism you know like the like these were one two deer tiles like when i but you have so you've, you've got four deers and a truffle in your first two cities right I mean, yep. I, I, this was my first. This is the first city I settled. Oh, that design. was your second. Because yeah, I had okay. a two-two here, two-two here, two-two base. Um, that was pretty good. This was this was my third city because we weren't sure if Norway was connected to the sea yet, so I didn't want to commit to a coastal city so early. So yeah, I settled fair. over here, which had this deer, I guess, but no other deer. Um, Mamaletto always goes open sky, or not? Uh, he goes whatever the tundra faith adjacency one is. Yeah, I, I feel mean, like I could have maybe done it here. I feel like it's pretty underrated if you're going to do the culture victory. Like, that's that's been that's his play every game. Never he never goes uh, goddess of the hunt. I don't know, but like, I mean, look at I don't really have I that think much. Yeah, river goddess is pretty okay as well. Yeah, that's true. You don't have a lot small. of the hunter is pretty small. That's I guess fair. I was just like so enamored by the idea of like, you know, like one builder. I improved these three sheep. Yeah. It's really nice tempo you. for sure. It is you nice tempo. Culture. Three, uh, three cultures, no joke, early game. It's really good. You, you were something yeah, like, I, I don't know, like 15 signs, 100 culture. That's a yeah. point. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. <laughs> it was pretty nuts. Well, I mean, my build with, like, coral, right? And, like, you know, I go coral into theaters. Like, where is the science coming from eventually? And, like, yeah. my, yeah. like, look at my campus. This is terrible. Plus two, plus one. Like, I just built this one here to buff my theater even more. I built a holy site and a religion to get a, a heroic age at one point, and I noticed that even though my religion was the fifth religion, tithe was still not taken. Yeah, I mean, I went lay ministry because like neglecting to go like uh, river goddess or sacred path or like any of the, any of those. Like I wanted extra faith to get just a better monumentality. Well, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off, but uh, GG. That was a really fun game. Yeah, yeah, it was a good game. GG. Glad it was close. It was fun. I, Me too. I, I do have a couple of questions for a couple of you guys if you want to answer them. Yeah. Um, oh, for God's sake, the World Congress appeared. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can't look at the map anymore. A, a lot of people. 
uh, a lot of people didn't settle a whole lot of cities here like russia you sat on pretty low cities uh, uh even norway i think you know, what was the logic behind keeping your city count low? I was not enamored with, like, any expand, really. Yeah, like, you had a lot of flat land. Yeah. And, uh, it, like, if I had Feed the World, I would have expanded a lot harder. Because, like, I can, I can like, settle in the tundra or, like, in the, you know, work those hills. Yeah, because all you got to do uh, is slap down that holy site and then the city's fed, like. Yeah, and, like, I even mm. would have settled, like, other places, too, like you know it i just really felt like after i i didn't get feed the world that having a high number of cities wasn't gonna be like just wasn't great for me yeah the, the return of, that, that that makes sense um i i even thought just like to have a couple of blockers but you're you're um you went for your national parks really late was that just because your rock, rock band got in. so expensive and it didn't work I just won Rock Band all in, and I didn't have really great national park tiles. Like, I had to work pretty hard to get those two in Tula. And Kazan. Yeah. The only easy one is in Tver, and I thought I got that one actually relatively early. Yeah, you but got that I, one super early. But I did, but I wanted to. It was really just an all in Rock Band strategy, which can work. It just, you know, I, th I think I got a little unlucky. Yeah, you went for the casino play, and uh, <laughs> it didn't. I don't even work. know if it's the casino, right? Because I don't think I have another option given the game. Like, no, uh, I I think um dying, like uh, you know, I I think you made the right choice because uh, even going for culture, you basically forced England to play your game uh, in having to defend against it, like playing a map. Now I know it's Eleanor, so she loves going culture anyway, yeah. but you probably forced her to invest more than she would have otherwise liked. Oh, yeah, we, we were definitely worried at one point that you were going to win culture. To be honest, it was relatively like you were getting on for I think it was like one hundred and fifty or two hundred or something at one point. I think it was just really once, like, Happy Dragon died, and then the bishop died, and then Creed just, like, gets demolished, right? Like, that was a lot of tourism that I built up over the first 70 turns that just totally did nothing. Vanished. Yeah. Yeah, vanished. Yeah, definitely. It, it felt a little bit like, uh, I, no, I don't want to say this, but it felt a little bit like Spain and Netherlands kind of griefed your game because <laughs> they just well... died. And they're, like, no offense to them, but, like, you know, I, I've, I've seen them play before, and they're. They know they're like they're I think in real life friends uh, from like England, but I they're just not the same level of players as you know Mamaletto, Altal, uh, Altalic, Khakis, McScrag. Oh um, no, they gave a heroic so. defense. I just meant like you know if if this was like a pub game, you'd be like, God damn it, these guys ruined my game. Well, I mean, I'm sure you guys noticed that after I minus their uh, their their RL, uh, they they sent horses to Tver for no for like yeah. no reason, <laughs> like. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't want to call it out while I was watching, but I was kind of like, hmm, is this like a little bit of a grudge? Because you want to leave the game. It's definitely a grudge. And, you know, I had to accept it, right? But uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the play for me would have been like recognizing that uh, like Gorgo would take. I, I don't know. I also just didn't want to, you know, I felt like if I got aggressive, it was going to like totally ruin my culture victory. So I didn't want to push into to Netherlands, but I also didn't want them to become AI so that khakis could just roll them over but then with the congress it seemed like they just got rolled over anyway yeah definitely oh, it, it, it was an interesting moment because there was a moment right before uh their irrelevant vote where i was like russia could kill these guys easily and and take these cities but then i was like then norway I comes couldn't kill pericles you know like yeah. i i was never so far ahead of pericles where i felt like i could kill him no for sure for sure you were always kind of like you were in this position where man i'm really really strong but i can't kill anyone well, if I kill anybody, then I lose the win condition that I've played the whole game for. Yeah, right? true, true. <clears throat> I was really happy with my great bath. I thought that was a good great bath. It was. It was a fun. It was a fun great bath to watch you build it. I was like, man, this guy is on like two cities, three cities, and he's just building wonders. Like, you, I think you <laughs> yeah. had like Oracle and Great Bath queued up at one point. Yeah, you did invest a lot in the early <laughs> game in the wonders. Well, that's where Magnus came in, though, right? Like, uh, yeah. part of the reason I don't have a lot of cities, right, is I, I really prioritize my early monumentality into just chopping all the choppable tiles I had with Magnus. Uh, like, wait, who, uh, we who were was... wondering if you're going to invest in settlers, or and why did you invest so much into the builders? Well, I mean, I, I kind of answered it. I just didn't. Yeah. Like, where else do I settle? That's like juicy. Uh, yeah. Ma Mamaletto was playing England, right? Who was Alta? Yeah. Alta. Alco. Altolic was Cree was Cree that's right so that's this these guys the guys who won the game when did you guys when did you guys think like okay we got him was it like 
unlocking nukes or finding uranium. When I did you never think... felt like we like had had them? Um, or oh wait, are you asking them? Sorry. Uh, I'm asking uh, them. Like, when did they feel like they had you by the balls? Oh, okay. Um, I think when we defended the tank push, like when he, I pushed into Hungary with tanks, and then Mamalito did kind of as well, and then Egypt kind of like replied with some tanks of his own, and then that didn't really go anywhere. So I think when that happened, we realized that our science was like far enough ahead that we would get nukes before them. But at that point, also, Russia kind of looked like he still could maybe win just through culture. But, like, once... Basically, once it looked like Russia couldn't win through culture, we just figured we were going to win. Yeah, man. I kind of made a mistake, I think, because, like, I... Me and Chuck were a little worried about your guys' push uh, because you guys went, like, straight for tanks. So I didn't go industrial... Like, I was one tech away from industrialization for a long time, and I'm one turn away from tanks and i've been one turn away from tanks for like the last 20 turns when i could have if if i had just gone in all in on computers i could have had computers earlier yeah we decided to both go bottom tree just because last game we played yesterday <coughs> mom went top tree and then it just didn't end well so we decided to both just push it once and then yeah the thing is you did have a lot um Egypt did actually have a lot more army than me when I had taken Hungary. But the problem was, like, yeah, he probably wouldn't be able to push because I don't think he had that much artillery at that point. It was just a bunch of tanks. Well, we were more worried about defending, right? Like, we, we weren't actually in the push mindset at all. Like, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I actually thought that we had successfully defended you, you know? Nah, we but, just uh, decided to wait for news. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I mean, later on, I, you know, I realized... There was a moment, I want to say a few turns before you guys moved on Hungary, that I was like, man, if Egypt, like, moves now, they can snatch up a couple of these Hungarian cities and, like, make it really hard for you guys. Um, what I was considering was, like, making a bunch of Cossacks and trying to surround Rotterdam and, like, telling Chuck to do the same for Hungary uh, to just try, like, desperately attempt to keep them in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, for the extra tourism. For the oh, extra man. tourism. Uh, that would have been a heroic play. It probably would have ended with you. It would have been like <laughs> almost impossible to defend Rotterdam eventually against the coast because it looks like Norway. I, we don't see Norway, but I saw Norway took Utrecht at some point, so I, I assume that he would have decided that to take Rotterdam. Oh yeah, he had a huge fleet over here. He basically controlled the entire sea. Um, no one could really stop him there. Um, I think Persia I did eventually push his land. I did have a few questions so for Norway. I was expecting him to have uh, at least uh, four more cities on that coast. Not sure what stopped him from settling that. It, it's stuck in my mind that he didn't do that. Uh, who was Happy playing? Happy was playing... Spain, I think. Spain. Yeah, it was Spain. Spain, yeah. Man, he got like he had such a good start and then he, he got RNG spawning with Norway and Persia on top of him. Oh man, I felt so bad because he actually played the defense so well. Yeah, that little bit that he spawned on, like the little peninsula, looks pretty rough. <clears throat> well, he he spawned in Madrid and then he captured Valletta, and he was like, he seemed to be happy to like stick to the coast. And then when his galley found Norway, I could almost see like the cogs in his brain turning, like, oh god, Norway's here. <laughs> Yeah, one thing that's really strange about um, these games, because I've never played like 2v2v2 before yesterday, is like trading. Like, that's why we picked Cree, because we really weren't sure. Like, well, obviously, we did end up like high rolling and spawning next to each other, but like the last game, we just had no goal. And it's just because like you don't know whether or not to trade with someone, or like someone might just declare in grief and like take all your traders. Yeah, so for we're like, sure. this time we need to have someone that can trade internally. That was the uh, Pericles Khmer game yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I actually, I meant to ask you a question about that game yesterday. Just real quick. You stayed on five cities for like a very long time there. Was it just a case of like you didn't see a good expand? That was mom. I, he can answer oh. it, but yeah, basically, I think that was the answer. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember you were on uh, Khmer. I was Khmer. Mom was Pericles, so maybe you can answer I it. I didn't want to go forward against uh, Gorgo either. Yeah. That was the reason. I didn't want to go towards him because there was quite a big gap until I got to like the first fresh water 
and my scouting wasn't so good because we're not allowed to ask for open borders in this format. So I actually had no idea like how much cities, how many cities he had in the other. Yeah, I think I should have made a couple more towards Rome though. Yeah, it, 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 see, it's easy for me to look at the map and be like, dude, you could just expand like another four or five cities and you'll be fine. Whereas you're kind of operating with imperfect information, so you got to play it a lot more safe. Yeah, I think I screwed myself yesterday to start by going into Monaki. Like, I kind of had to, but on the other hand, my tempo on my Acropolis was so slow. I thought that uh, Pericles' tempo on this game was pretty slow, too. Like, I was able to have Oracle and two theaters out before he placed down an, uh, an, or before he finished an Acropolis. Yeah, I didn't see what he did at the start, but I, I just remember seeing your culture was stupidly high, and I was thinking, am I going to get a single writer from Classical? Yeah, it was no. 70 on turn, turn 40, I remember, because we were, we were both really confident we were doing really well, and then we were like, oh, Russia's actually doing really, really well as well. Yeah, I don't know, maybe... Like, to be honest, I don't play Russia, like, a whole, whole lot, right? Like, uh, we just kind of, like, chucked in want to play Russia, and, like, looking at our civs, like, we wanted to have one, like, goal-generating civ, and then one, or, like, slash, like, early defensive civ, and then one, um, like, win condition civ. And uh, of all the civs in his draft, we had, like, a Zulu in his draft, but then, like, my draft was... Um, let me pull... I mean, I'm was... a... Yeah. I'm just going to say thank you guys so much for the post game uh, chat. I'm going to go uh, probably go get some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good evening, man. Cool. Have a good evening. All right. I'll catch you guys mm -hmm. later. GG. See you. All right, man. That was a amazing game of save. I had an um, incredible time watching it. Um, I, That was so like intense. This whole game built up to this moment where the nuke dropped. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the stream and find someone to host oh for god's sake why are you like this one of my streaming software is just went weird on me yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and get ready to uh go sleep because it's been a long day it's been a great day and remember we are back tomorrow with one or two more games it depends on how the games line up um, but we're gonna be we're definitely gonna be casting the finals of this uh tournament so uh, i love you all very much what time? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it'll be starting. It'll probably be starting two hours ago tomorrow. So 16 to 18 hours from now. Uh, 